Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Reverend Insanity, written by Gu Zhen Ran, audio by Dex San Wu Li. Chapter 1, The Heart of a Demon, Never Has Regret Even in Death. Chapter 1 The Heart of a Demon Never Has Regret Even in Death. Fang Yuan, quietly hand over the spring autumn cicada and I'll give you a quick death. Old bastard Fang, stop attempting to resist anymore, today all of the major factions of justice have combined together just to destroy your devil lair. This place is already covered in inescapable nets, this time you will definitely be decapitated. Fang Yuan you damn demon, just because you wanted to cultivate the spring autumn cicada, you've gone and killed thousands of people. You've committed too many unforgivable, heinous sins. Demon, 300 years ago you insulted me, took away my body's purity, killed my entire family and executed my nine generations. From that moment onwards, I hated you with a burning passion. Today, I want you to die. Ellipsis ellipsis. Fang Yuan was in deep green robes that had been torn to shreds. His hair was disheveled and his entire body was covered in blood. He looked around. The bloody robes waved lightly in the mountain breeze like a war flag. Fresh blood flowed from the numerous wounds on the body. Just by standing there for a short while, Fang Yuan had already accumulated a large pool of blood beneath his feet. Enemies surrounded him all around, there was already no way out. It was a foregone conclusion that he would die here. Fang Yuan understood his situation clearly, but even in the face of death his expression did not change, it was calm. His gaze was quiet, his eyes like deep pools of water in a well, so deep that there seemed to be no end. The major factions of justice that had surrounded him were not just the experienced elders, but also young and talented heroes. Around the heavily surrounded Fang Yuan, some were roaring, some were sneering, there were eyes that were gleaming with light, some holding onto their wounds while looking on fearfully. They did not move, everyone was wary of Fang Yuan's final attack. For six hours this tense moment went on until the evening came, the sun casting its rays upon the side of the mountain. In that moment, it was as if the place was on fire. Fang Yuan, who had been silent as a sculpture the entire time, slowly turned his body. The group of warriors was suddenly alerted and they all took a big step backwards. By now the gray mountain rock beneath Fang Yuan's feet had long been stained a deep red. Due to losing too much blood, his face had become deathly pale, in the afterglow of the sunset, it suddenly had a brilliant luster. Upon it, looking at the setting sun, Fang Yuan lightly laughed. The sun sets above, the blue mountain, the autumn moon with the wind of spring. The morning, is fine like hair and night is like snow, whether you succeed or fail when. You look back there's nothing left. As he said this, memories of his previous life on earth emerged before his eyes. He was originally a Chinese scholar on earth who chanced upon this world. He endured a hard life for 300 years and went through another 200 years. About over 500 years of his life flew by in the blink of an eye. So many memories that were buried deep inside the heart begun to relive themselves, sprouting into life before his eyes. I failed in the end. Fang Yuan sighed in his heart emotionally, yet there were no regrets. This end result was something he had foreseen when he made his decision. In the beginning, he had prepared himself for this. To be a demon is to be merciless and cruel, a murderer and destroyer. There is no place in heaven or earth for such a thing, turning into an enemy to the world, still having to face the consequences. If the spring autumn cicada that I have just cultivated is effective, I shall still be a demon in my next life. With this thought, Fang Yuan couldn't help but let out a big laugh. Wicked demon, what are you laughing about? Be careful everyone, the demon is going to attack before his final moments. Hurry up and surrender the spring autumn cicada. The group of warlords surged forward, at this moment, with a loud bang. Fang Yuan was engulfed in a blinding surge of energy. Ellipsis ellipsis. The spring rain quietly rained down on Qingmao Mountain. It was already late in the night, a slight breeze blowing with the light rain. Yet Qingmao Mountain was not covered in darkness, from the side down. 
To the foot of the mountain, dozens of tiny lights shone like a bright band. These lights shone from tall buildings, even though it could not be said to match up to 10,000 lights, yet it was still a few thousand in number. Situated on the mountain was Guu-1 village, giving the vast lonely mountain a rich touch of human civilization. In the middle of the Guu village was a magnificent pavilion. A grand ceremony was being held at this moment, and the lights were even brighter than ever, radiating with glory. Ancestors, please bless us. We pray that this ceremony will bring many young men of outstanding talent and intelligence, bringing their families new blood and hopes. The head of the Guu clan had a middle-aged appearance, his sideburns were graying and he was clothed in ceremonial white robes, kneeling on the brownish-yellow floor. His body was straight, with his hands held together, eyes tightly shut as he prayed sincerely. He was facing a tall black case, there were three layers on the case, all housing memorial tablets of ancestors. On both sides of the tablets was copper incense, the smoke rising. Behind him were over ten people kneeling in a similar fashion as him. They wore loose white ceremonial garments, and were all the clan's elders, important members, and those who had much authority. After finishing prayers, the Guu clan head bent his waist with his two hands pressing against the floor and kowtowed. As the forehead knocked against the brownish-yellow floor, light thuds could be heard. Behind him, the elders and important clan members solemnly and quietly followed suit. With this, the hall was filled with light thuds as the heads knocked against the floor. When the ceremony was over, the crowd of people slowly got up from the ground and silently walked out of the sacred temple. In the hallway, sighs of reliefs were heard from the crowd of elders and the atmosphere loosened up. The noise of discussion slowly rose. Time flies too quickly, in the blink of an eye, a year has gone by. The previous ceremony feels like it just happened yesterday, I can still recall it vividly. Tomorrow is the opening of the annual grand ceremony, I wonder what new clan blood will show up this year. Ah, I hope that some highly talented youths will appear. The GUU clan hasn't seen a genius emerge for three years now. Agreed. The Bai village, Shang village these few years all had some talented geniuses appear, especially that Bai Ning Bing from the Bai clan. His natural talent is quite terrifying. It was unclear who had brought up the name Bai Ning Bing, but the faces of the elders started to show worry. The boy's qualifications were splendid, in just a short period of two years. Worth of training, he had already reached the level of a level 3 GU. Master. In the younger generation, he could be said as the most outstanding one. It was to the point that even the older generation could feel pressured from the promising youth. In time, he would inevitably become the pillar of the Bai clan. At the very least he would also be an independently strong warrior. No one ever doubted this fact. But for this year's youths that will be participating in the ceremony, not all. Hope is lost. You're right, Fang Ji's side has appeared a young genius. Able to start. Talking after three months, able to walk after four. At five years of age he was able to recite poetry, seems exceptionally intelligent, especially talented. What a pity that his parents died early, now he is being raised by his uncle and aunt. Yes, this one has wisdom at a young age, also harboring big ambitions. In the recent years I have heard his creations, Zhang Jingju, Yang Mei, and Zhang Cheng Zi, what a genius. The Guu clan head was the last to walk out of the ancestral temple. After slowly closing the door, he heard the discussions that were going on in the corridor among the clan elders. He knew at once that the elders were discussing about the youth known as Guu Fang Yuan at that moment. As the head of the clan, it is natural to pay attention to the outstanding and prominent young ones. And it so happens that Guu Fang Yuan was the most eye-catching one amongst the juniors. Experience has shown that those who have photographic memory at a young age are those who possess strength that could rival an adult or had other great inborn talents, all had outstanding cultivation qualifications. If this child shows a great potential, with great care he could even compete against Bai Ning Bing. 
even if it is B grade, in future he could also become a banner of the GUU clan. But with this sort of early intelligence, the percentage of B grade is not that big, but highly possible to be an A grade. With this thought, the GUU clan head curled up his lips slowly into a smile. At once, with a cough he faced the clan elders and said, everyone, the hour is late, for tomorrow's opening ceremony you should all rest well tonight and take care of your energy levels. At his words, the elders looked startled. They looked at each other with a hint of caution in their eyes. The clan head's words meant well, but everyone knew what he was aiming to convey. Every year to compete for these young geniuses, the elders would fight among themselves to the point of reddened ears and bleeding heads. They should stay well rested and replenish themselves until tomorrow. Comes where the competition begins. Especially with that GUU Fang Yuan, whose a grade potential was extremely huge. Not counting the fact that both his parents were deceased. And also that he was one of the two only descendants of Fang Ji's bloodline left. If one was able to get their hands on and bring him into their own family line, with great care and training, one could secure himself a hundred years of prosperity. However, I'm going to go ahead and say what needs to be said first. When you compete, do it fair and square, no tricks and conspiracies are allowed. Our damage to the clan's unity. Please keep this in mind, all of you. The clan had strictly instructed. We wouldn't dare, we wouldn't dare. We'll keep it in mind. Then this is good night, please take care. The clan elders slowly dispersed with deep thoughts. Not long after that, the long corridor became quiet. The wind from the spring rain breezed through the window, and the clan head lightly walked towards the window. Immediately, he breathed in the fresh moist air of the mountain, how refreshing it felt. This was the third floor of the garret, the clan head looked out of the window. He could see half of the entire GUU village. Even if it was late in the night, most of the homes in the village still had lights on, which was unusual. Tomorrow is the opening ceremony, and it affects everyone's best interests. A kind of excited yet tense atmosphere had enveloped the hearts of the people of the clan, and thus naturally many people could not sleep well. This is the hopes for the clan's future. With the many lights dancing in his eyes, the clan head sighed. At the very same moment, a pair of clear eyes quietly looked at the same. Light sparkling in the night, full of complex feelings inside. GUU village, this is 500 years ago. Looks like the spring autumn. Cicada really worked, Fang Yuan quietly gazed, standing by the window. Letting the rain from the wind hit his body. The use of the spring autumn cicada is to reverse time. In the 10 big. Mystical GU rankings, the spring autumn cicada managed to be ranked. 7. Naturally it was no mere creature. In short, it is the ability to be reborn. With the use of the spring autumn cicada I have been reborn, going back. To the time of 500 years ago, Fang Yuan stretched out his hand, his sight. Fixated on his own young and soft, pale palms, then slowly clenched them. Embracing the truth of this reality with all his might. The sound of the drizzling rain hitting softly against the windowsill filling his ears, he slowly closed his eyes, opening them after a long while. He sighed, 500 years of experience, it really feels like a dream. But he knew it clearly, this was definitely not a dream. TL Note This novel has another name, Taoist GU. The Chinese name is open double angle bracket gu gen ren close double angle bracket pronounced as gu gen ren, gu is the name of the mystical bugs that are used in this novel. I used the name, Reverend Insanity because I felt that it fit more than Taoist gu, the main character is by no means a saint or a good person. In fact as a warning, you can say that the MC is a pretty ruthless villain, so do expect a roller coaster coming your way. 1. GUU, it means ancient moon in direct translation. The clan kinda has an affinity with moon things. The GU, used in here is a different Chinese character from the mystical GU insects. Chapter 2, going back in time with 500 years of knowledge. Chapter 2 going back in time with 500 years of knowledge. It is said in legend that a river of time exists in this world. 
it supports the world's time flow and circulation. And by using the spring autumn cicada's power, one can travel back upstream and return to the past. There is much conflicting opinion on this mythical tale. Many do not believe in it, and some are skeptical to the truth. Few people actually dare to believe it. Because every time one uses the spring autumn cicada one must pay with his life, letting his entire body and cultivation be the driving force to use its power. Such a price is just too expensive, and the thing that people just cannot accept is the fact that after paying with your life, you don't even know what the outcome is. So even if someone has the spring autumn cicada, they would not dare use it so indiscriminately. What if the rumors were fake, and it was just a scam? If Fang Yuan were not cornered into such a state, he would also not use it so hurriedly. But now, Fang Yuan is thoroughly convinced. Because the reality of the truth has been laid before his eyes and there was no denying it. He has really been reborn. It's just a pity, from the start I had wasted an absurd amount of effort. Killing hundreds of thousands of people, making even the heavens furious. And inciting people's vengeance, went through suffering and multiple hardships to finally attain and refine this good G.U., Fang Yuan thought. With a sigh, even though he had been reborn, the spring autumn cicada did not come with him. Humans are the greatest among thousands of creatures, G.U. are the essence of heaven and earth. G.U. comes in thousands of shapes and sizes of strange and mysterious variety, there are too many to count. Some G.U. after being used once or even twice or thrice will completely dissipate. And some G.U. can be reused again and again as long as it is not used over its limits. That said, it is probable that the spring autumn cicada is one of those types that can only be used once before disappearing for good. But even if it's gone, I can still refine another. I have done it in my previous life, why can't I do it in this life? After the thoughts of pity were put aside, Fang Yuan's heart burst forth ambitious and determined feelings. To be able to be reborn, this fact made the loss of the spring autumn. Cicada entirely acceptable, not to mention he had something precious with him, so it's not like he lost everything. This precious treasure was his 500 years worth of memories and experience. In his memories are a multitude of all kinds of treasures and precious items that no one has opened yet in this time. All the big events and incidents he can easily grasp by the veins of history. There are a countless number of figures, some are predecessors of hidden levels, some are geniuses, some people not even born yet. Also in these 500 years of life are memories of painstaking cultivation and rich combat experience. With all these memories and experiences, he had undeniably grasped the overall situation and upcoming opportunities. With good planning and execution, he could empower the situation with great fierceness and elegance. It was not a problem now that he could take a step ahead of others, breaking the higher boundaries. So how do I go about this hem? Fang Yuan was incredibly sensible. He collected himself together and faced the night rain outside the window. Pondering. With this thought, things started to feel complicated. After thinking for a moment, his brows wrinkled deeper. Five hundred years of time was a rather long period. Don't mention those long muddled memories that cannot be recalled, even remembering the hidden locations of treasures or special encounters of people were a lot, but the main issue was that the locations were separated among a long distance and had to be accessed or visited at certain periods of time. The most important thing is cultivation. The me right now has not even opened my primeval sea, hasn't stepped on the path to be a GU master. I'm just a mortal. I have to hurry and cultivate, catching up to history and seas. The opportunities with the best advantage. Not to forget, many of these hidden locations of treasures were useless. Without proper foundation. Instead it would just be walking into a wolf's den, looking for death. The problem in front of Fang Yuan right now was cultivation. He had to increase the level of his foundation as fast as possible. If he were slow like his previous life, he would just be too late. To cultivate as fast as possible, I would have to borrow the resources from the clan. With the state I am right now, I have no power or ability to travel 
back and forth across the dangerous mountains. Even an ordinary mountain, boar can take my life. If I can reach the cultivation of a third level GU. Master, I'd have the means to protect myself and leave the mountain. Through the eyes of a 500-year-old person who has cultivated in the demonic way, Qingmao Mountain was just way too small, GUU village. Even feels like a cage. But while the cage restricted freedom, the sturdy bars of the cage also brought about a certain kind of safety. Hum, in this short period of time I'll just stay in this cage. As long as I can reach third level GU master, I can leave this poor mountain. Luckily, tomorrow is the awakening ceremony, I'll be able to start training as a GU master soon after. When he thought about the awakening ceremony, old memories that had long been buried away in his heart resurfaced themselves. Talent ha, huh? he sneered, his gaze focused out the window. At this moment, the door to his room was lightly pushed open and a young teenager walked in. Big brother, why are you standing in the rain by the window side? The youth was thin, slightly shorter than Fang Yuan. His face resembled Fang Yuan's features greatly. As Fang Yuan turned his head to look at this young man, a complicated look flickered across his face. It's Yu Ha, my twin little brother. He raised his eyebrows, his expression returning to that of cold indifference. Fang Zheng lowered his head and looked at his own toes, this is his signature stance. I saw that big brother's window was not shut closed, so I thought I'd come in here and close it. Tomorrow is the awakening ceremony, it's so late and you haven't gone to bed yet big brother. If uncle and auntie knew, they would probably be worried. Fang Zheng was not surprised at Fang Yuan's coldness. Ever since he was a small child, his older brother had always been like that. Sometimes he would wonder, maybe a genius is just like this, being rather different from ordinary people. Even though he had the same look as his older brother, he felt that he was ordinary like an ant. They were born from the same womb at the same time, and yet why are the heavens so unfair? His older brother had been endowed with gleaming talent, while he himself was as ordinary as a stone. Everyone around him would say, this is Fang Yuan's little brother, when they mentioned him. His aunt and uncle would constantly tell him to learn from his older brother. Even when he looked into the mirror sometimes, he would feel disgusted as he saw his own face. These thoughts had been ongoing for many years, accumulating day and night deeply into his heart. Like a giant stone pressing against his heart. These few years Fang Zheng's head lowered more and more, and he also grew quieter. Worried, at the thought of his aunt and uncle, Fang Yuan laughed. Silently, he could still remember clearly how the parents of this world had both lost their lives in one of the clan missions. When he was only three years, Old, he and his little brother became orphans. In the name of upbringing, his aunt and uncle grabbed hold of the inheritance left behind by his parents while inflicting harsh treatment against his younger brother and himself. He originally planned to just be a normal person, even planning to conceal his abilities and bide his time. However his life was difficult, making Fang Yuan have no choice but to choose to expose some of his talents. The so-called talent is merely but a mature and intellect soul that carried a few of Earth's popular ancient poems. With this he managed to startle people and capture attention. Because of pressure from the outside world, the young Fang Yuan made a decision to keep a cold and different expression to protect himself, reducing the possibility of revealing any secrets. Over time the coldness would become a habit that he was accustomed to expressing. Thus his aunt and uncle were no longer harsh on him and his younger brother. As the years passed and they got older, the future became more optimistic and better treatment increased. This was not lover, but a type of investment. It's hilarious how his little brother never saw this truth, not only was he deceived by their aunt and uncle, he also started burying resentments inside. Although he looked like a good-natured and honest boy now, in Fang. Yuan's memories when his brother was found out to be an A-grade talent. The clan spent much effort in raising him with all they had. After that all the buried resentment and jealous and hate inside was released, and many a time Fang Zheng would target, suppress and make life difficult for his own 
older brother. As for his own grade, it was only C-grade talent. Fate loved to play a joke. A pair of twins, the older one only had C-grade talent, but had been known as a genius for a dozen years. The younger one who was always overlooked was the one with a grade talent instead. The results of the awakening ceremony had left the clan shocked. The treatment of the two brothers had suddenly reversed after that. The younger brother was like a dragon rising up to the heavens, the older brother was like a phoenix that fell down to the earth. After that came the many hardships and troubles from his own younger brother, the cold eyes of his aunt and uncle, the contempt of the clans. People. Did he hate it? Fang Yuan in his previous life hated it. He hated his own lack of talent, he hated how heartless the clan was, hated how fate was so unfair. But now, with his 500 years of life experiences, using this to rethink this course his heart was actually calm, not a shred of hatred. What was there to be gained from resentment? Thinking about if from another point of view, he could understand his younger brother, aunt and uncle, even those enemies from 500 years later, who attacked him. The strong eat the weak, survival of the fittest, these have always been the rules of this world. Everyone has self-ambitions, always struggling to grasp the opportunities. Among all the war and killing what is there not to be understood. 500 years of life experience have long allowed him to understand all of this. With the heart that wants to gain immortality. If someone tries to prevent this pursuit of his, no matter who it is he will kill. And live through it. The aspirations in his heart were too big, stepping onto. This road was to be making the world your enemy, and it was destined to be. Alone, destined to kill. This was the conclusion of 500 years of life. Revenge is not my intention, the demonic path does not compromise. With that he couldn't help but laugh and gave his younger brother a faint. Glance. You can leave. Fang Zheng's heart shook as he felt like his brother's eyes were sharp like an ice blade, seemingly penetrating the deepest parts of his heart. Under such a gaze, he felt like he was naked in the snow, unable to hold any secrets. Then I'll see you tomorrow, big brother. Not daring to say any more, Fang. Zheng slowly closed the door and left. Chapter 3, Please Go Aside and Scram. Chapter 3, Please Go Aside and Scram. Bang, bang, bang. The patrolling night watchman banged his wooden clappers in a rhythm. The sound spread into the high pillar houses, Fang Yuan opened his dry eyelids while his heart silently thought, it's already the hour before dawn. He had been lying in bed thinking for a long time last night. He thought up a lot of plans. He probably only slept for a little over two hours. This body has not started cultivating, his energy is not so vigorous and thus his body and mind were still shrouded in exhaustion. However with 500 years of experience Fang Yuan had long built up deep. Steel-like determination. This sort of sleep-deprived exhaustion is nothing. To him. Immediately he shoved away the thin silk blanket and got up neatly. He. Opened the window and found that the spring rain had stopped. The mix of fragrance of the earth, trees and wild flowers greeted him. Fang. Yuan felt his head clear, the sleepiness washing away cleanly. Right now. The sun had yet risen, the sky still a deep dark blue, not dark yet not bright. Looking around, the tall houses made of green bamboo and wood. Contrasting with the mountain, was a sea of pale green color. The tall houses had at least two floors, it was the mountain folk's unique. Structure of a house. Due to the mountain's uneven terrain, the first floor is. Massive wooden stakes, the second floor is where the people reside. Fang. Yuan and his brother Fang Zhen stayed at the second floor. Young master Fang Yuan, you're awake. I will go upstairs and wait for you. To wash up. At this moment, a maiden's voice floated up from downstairs. Looking down, Fang Yuan saw his own personal servant, Shen Kui. Her looks were only slightly above average, but she dressed up well. Shen. Kui wore a green robe with long sleeves and trousers, had embroidered shoes on her feet and her black hair had a pearl hairpin. Her body from head to toe radiated youthful vitality. She looked happily at Fang Yuan while carrying a basin of water and walked upstairs. The water was at the right warm temperature and was used to wash the face. 
After rinsing his mouth, he used a willow twig with snow. Salt to clean his teeth. Shen Kui waited gently, her face wearing a smile and her eyes lively as spring. After he was done she helped Fang Yuan dress, her plump breasts, rubbing against his elbow or his back a few times during the process. Fang Yuan's face showed no expression, his heart was calm as water. This servant girl was nothing but his aunt and uncle's watch and was a vain heartless girl. In his previous life she enraptured him, but after the awakening ceremony when his status plummeted she quickly turned away her head and gave him countless disdainful looks. When Fang Zheng came over he was in time to see Shen Kui smoothing the creases on the clothing of Fang Yuan's chest. His eyes had a flicker of jealousy. These years living together with his older brother, under the care of Fang Yuan he also had a servant waiting on him. However his servant was not a youthful girl like Shen Kui but a fat and wide old woman. I wonder which day can Shen Kui wait on me like this, wonder what it feels like. Fang Zheng thought inside his heart, yet he did not dare to. His aunt and uncle's biased love to Fang Yuan was no secret to everyone. Originally he did not even have a servant to wait on him. It was Fang Yuan, who decided to take the initiative and ask for one for Fang Zheng. Although there was the status difference of master and servant, but usually. Fang Zheng did not dare underestimate Shen Kui. That was because her mother was the mother Shen, one who stood beside his aunt and uncle. Mother Shen was the caretaker of the entire household, having full trust of his aunt and uncle, her authority was not small. All right, no need to tidy up. Fang Yuan impatiently brushed away Shen Kui's soft small hands. His clothing had long been tidy, she was just trying to seduce him. To Shen Kui and the brightness of her future, Fang Yuan's possibility of having an A-grade talent was huge. If she could be his concubine she would be able to elevate from servant status into master, it was quite a big step. In his previous life Fang Yuan was deceived by her and had feelings for Shen Kui. After his rebirth he was clear as a blazing fire, his heart as cold as ice. You can leave. Fang Yuan did not even look at Shen Kui as he tidied up his own sleeve cuffs. Shen Kui pouted slightly, feeling that today Fang Yuan's puzzling behavior was rather odd and upsetting. She wanted to reply, in a spoiled way but being scared by his cold and confusing nature, her mouth opened and closed a few times before she ended up saying, yes, and retreating obediently. Are you ready? Fang Yuan asked Fang Zheng. His younger brother stood at the doorway, his head bowed down to look at his toes. He muttered a light, yes. Fang Zheng had actually been awake. Since the fourth watch, too nervous to fall back asleep. He quietly got out of bed and got ready a long time ago, his eyes having black circles. Fang Yuan nodded. In his previous life he was not clear about his younger brother's thoughts, but in this life how could he not understand? But right. Now it was meaningless to him, and he lightly said, then let's go. So the two brothers left the house. On the way they bumped into many youths of similar age, all in groups of twos and threes, quite clearly heading to the same destination. Look guys, those are the Fang brothers. Their ears could pick up the small cautious talk. The one walking in front is Fang Yuan, he's the Fang. Yuan who created the poems, some of them emphasized. So that's him. His face is expressionless as if he had no regard for others. Just like the rumors say. Someone said in a sour tone filled with jealousy. And envy. HMPH, if you were like him then you can also act like that. Someone. Coldly replied against the person, hiding a sort of dissatisfaction. Fang Zheng listened expressionlessly. He had long been accustomed to this. Kind of discussion. His head low, he followed quietly behind his older. Brother. By now the light of dawn had peeked over the horizon, casting Fang Yuan's shadow over his face. The sun rose gradually, but Fang Yuan suddenly felt like he was walking into darkness. This darkness was coming from his older brother. Maybe in this life, he would never be able to escape from the imprisoning huge shadow of his brother. He felt a burst of pressure on his chest making his breathing difficult. This Damned feeling was even making him think of the word, suffocate. 
HMPH, this talk is a good example of the saying, those who have outstanding talent easily bring about jealous from others, Fang Yuan thought with a sneer as he listened to the gossip around. No wonder when it was announced that he had C-grade talent, he would be surrounded by enemies and suffer harsh, disdainful coldness for a long time. Behind him, Fang Zheng's breathing got dreary and tried to stop listening. What Fang Yuan did not manage to realize in his previous life, he could perceive with the finest detail in this life. This was the ability of keen insight that he had gained from 500 years worth of life experiences. He suddenly thought of his aunt and uncle and how scheming they were, giving him Shen Kui to monitor him and passing his younger brother an old wet nurse, not including other things in life that were different among them. All these actions had intentions, they wanted to cause unhappiness in his younger brother's heart and instigate a rift among the brothers. People are not worried about whether they receive less, people worry about whether whatever they received is undistributed well. In his previous life his experiences were too little, while his younger brother was too foolish and too naive, thus his aunt and uncle successfully instigated a rift among them. After being reborn with the awakening ceremony before him, it seemed like the situation was difficult to change. But with Fang Yuan's evil way of means and wisdom, it's not like the situation cannot be changed. His younger brother can be suppressed entirely, that young Shen Kui he could turn into a concubine early on. Not forgetting his aunt and uncle and the clan elders, he had at least several hundred ways of beating them. But, I don't feel like doing that, Fang Yuan sighed carefreely. So what if it was his own younger brother? Without the blood relation his younger brother was just an outsider, he could easily give him up any time. So what if Shen Kui grew any prettier? Without love and loyalty she was just a heap of flesh of a body. Keep her as a concubine. She's not worthy. So what if it was his aunt and uncle, or the clan elders? They're just... Passers-by in life, why waste effort and energy to beat these people? Hee <laughs> hee. As long as you don't get in my way, then you can go aside and scram, I don't need to care about you. One Mother Shen is like a title or way to call a woman of her position. Chapter 4, Guu Fang Yuan. Chapter 4 Guu Fang Yuan. The sun rises in the sky, the sun ray brilliant. The mountain fog is not very Thick, the sharp rays easily pass through. Over a hundred fifteen-year-old youths gathered in front of the clan pavilion. The clan pavilion was in the middle of the village, reaching five stories and having sharp tilted roofs, it was heavily guarded. Before the pavilion was the square, and in the pavilion was the shrine of the GUU ancestor. Memorial tablets. Every generation of clan head had lived in the pavilion. With every major ceremony or big incident, the clan elders would gather and discuss meetings here as well. This was the entire village's authority. Central. Good, all of you are punctual. Today is the awakening ceremony, it is. Your life's great turning point. I won't say much, just come with me. The one responsible at the moment was the elder of the academy. His beard and hair were white and he was in high spirits as he led the young teenagers into the pavilion. However they did not go up, but were led downstairs after going through the entrance of a great hall. Following down a constructed stone ladder, they went into an underground cave. The group of youths made surprised and amazed noises. The underground cave was beautiful, stalactites sparkling with the colors of the rainbow. This light shone on the youths' faces, the neon hues gorgeous. Fang Yuan was mixed into the crowd, quietly observing everything that was happening. In his heart, he thought, hundreds of years ago, the Guu clan came to Qingmao Mountain and settled down after migrating from the central lands to the south border. It was when they found a spirit spring in this underground cave. This spirit spring produces a large number of primeval stones, it could be said that this was the foundation of the Gu. Yu village. They walked several hundred steps. It got darker and the sounds of water were faintly heard. After turning around a corner, a three jong, wide, one underground river greeted them. By now the colorful lights of the stalactites had disappeared completely, yet in the darkness the river emitted faint blue light. 
It was like a star river of the night sky. The river flowed from the dark depths of the cave. Inside the crystal clear waters, one could see fish, aquatic plants and even the sand beneath the river. Opposite the river was a sea of flowers. This was the Guu clan's closely cultivated moon orchids. The beautiful, blue and pink colored petals were like shaped like a crescent moon, the flower stems were like jade, the center of the flower shining like the sort of warm brilliance that radiates from pearls under the light. At first glance, in the dark background the flower sea looks like a huge piece of land covered in bluish green carpet dotted with countless pearls. The moon orchid is food for a lot of GU. This flower sea could be said as the clan's biggest cultivation medium, Fang Yuan thought knowingly to himself. Wow, so pretty, it really is beautiful. The new sight opened the young teenager's eyes. Each one of them had a light radiating from their gaze with excited and anxious feelings. All right, listen as I call your names. Those who are called must walk through this river to the opposite bank. Walk as far as you can, of course the further you go the better it is. Are you all clear? The elder said. All clear, the youths replied. Actually before they came here, they had all heard their family members or seniors talk about it. It is known that the further you can walk, the better your talent is. Your future will also become brighter. Guu Chen Bo. The elder held the name list and called out the first person. The river was wide but not deep, it covered up to a youth's kneecaps. Chen Bo's face was full of seriousness as he stepped into the flower sea ashore. As he did so, he could feel an invisible pressure as if there was a wall in front of him that he could not see, blocking him from walking forward. During this moment, the flowers at his feet suddenly gave off a weak white light. The light gathered around Chen Bo and entered his body. For a moment Chen Bo felt the pressure drop, the invisible wall blocking him suddenly felt softer. With this, Chen Bo gritted his teeth and mustered his strength, walking forward. He tried to force his way in stiffly, yet after three steps the wall in front of him hardened again back to the state before. Thus he could not walk any further. As he watched this the elder sighed. While recording what happened, he said, Guu Chen Bo, three steps, no talent to become a Guu master. Next, Guu, Yu Zhao Xie. Chen Bo was deathly pale as he walked past the river back to the youths, clenching his teeth. Without the endowed talent he could live as a normal human, holding the lowest position in the clan. His stature was shaky, it was a huge blow to him, as if reality had killed all his hopes. Many people threw him pitiful gazes, while even more had fixated stares at the second person crossing the river. It was a pity that this youth could only walk four steps forward, he did not have talent either. Not everyone has the natural talent to be a GU master. Generally speaking, it is not bad if 5 out of 10 people have talent. In the GU clan, this ratio is higher, reaching 6 people. This is because the GUU clan's ancestor, the first generation clan leader was a famous, legendary and powerful man. Due to cultivation reasons his bloodline carried powerful genes, thus the average quality of talent in the GUU clan was generally higher as they carried his blood in their veins. With two consecutive failures, the other elders observing the scene in the dark started making ugly expressions. Even the clan head was frowning. Slightly. The next moment, the academy elder called out the third name, Ji-Yu. Yu Mo Bei. Here, a horse-faced youth dressed in linen robes lightly called as he came forth. He was tall in build, looking much sturdier than his peers. There was a brave aura about him. He crossed the river in a few steps and reached the opposite bank. Ten steps, twenty steps, thirty steps, one after another. Small lights entered his body. He walked until he reached 36 steps before he could finally go no further. The youths at the riverbank watched with wide-opened eyes, shocked. The academy elder happily exclaimed, Good, Guu Mo Bei, be grade talent. Come here, let me see your primeval sea. Guu Mo Bei walked back to the academy elder's side. The latter stretched out his hand and put it on the juvenile's shoulder, closing his eyes. As he checked with focus, 
Then he retracted his hand and nodded, recording. Down on the paper, GUU Mo Bay, primeval sea measuring 6x6, can be vigorously trained. This special talent can be measured by four grades, A grade to D grade. A. D grade talent youth who is raised for three years would be able to become a rank one senior GU master, become the foundation of the family. A C grade. Talent youth after two years of cultivation will usually be able to become a rank two senior GU master, becoming the clan's backbone. A B grade talent must be cared for, often becoming a future clan elder, with six to seven years of training they will become rank 3 GU masters. And when it comes to a grade, even if it was just one, would bring great luck to the entire clan. Great care must be given, with this talent in about 10 years they can become a rank 4 GU master. At that moment they would be able to compete for the position of the head of the clan. In other words, as long as this GU Yumo Bay grows up, eventually he will become one of the elders of the GUU clan. That is why the Academy Elder laughed happily, the elders watching in the darkness also sighed in relief. Then they all turned to look at one of the elders amongst them with jealousy. This elder was also horse-faced, known as GUU Mo Bei's grandfather. GUU Mo Chen. His face was already smiling. He provokingly looked at his old nemesis and said, What do you think? My grandson isn't bad huh? Guu Kai Lian. Guu Kai Lian had a head full of red hair. He made an annoyed HMPH, not replying to other. It was apparent that his face expression was really dark. One hour later, half of the youths had already walked through the flower. See, there were quite a number of C and D grade talents among them, while half of those youths had no talent at all. Sigh, the bloodline is getting thinner. These few years the clan hasn't had any rank 4 masters to strengthen the bloodline. The fourth generation, clan head was the only rank 5 master, but in the end he perished together with the flower wine monk and did not leave behind any descendants. The GUU clan's later generation talents are getting weaker and weaker, the clan head said with a deep sigh. At this moment, the academy elder shouted, GUU Kai Chen. On hearing this name all the elders looked at Guu Kai Lian, this was Guu. Yu Kai Lian's grandson. Guu Kai Lian had a small and short build with a face full of pockmarks. He was clenching his fist, his entire face sweating. It was evident that he was incredibly nervous. As he walked onto the opposite bank, the little lights entered his body, after walking straight for 36 steps he stopped. Another B grade. The academy elder yelled. The youth started a commotion, sending Guu Kai Chen envious stares. Ha ha ha, 36 steps, 36 steps. Guu Kai Lian shouted, proudly staring at Guu Mo Bei. This time it was Guu Mo Chen's turn to have a sour face. Guu Kai Chen, huh, in the midst of the crowd, Fang Yuan stroked his chin thoughtfully. In his memories, the clan heavily punished Guu. Kai Chen because he cheated during the awakening ceremony. In reality, Kai Chen only had a C-grade talent, but because his grandfather Ji Yu Yu Kai Lian helped him fake the results, that's why he appeared to have B-grade talent. To be honest if he wanted to cheat, Fang Yuan had a countless number of ways to do so, some ways even more perfect than Ji Yu Yu Kai Chen's method. If a B-grade or a grade talent appeared, they would receive the clan's huge care. But firstly, Fang Yuan had only just been reborn. It was hard to prepare the cheating method by this condition. Secondly, even if he managed to cheat, he would not be able to fake his cultivation speed. He would be exposed by then. However Ji Yu Yu Kai Chen was different, his grandfather was Ji Yu Yu Kai Lian, one of the two elders with the most authority within the clan. With this Kai Lian would be able to cover up for his grandson. Ji Yu Yu Kai Lian was always hostile towards Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen, these two. Elders are the clan's two biggest influential authorities. To suppress his opponent he would need his own grandson to have an outstanding talent. It is also because he was helping from behind, Ji Yu Yu Kai Chen was able to conceal the truth for a time. 
In my memories, if it were not for that incident, the truth would never have been exposed. Fang Yuan's eyes shone with light, his mind thinking up ways to use this knowledge to his advantage. If he exposed the matter on the spot, he would receive a bit of reward from the clan, but then he would offend the highly powerful Ji Yu Yu Kai Lian. This was not advisable. Within such a short time he also could not blackmail them. Due to having low status, it would just backfire on him. As he pondered, he suddenly heard the academy elder call out his own name, Ji Yu Yu Fang Yuan. Chapter 5, The First Human and 3 G U Hope's Awakening. Chapter 5 The First Human and 3 G U Hope's Awakening. In that moment his surroundings went quiet. Countless numbers of eyes were on him. It's getting more and more exciting, Fang Yuan thought to himself with a laugh. Under the gazes of the masses, he walked across the river and reached the opposite bank. He could feel a layer of pressure on him. This pressure came from the spirit. Spring deep in the flower sea. The spirit spring produced primeval chi. Because the chi was too rich in here, it caused the pressure. But very quickly from the flowers below Fang Yuan's feet, little lights made their way up. These dots of light enveloped his entire body before finally entering him. These are the Hope Ji Yu, mused Fang Yuan. The person in charge did not tell them, but he knew it very clearly. Every spot of light is a Ji Yu, known as the Hope Ji Yu. One of the oldest legends talk about the Hope Ji Yu. In the legend, when the world was just formed it was a land of savage wilderness. Among the wild beasts that walked the earth, the first man appeared. He was known as Ren. Zhu one eating raw meat and drinking blood, living a difficult life. In particular was a group of wild beasts called predicament. These wild beasts loved the taste of Ren Zhu and longed to eat him. Ren Zhu did not have a body as strong as mountain rock, nor did he have the sharp teeth and claws of a wild beast. How could he fight with the predicaments? His source of food was unstable and he had to hide all day. He was at the bottom of nature's food chain, and could barely survive. At this moment, there were three GU that came up to him and said, as long as you use your life to provide us, we will help you through this difficulty. Ren Zhu had nowhere to go, so he could only agree to these three GU. He first gave his youth away to the biggest GU among the three. That GU then granted him strength. With strength, Ren Zhu's life began to change. He started to have a stable source of food and was able to protect himself. He fought bravely and ruthlessly, defeating many predicaments. But soon he suffered and finally realized that strength was not everything. It needed to heal and be cultivated, not spent freely at his will. Not to mention when facing the entire group of predicaments, his strength alone was too small. Ren Zhu reflected over this lesson bitterly and decided to give his prime middle years to the most beautiful Guamong the three. And thus, the second, Ji Yu gave him wisdom. With wisdom, Ren Zhu was able to learn how to think and reflect. He began to accumulate experience and found out that many times when he used wisdom, it was more effective than using strength. By relying on wisdom and strength was he able to conquer all the goals that he formerly could not and killed many predicaments. He ate the meat of predicaments and drank the blood of predicaments, surviving with tenacity. But good things do not last and Ren Zhu was old, and would only grow older. And older. This is because he gave away his youth and middle years to keep. The strength and wisdom GU. When a man is old, his muscles deteriorate. And his brain slows down. Human, what else can you give us? You don't have anything else left to. Provide to us, the strength and wisdom GU said as they realized this. They left him. Without wisdom and strength, Ren Zhu was once surrounded by predicaments. He was old and could not run, his teeth had fallen out and could not even chew wild fruits and plants. As he fell weakly onto the ground surrounded by predicaments, his heart was filled with desperation. It was at this time the third Ju said to him, Human, take me up. I will help you escape predicament. Ren Zhu tearfully replied, Ju, I don't have anything else left. See, the strength and wisdom Ju have abandoned me. I only have my old age left. 
while it is not as worth my youth and middle age, but if I give you my old age, my life would immediately end. Even though I am surrounded by predicaments right now, but I will not die immediately. I wish to live a little longer, even if just a second more. So you should leave, I have nothing else to provide to you. But the GU said, among the three I have the smallest needs. Human, if you just give me your heart, it will be enough. Then I will give you my heart, Ren Zhu said. But Ji Yu, what can you give me in return? In this situation, even if the strength and wisdom Ji Yu returned to my side, it would change nothing. When compared to the strength Ji Yu, this Ji Yu looked frail and was just a tiny ball of light. When compared to the wisdom Ji Yu, this one was only able to give out a dim white light, not beautiful in any way. But when Ren Zhu gave it his heart, this Ji Yu suddenly gave out endless light. In this light, the predicaments screamed in horror, this is the hope Ji Yu. Withdraw. We predicaments are most afraid of hope. The predicaments retreated suddenly. Ren Zhu was speechless, and from that day onwards whenever he faced predicament, he would give his heart to hope. At this moment, the hope Ji Yu converged into a stream of light and had already entered Fang Yuan's body. Due to the outside pressure they quickly gathered into his abdomen and collected into a group spontaneously, three inches under his navel. Fang Yuan suddenly felt the pressure lessen. He began to walk forward. With every step he took, one after another the Hope Ji Yu would fly out from the sea of flowers and enter his body, joining the ball of light. The ball of light grew brighter and brighter, but the person in charge opposite the riverbank frowned. This number of Hope Ji Yu is lesser than expected. Many elders watching. Fang Yuan in the dark thought this as they saw the sight. The clan head frowned as well. This was definitely not the sign of an A-grade talent. Fang Yuan withstood the pressure, continuing to walk forward. Below 10 steps it means that there is no cultivation talent. 10 to 20 steps means D-grade talent. 20 to 30 steps would be C-grade talent. 30 to 40 steps is a B-grade talent. And 40 to 50 steps would mean a grade talent. Up till now, I have walked 23 steps. 24, 25, 26, 27. Fang Yuan counted in his heart, when he walked the 27. Th. Step he could hear. A bang and in between his two kidneys the ball of light reached its limit and suddenly exploded. This burst of energy only happened inside his body, outsiders cannot see it. Only Fang Yuan alone could feel at that moment, an earth-shaking reaction. Instantly the fine hairs on his body stood up, his pores shut tight, his mind stretched to a tense limit. Soon after, his mind went blank, his entire body becoming soft as if he fell into some clouds. His heart relaxed, his fine hairs flattening and his pores reopened again. In a short while his entire body was perspiring. This entire process felt long, but it actually happened in a short time. The feeling went away as fast as it came. Fang Yuan was blanked out for a short moment before he returned to his senses. He secretly focused his attention into his body and found that below his navel and in between his two kidneys, an aperture had formed out of thin air. The awakening ceremony was a success. This was the hope to immortality. Chapter 6, The Road to the Future, will be interesting. Chapter 6, The Road to the Future, will be interesting. The aperture was mysterious and unusual. Although it was located inside Fang Yuan's body, it was at the same time, not sharing the same space with his internal organs. You could say that it was endlessly huge, yet at the same time infinitely small. Some call it the Purple Prefecture, some call it the Chinese Pool. However, many know it as the primeval sea aperture. The entire body is spherical, and the surface of it is covered in flowing white light, like a thin layer of light coating. It was the layer of light from the Hope GU that previously exploded. This thin membrane of light supported the aperture so it would not collapse. And inside the aperture was naturally, the primeval sea. The seawaters were smooth like a mirror, showing a greenish-blue color, yet the water was dense and brought about a copper luster. Only rank 1 GU masters can form this green coppery primeval essence, known as the green copper sea. 
The height of the sea surface was not up to half of the aperture, it was only up to 44%. This was also the limitation of AC grade talent. Every drop of seawater was pure primeval essence, representing the condensation of Fang Yuan's essence, vitality and soul. It was also the accumulation of his life. Potential over the past 15 years. This primeval essence is used by GU masters to raise GU. This also means that from now onwards, Fang Yuan has formally entered the root of a rank. One GU master. Since the aperture had opened, no more hope entered. Fang Yuan's body. Fang Yuan gathered himself and felt that the pressure before him was as thick as a wall, he could no longer walk another step forward. Just like my previous life, he smiled indifferently at this result. You can't go any further. The academy elder shouted across the river, holding onto a small thread of hope. Fang Yuan turned around and walked back, answering with his actions. At this moment even the young teenagers started reacting. The crowd suddenly buzzed with chatter. What? Fang Yuan walked 27 steps. So he was just AC grade talent. Unbelievable, only AC grade for such a genius like him. A great disturbance erupted from the crowd. Big Brother, among them, Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng looked up, watching. With shock as Fang Yuan returned across the river. He could not dare to. Believe it, his own brother was only AC grade. He had always thought that his older brother would be an A grade talent. No, not just him, even his aunt and uncle and so many people among the clan thought the same too. But now, the result was unexpectedly the opposite. Damn, he was only AC grade. The GUU clan head clenched both his fists, drawing a deep breath, disappointment in his voice. The elders watching from the darkness had mixed reactions. Some were frowning, some lowering their head in discussion, some looking up with a sigh. Could the results be wrong? How can that be? This method is accurate beyond reasoning, not to add that we were watching the entire time, even cheating is hard. But all his actions and intelligence previously, how do you explain those? Youths with higher quality of primeval sea would indeed display characteristics that surpass the ordinary man, such as intelligence, perception, memory, strength, agility and so on. On the other hand, these characteristics do not mean that the primeval talent is definitely high. Everything will still be determined by the results. Sigh, the bigger your hopes the bigger the disappointment. The GUU clan's generation now is no longer like the first generation. His socks were soaked with the icy cold waters from the river, the coldness piercing into his bones. Fang Yuan walked with the same emotionless face, his distance getting closer and closer towards the crowd. He could clearly see the academy, elder's heavy expression, and was aware of the stares thrown at him from over a hundred youths. These glares were mixed with amazement, shock, sneering, and some taking pleasure at this unfortunate event, some indifferent. It was the same situation, making Fang Yuan unwillingly remember his previous life. During that time he felt as if the sky had fallen. When he crossed the cold river he lost his footing and fell, soaking his entire body in the water. Feeling so lost, no one came forward to help him up. Those disappointed, cold expressions and gazes were like sharp knives, piercing into his very own heart. His mind was in chaos, his chest searing. With pain, it was as if he had fallen from the clouds, down to the ground. The higher you stand, the harder you fall. But in this life, as the same scene replayed itself, Fang Yuan's heart was calm. He thought of the legend, when predicaments come, give your heart to hope. And today that hope is inside of him. Even though it was not big, but it was better than those people who had totally no primeval talent. If others feel disappointed, then let them be disappointed. What else can they do? What does other people's disappointments have to do with me? The most important thing is to carry hope inside my heart. 500 years of living had led him to understand that the interesting things that happen in a person's life happens during the process when one chases after his own dreams. There is no need to ask others around you to not be disappointed or make them like it. Walk on your own path, let others be disappointed and unhappy however they please. 
Sai, the academy elder let out a deep breath and shouted, Next, Ji Yu. Yu Fang Zheng. But no answer came. Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng. The elder yelled again, the sound of his voice. Reverberating inside the cave. Ah, I'm here, I'm here. Fang Zheng snapped out of his shock and ran out. Hurriedly. Unfortunately he tripped over his own foot and fell, hitting his head with a groan and tumbled into the river. Instantly the entire cave was filled with huge laughter. The Fang brothers, nothing special. The Guu clan had scoffed, feeling a sort of annoyed boredom towards Fang Zheng. This is such a huge embarrassment. Fang Zheng struggled and splashed. In the water, the bottom of the river was just too slippery, he couldn't get up properly. Trying his best only made him look more stupid and clumsy. His heart increasingly flustered as the sounds of laughter filled his ears. But right at this moment, he suddenly felt a strong pull lifting him up. His head finally left the water surface and his body found balance again. He wiped his face in a panic and focused his sight. It was actually his older brother Fang Yuan who had grasped his collar and pulled him up. Big brother, he opened his mouth to say. But instead he started choking. On water, ending up triggering a violent cough. Ha ha, the difficult older and younger brother of the Fang family. Someone laughed at the riverbank. The laugher grew louder, yet the academy elder did not come out and stop it. He was deeply frowning, disappointment filling his heart. Fang Zheng was completely at a loss on what to do, and then he heard his brother say to him, go on. The road to the future will be interesting. Fang Zheng could not help but open his mouth in surprise. Fang Yuan's back was facing the crowd so they could not see properly, but Fang Zheng could clearly feel the calmness radiating from Fang Yuan. As his older brother spoke the corners of his mouth were slightly raised, revealing a deep and thoughtful smile. It was obviously only a C-grade talent, yet how can big brother be so calm? Fang Zhen could not help but wonder, his heart full of doubt. Yet Fang Yuan did not say any more. He patted Fang Zheng on the back, and turned, and walked away. Fang Zheng wore a stupefied expression as he walked towards the flower. See, I never thought Big Brother would actually be so calm. If it was me, I'd. He lowered his head, walking forward absent-mindedly. Yet he did not know that he was playing out a miraculous scene. When he finally snapped. Out of his reverie, he was already deep in the sea of flowers, standing in a distance that no one else had reached before him. 43 steps. Oh my god, a great talent. The academy elder screamed, seeming to have lost his mind. A grade, really an A grade. It's been three years, an A grade talented genius has finally appeared in the GU. You clan. The clan elders that were watching in the darkness were also screaming out. At the same time, losing their composures. Well, the Fang bloodline originated from a Sky bloodline. So we Kai family will adopt in this Yu Yu Fang Zheng, Yu Yu Kai Lian. Immediately announced. How is that possible? You old bad Kai Lian, your morals and abilities are out of order, but you're definitely good at misleading young boys. It's better to pass this kid to I, Yu Yu Mo Chen to raise. Yu Yu Mo Chen roared back instantly stop arguing no one is more qualified to raise this child than the current clan leader whoever has any objections is to go against me guu Bo. the guu clan head had gone crazy and swept his fiery red gaze over the disappointed and discouraged looks translator note finally chapter six is over i hope you guys are looking forward to the next chapter greater than also if you haven't noticed by now, and since the author mentions this in his note in chapter 1, the main character is a villain. He's definitely cruel, and very, very evil. If this is not your cup of tea, feel free to drop it. Otherwise, prepare yourselves for what's to come in future. Chapter 7, a GU master has 9 ranks, flower wine leaves behind. Treasure. Chapter 7 A GU Master Has 9 Ranks, Flower Wine Leaves Behind. Treasure. Soon a week passed. Humans are above all creatures, GU are the essence of heaven and earth. In this world there are thousands of species, countless number of GU. They live everywhere around us, in the soil, in the bushes, even on the bodies of 
wild beasts. As humans continue to propagate and grow, the scholars of the past gradually uncovered the mysteries of the GU. Those who have opened the aperture, using their own primeval essence to feed, refine and manipulate. These GU, people who have achieved these various purposes are what we call GU masters. And all of you have successfully opened your aperture in the awakening. Ceremony seven days ago, with the coagulation of the primeval sea, right now, you are all rank 1 GU masters. In the village academy, the academy elder talked with confidence and composure. In front of him were 57 students, seated and listening attentively. The mystery and strength of a GU master had been deeply rooted in the hearts of the youths a long time ago. Thus everything that the elder taught and said, the students were very interested in. At this moment a young teen raised his hand. With the elder's permission, he stood up and asked, Elder sir, I've known this since I was small. There, are rank 1 GU masters, rank 2 and so on, can you explain in more detail to us? The GUU teacher nodded and waved his hand to ask the young man to sit down. GU masters have 9 ranks, from bottom to the top, rank 1, rank 2, rank 3 all the way up to rank 9. Every rank is considered a big realm, and it is divided into four small realms, initial stage, middle stage, upper stage and peak stage. You have all just become GU masters, so all of you are rank 1 initial stage. If you all work hard in your cultivation, your cultivation base will naturally advance to rank 2, even rank 3. Of course, the higher your talent the bigger your chance of promoting. For D-grade talent, the primeval sea takes up about 2 to 3 layers of the aperture, the highest promotion reachable is rank 1 to rank 2. For C-grade talent, the primeval sea is 4 to 5 layers of the aperture. Usually the progress stops at rank 2, but with luck a small percentage of people can advance to rank 3 initial stage. B-grade talents have a primeval sea that takes up 6 to 7 layers of the aperture, they are able to cultivate to rank 3, even as far as rank 4. As for a grade talent, the primeval sea is plenty, it takes up 8 to 9 layers of the aperture. This kind of talent in a person is naturally the most gifted and the most suitable for a GU master's cultivation, being able to reach rank 5. As for GU masters who are rank 6 and above, they are all legends. I am not clear about the specifics either. In the GUU clan, there has never been the appearance of a rank 6 GU master, but rank 4 and rank 5 GU masters. We have had before. The teenagers' ears all pricked up, their eyes shining brightly as they listened. Many of them couldn't help but look at GUU Fang Jung who was sitting rigidly at the first row. He was an A-grade talent after all. Their eyes were filled with feelings of envy and jealousy. At the same time there were some who stared at the corner at the last row of the classroom. Leaning against the window at the corner was Ji Yu Yu Fang Yuan, who was bent over the desk sleeping soundly. Look, he's still sleeping, someone whispered. He's been sleeping continuously for a week, yet he's still not awake. Someone cut in. There's more. I heard that he was up all night, wandering about at the edge of the village. There's been people who've seen it more than once, apparently he holds a wine jar at night, dead drunk outside. Luckily these few years the village surroundings have been cleared clean, so it's safer. The fellow schoolmates whisper here and there, letting all kinds of small gossip spreading around. Quickly. Ah well, the blow was just too big. Someone hailed as a genius for so many years unexpectedly ending up to be a C-grade talent in the end, hee hee. If only it was just the case. Of all the people his own little brother was pronounced an A-grade, right now being the center of attention, enjoying the best treatment. The younger brother soars up to the sky, while the older brother falls to the ground, tut tut. As the discussion amongst the students got louder and louder, the academy elder's brow deepened into a frown. In the whole classroom all the teenagers were sitting respectfully, showing liveliness. This made Fang Yuan who was sleeping on his table stand out so much that it hurt the eyes. It's already been a week, yet he's still so dispirited. 
HMPH, initially I must have been mistaken by him, how could someone like this be a genius? The elder thought disgruntledly, he had spoken many times to Fang Yuan regarding this matter, but to no effect, Fang Yuan still did whatever he liked. He would sleep through every class, making the elder in charge of teaching have a very frustrated headache. Forget it, he's just a C grade. If he can't even withstand this sort of blow, fostering him with that kind of temperament will just end up wasting the clan's resources, nothing good will come out of it. The elder's heart was filled with disappointment towards Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan was just a C grade, compared to his younger brother Fang Zheng, who was an A grade talent, now this was someone worth the clan spending an amount of effort on raising. While the academy elder thought about all this, he was also replying to the latest question. In the clan history, there has been many strong masters. For rank 5 masters there were two. One of them is the first generation clan. Head, our ancestor. He was the one who established GUU village. Another one was the fourth clan head. He had remarkable talent, and managed to cultivate all the way to the realm of a rank 5 GU master. If it wasn't for that despicable shameless demon flower wine monk sneak attack, he might have been able to achieve rank 6, but who knows. As he said this he heaved a deep sigh. Below the platform, the youths, starting shouting in a rage. It's all because of that flower wine monk, he was too sinister and cunning. What a pity that our fourth clan leader was soft-hearted and benevolent, and died at a young age. If only I was born a few hundred years earlier. If I saw that demon I would have torn off his ugly face. The fourth clan head and the flower wine monk's story is something that the entire GUU clan knows. The flower wine monk was also a rank 5 GU master, famous among the demon faction in his time for his many years as a big flower thief. A few hundred years ago he traveled to Qingmao Mountain. He attempted to commit crimes in GUU village, but was found out by the fourth generation clan leader in the end. After a earth-shaking ly huge battle, the flower wine monk was beaten to the point he had to beg for mercy on his knees. The fourth clan head was merciful and kind, intending to spare his life. Yet the flower wink monk suddenly launched a sneak attack, successfully inflicting heavy wounds on the fourth clan head. The clan head flew into a rage, killing the flower wine monk on the spot. However his heavy injuries were not curable and thus, he died. Therefore in the hearts of the GUU clansmen, the fourth generation clan, Head was a great hero who sacrificed his life for the village. Flower wine monk Ha, awoken by the classroom's noisy chatter. Fang Yuan opened his sleepy eyes. He stretched his body and thought with resentment in his heart, this flower. Wine monk, where did he die? Why is it that I still can't find his legacy after? Searching around the entire village. In his memories, there was a GU master from the clan who was brokenhearted and started drinking a lot. About two months later from now, the man was heavily drunk as he lay down outside the village. His heavy wine aroma unknowingly attracted a liquor worm. The GU master was ecstatic, fully intent on catching it. The liquor worm hurriedly fled, and as the GU master was in hot pursuit after it, he followed the liquor worm's trail and discovered an underground hole entrance and went in. The liquor worm was a very precious and expensive type of GU. The half drunk GU master decided to risk it and enter the hole, finding himself in a secret underground cave. After that, he discovered the bones of the flower, wine monk, and the inheritance he left behind. When the GU master returned to the village, he reported his discoveries and immediately caused a big stir among the entire clan. Later on that GU master benefited much from it, his cultivation base suddenly becoming outstanding. His lover who had once abandoned him before was attracted to him again, and he became the talk of the clan for a while. Sadly I only heard bits and pieces about this piece of news, so I don't know where the accurate location is. It wasn't like I knew I would be reborn. Again to this day. Flower wine monk, where in the world did you die off? 2. These few days he had been buying a lot of wine, wandering around the village as soon as night arrived. 
He wanted to use the aroma of liquor to attract the liquor worm. Unfortunately he never saw the liquor worm appear, making him feel very disappointed. If I could find that liquor worm and refine it into my vital GU, that would be so much better than the clan's moonlight GU. In the blink of an eye it's already April, there's not much time left. Fang Yuan heaved a sigh and gazed out of the window. Under the blue sky and white clouds, verdant mountains stretched into the distance. In the vicinity was a bamboo grove. This was Qing Mao, mountain's unique spear bamboo, each bamboo stick as straight as a line. The ends of the bamboo exceptionally sharp like the tip of a spear. Not too far away, the woods were already turning green. The tender shoots sprouted in a sea of yellow-green color. Every now and then, beautiful and colorful sparrows would perch on the branches. The wind of spring blew, wrapping up the freshness of the mountains and rivers and dispersing it into the world. Without knowing it, the class was almost over. The academy elder finally informed, this week I have taught you all how to contemplate and check your own aperture's primeval sea and how to meditate and shift around the primeval essence inside your body. Now is the time for you all to refine your vital GU. After this class ends, you will all go to the academy's GU room and pick a GU worm. After choosing your GU, please go home and focus on refining it. When you have finally refined your GU, then you can come back to the academy and continue attending class. At the same time, this is your first assessment. Whoever can finish this assessment first will be rewarded a generous sum of 20 primeval stones. TL note. Sorry for the delay, I've been busy. Here's the long-awaited. Chapter 7. Chapter 8. Things will always be things, but humans will change. Chapter 8 Things will always be things, but humans will change. Beside the academy was a GU room. The GU room was not big, it was only 60 meters squared in size. In a GU master's road to cultivation, a GU is the key to strength. At the end of class, the excited teenagers rushed towards the GU room. Form a line, enter one by one, some voices suddenly yelled, it was natural that there were guards outside the GU room. The youths went in one at a time and came out. Finally it was Fang Yuan's turn to enter the GU room. This room was a mysterious room. The four walls all had holes, in each one. Of these embedded square holes were another square hole. Each of the holes differed in size, some big and some small. The bigger ones were no bigger than an earthenware cooking pot, the smaller holes no smaller than a fist. In the many square holes were all kinds of containers, there were gray stone basins, verdant jade dishes, exquisite grass cages, earthen stoves etc. These containers kept in all kinds of variety of GU. Some GU were silent, while some GU made a lot of noises, creating chirping, clucking, rustling sounds and so on. All these noises combined together to create a sort of life symphony. GU are also divided into nine big levels, following the same concept of the nine rank realms of GU masters. All the Gwyn this room are rank 1 GU. Fang. Yuan glanced around, immediately aware of this. Generally speaking, rank 1 GU masters can only use rank 1 GU. If they used higher level GU, these masters would need to pay an extremely heavy price. In addition, GU need to be fed. The high cost of feeding higher level GU was often not something lower rank GU masters could afford. Thus to GU masters who were newcomers, they would always pick a rank. One GU worm is their first refined GU unless under a special situation. There is great significance to the first GU that a GU master refines, it will become their vital GU, interconnecting their lives together. If it dies, the GU Master will suffer a huge blow. Alas, my original wish was to get my hands on the flower wine monks. Liquor worm and refine it as my vital GU. But right now there are still no leads on my search for the flower wine monks skeleton. I don't even know when will I be able to find it, or when someone else does. Just to be safe I'll pick a moonlight GU first. Fang Yuan sighed inwardly as he walked straight along the wall on his left. One of the top layers of the holes in this wall had a row of silver plates. In 
Every plate was a GU. These GU were crystalline and shaped like a crescent, it was like a piece of blue quartz. Against the backdrop of the silver dish, the GU gave off a quiet and beautiful feeling. Known as the Moonlight GU, this variety of GU was the local GU of the GU. Yu clan and many of the clansmen would choose the Moonlight GU as their vital GU. The Moonlight GU was not a GU of nature, it was a breed that was cultivated with a secret method by the GUU clan. The Moonlight GU could not be found anywhere else, it could be said that this GU was a symbol of the GUU clan. Since it was all rank 1 Moonlight GU, there was very little difference among one another. Fang Yuan casually chose one and took it. The Moonlight GU was very light, comparable to the weight of a piece of paper. The insect occupied a small area of his palm, it was roughly the size of a common jade pendant. As Fang Yuan put it on his hand, he could see through it and gaze at the lines on his palm. With one last look and finding nothing wrong with it, Fang Yuan put the Moonlight GU into his pocket and walked out of the GU room. Outside the GU room, the queue was still quite long. As soon as the next person in line saw Fang Yuan leave, he went into the room hurriedly with excitement. If it were others, when they got their GU the first thing they would do would be to take it home and quickly refine it. But Fang Yuan was not in a hurry to do so, for his mind was still thinking about the liquor worm. The liquor worm was more precious compared to the Moonlight GU. Although the Moonlight GU was a specialty of the GUU village, it did not help a GU master as much as a liquor worm. After he left the GU room, Fang Yuan headed straight for the tavern. Shopkeeper, two jars of aged wine. Fang Yuan fished around his pockets and drew out the remaining primeval stone pieces, putting them onto the counter. These few days he would come here and buy wine, then go around the village border and scout, intending to attract the liquor worm so it would appear. The shopkeeper was a short and fat middle-aged man, his face oily. After these few days he had already remembered Fang Yuan. Sir, you've come. While he greeted Fang Yuan, he stretched out a thick and short chubby hand and skillfully swiped away the primeval stone pieces. As he put them onto his palm he shifted his hand up and down and felt that the weight was correct. With this the shopkeeper's smile deepened. Primeval stones were the currency used in this world, used to measure the value of all commodities. At the same time it was also a condensed matter of the world's essence, usable on oneself, and is important in helping a GU master in his cultivation. As it has monetary attributes as well as usable properties, it was similar to the gold on Earth. Earth has a gold currency standard system, and in this world it was replaced with primeval stones. Compared to gold, the purchasing power of primeval stones is even more astonishing. However, with Fang Yuan's continued spending like this, no matter how many primeval stones he had it would not be enough. Two jars of wine every day, and it has been seven full days already. The initial savings I had are already almost all spent, Fang Yuan frowned slightly as he walked out of the tavern with two jars of wine. Once someone becomes a GU master, he would be able to extract primeval essence straight from a primeval stone to replenish the primeval sea in his aperture. Thus to GU masters, primeval stones were not just a form of currency, but also a supplement in their cultivation. With sufficient primeval stones, the rate of cultivation will increase greatly, this can make up for the disadvantages of those with lower talent grade. I won't have primeval stones to buy wine anymore tomorrow, yet the liquor worm just doesn't want to appear. Do I really have to take the moonlight GU and refine it as my vital GU? Fang Yuan felt rather unsatisfied. As he walked with the two jars of wine in his hand, he started to wonder. Academy Elder said, the first person who manages to refine his vital GU will get a reward of 20 primeval stones. Right now I guess a lot of them are at home trying their best to refine their GU and compete for the first position. A pity, refining the vital GU is more of a test of one's talent. Those with better primeval talent will have better advantage. With my C grade, 
talent, without any special means I have totally no chance of winning. It was at this moment, the voice of Ji Yu Yu Fang Jung called out to him. From behind, big brother, you really did go to the tavern and buy alcohol. Follow me, aunt and uncle want to see you. Fang Yuan stopped in his tracks and turned around. He found his younger brother was no longer like before, always lowering his head as he spoke. Right now the two brothers gazed at each other face to face. A gust of wind blew, lifting up the older brother's messy short hair, the lower hem of the younger brother's robe swishing around. Just a short period of one month has gone by, yet humans change. A week after the awakening ceremony, a huge change came upon the older brother and the younger brother. The older brother Fang Yuan fell from the clouds, the title of genius mercilessly destroyed. And the younger brother began to bloom with radiance, slowly rising up like a new star. To the younger brother Fang Zheng, this sort of change was earth-shaking too. His world. He finally tasted the feelings that his older brother used to have. The feelings of people pinning their hopes on him, the feelings when people use envious and jealous looks to gaze at him. He felt like he was suddenly dragged out from a dark corner and placed into a heaven filled with light. Every day when he woke up, he felt like he was having a very sweet dream. The difference of how he was being treated from before and now was like day and night, making him somewhat unable to believe his reality even until now, but at the same time also strongly unaccustomed to it. It was hard to adapt. In a short while from being unknown to someone who was closely watched. People pointing at him all the time. Sometimes when Fang Zheng walked on the road, he would hear people around him talking about himself, voices praising him. His face would heat up and he would feel completely at a loss of what to do, his eyes trying to avoid gazes, he even almost forgot how to walk properly. The first ten days or so, Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng became thinner yet his energy became more vigorous. From the inner depths of his heart, something called self-confidence began to manifest. This is what Big Brother had always been feeling before, how beautiful and painful at the same time. He could not stop thinking about his older brother Ji Yu Yu Fang Yuan. Facing such attention and discussion, how did his older brother deal with it? He subconsciously started to imitate Fang Yuan, pretending to look expressionless all the time, but quickly found that he was not fit for this kind of style. Sometimes during class, a girl's shout could easily send him red-faced. On the roads, all the flirting from older women even caused him to flee in a hurry many times. He was like a toddler learning how to walk, stumbling and falling as he tried to get used to his new life. During this entire process, he was unable to avoid hearing about his older brother, falling into depression, becoming a drunkard, not going home at night, sleeping soundly in class. He felt very shocked at this. His own older brother, once a strong entity and hailed as a being of great genius, suddenly becoming like this. But slowly he started to sort of understand. His big brother was also a normal man after all. Encountering this kind of setback and huge blow would send anyone into depression. Along with this understanding, Fang Zheng secretly felt an indescribable happiness inside. This feeling was something he was terribly unwilling to admit, but yet it definitely existed. His older brother who was hailed as a genius and always covering him in shadow, acting so depressed and dispirited right now. From a reverse angle, it was a testimony to his own growth, wasn't it? He was the outstanding one, this was the real truth. Hence when he saw Fang Yuan holding the wine jars, his hair messy and clothes untidy, Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng felt relieved, his breathing also becoming a lot easier. But yet he said, big brother, you have to stop drinking, you cannot go on like this. You have no idea how worried the people who care about you are, you need to wake up. Fang Yuan was emotionless, he did not say anything. The two brothers gazed at each other. Younger brother Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng's eyes were shining, giving off a sharp and keen feel. And the older brother Ji Yu Yu Fang Yuan's two orbs were a deep black, faintly resembling a deep ancient pool. These eyes could not help but make Fang Zheng feel a strange oppression. Not long after he 
subconsciously turned away his gaze and looked somewhere else. But when he realized it, he felt a sudden rise of anger. It was an anger that was directed at himself. What? S wrong with you? Can't even muster the courage to look directly at your big brother. I've changed. I've completely changed. With these thoughts his eyes shifted back their sharpness and he shot his gaze at his brother again. But Fang Yuan was already not looking at him. Holding a jar of wine in each hand, he walked past Fang Zheng and said in a dull voice, what else are you gawking at? Let's go. Fang Zheng's breathing became disoriented, the strength that had accumulated inside his heart no longer able to be released. This made him experience a depression that was hard to describe. Seeing that his older brother had walked far ahead, he could only quicken his pace to catch up. But this time his head was no longer lowered, but rose to meet the sun. His gaze was fixed on his own feet that was stepping on his older brother Fang Yuan's shadow. Chapter 9, Two People Who Start On the Same Road, Gradually Becoming Distant Chapter 9, Two People Who Start On the Same Road, Gradually Becoming Distant the sunset was a red hue setting over the east. The sky was still bright, but everything seemed to be covered by a shade of gray. Overlooking the window, the mountains in the distance were gradually drawing towards a heavy black color. The light in the living room was dim. Aunt and uncle sat high in their chairs, their faces enveloped in shadow, their expressions hard to discern. As he saw Fang Yuan carrying the two jars of wine, his uncle Ji Yu Yu Dong Tu's eyebrows twisted into a knot. He opened his mouth and spoke, in the blink of an eye, you are both fifteen years old now. Since you both have the talents of a GU master, especially Fang Zheng, your aunt and I are proud of the both of you. I will give you both six pieces of primeval stones, take it. Refining your GU consumes a lot of primeval essence, so you'll need these primeval stones. As he said this, some servants came over and passed Fang Yuan and Fang Zheng each a small bag. Fang Yuan took his bag silently. Fang Zheng immediately opened his bag and looked inside to see six pieces of oval-shaped, grayish-white primeval stones. His face lit up with gratitude. At once and he stood up from his seat, facing his aunt and uncle. Fang, you aunt and uncle, your nephew does need primeval stones to replenish. My primeval essence, you have both raised me until today, this gratitude is engraved into my heart, I shall not forget it forever. Uncle smiled and nodded. Aunt hurriedly waved her hands and said, warmly, sit down, sit down. Although you both are not our children, directly, we have always raised you as our own. You both are able to gain a future, and we are proud of that. Alas we do not have children of our own. And sometimes we thought that if you both could really become our children it would be the best. Her words brought deep meaning. Fang Zheng did not understand it, but Fang Yuan frowned a little. Uncle cut in and said, I have discussed this with your aunt. We thought of adopting you both and become a genuine, real family. Fang Zheng, I wonder if you are willing. Fang Zheng was stunned for a second, but the look on his face quickly emerged a joyful smile and he said, to be honest, ever since both my parents died I have longed very much for a family of my own. To be able to become a family with aunt and uncle, this is too good to be true. Aunt's expression loosened and she laughed, then you are our good son. Shouldn't you stop calling us aunt and uncle? Father, mother, Fang Zheng in a state of realization changed his statement. Aunt and uncle laughed heartily. What a good son, not a waste of us. Husband and wife to raise you since you were five years old. And we have raised you for ten whole years, aunt wiped her tears. Uncle looked at the silent Fang Yuan and said gently, Fang Yuan, how? About you. Fang Yuan shook his head without saying a word. Big brother. Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng was about to advise him, but uncle, whose tone was unchanged, stopped him. If that's the case, Fang Yuan my. Nephew, we won't force you. Since you are already 15 years old, you need to start being independent, this way you will also easily carry on your fang. Bloodline. Uncle here has prepared 200 primeval stones for you as financial support. 200 primeval stones. 
Fang Zheng's eyes opened wide, he had never seen so many primeval stones in his life. He couldn't help but reveal a jealous expression. But Fang Yuan still shook his head. Fang Zheng was puzzled, while uncle's expression changed slightly. Ant's face had also turned cloudy. Aunt and uncle, if there is nothing else, then your nephew will take his leave. Fang Yuan did not give them any chance to speak again. After he finished his sentence he took his wine jars and left the hall immediately. Fang Zheng rose from his seat and said, Father, Mother, Big Brother is not thinking straight, how about you let me advise him? Uncle waved his hand and deliberately sighed, alas this matter cannot be forced. Since you have the heart, as your father I am already very content. Servants, take care of young master Fang Zheng treat him well. Quote, then your son will take his leave, Fang Zheng retreated, and the living room fell into silence. The sun set below the mountain, and the living room became darker. In a while from the darkness uncle's cold voice emerged. Looks like this brat, Fang Yuan has seen through our plot. Among the regulations of the Guu clan it was clearly stipulated that the eldest son at 16 years of age would have the qualifications to inherit the family property. Fang Yuan's parents had passed away, leaving behind a fortune. It was being taken care of by aunt and uncle. This inheritance was not something a measly sum of 200 essence stones could compare to. If Fang Yuan had also agreed to be adopted by aunt and uncle, then he would lose the right to inherit this fortune. If Fang Yuan at this year's age of 15 decided to be independent, he would also not conform to the clan's regulations. Luckily we managed to win over Fang Zheng, and Fang Yuan only has C. Grade talent, uncle heaved a sigh, feeling joyful. Then husband, if Fang Yuan decides to go independent at 16 years of age, what do we do? Aunt's tone was hysterical as she thought about the inheritance. HMPH, since he is acting undisciplined, then he can't blame us. As long as we catch him committing a huge mistake before he leaves us and expel him. From our family, it will be counted as snatching away his right to inherit the legacy, uncle explained coldly. But the brat is very clever, how would he make a mistake? Aunt asked, puzzled. Uncle rolled his eyes immediately and whispered angrily, you are really stupid. If he won't make a mistake, can't we frame him instead? Just let Shen Kui seduce Fang Yuan and scream assault, we catch him on the spot. Fabricate a story about him acting wild while he was drunk. Surely we can. Expel Fang Yuan. Husband you really have a way, what an ingenious plan. Aunt was. Overjoyed at that moment. The thick colors of the night covered the sky, and the stars that blanketed. The sky were mostly covered away by floating dark clouds. Each of the. Households in the village gradually lit up with lights. Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng was ushered into a room. Young Master Fang Zheng, the old master personally had me tidy up this room specially for you, Mother Shen said with a hospitable tone. She bowed her waist, her face having a flattering smile. Fang Zheng looked around with a glance, his eyes shining. This room was at least bigger by two times compared to his previous room. The middle of the room was a spacious bed, beside the window was a rosewood desk with a delicate set of ink and paper. The walls were decorated with exquisite ornaments, and beneath his feet was not an ordinary floor, but covered in a layer of soft handmade carpet. From his childhood until now, Fang Zheng had never stayed in such a room. He immediately nodded his head continuously and said, This is very good. It really isn't bad, thank you Mother Shen. Mother Shen was aunt and uncle's most highly valued person, she was in charge of all the slaves in the house and was a housekeeper who lived up to her reputation. The girl Shen Kui who served Fang Yuan was her daughter. Mother Shen laughed, I am not deserving of young master's gratitude, it is my duty, my duty. Young master, do not hesitate to eat well and sleep well. Whatever you want, just shake the bell beside your bed, somebody will attend to you immediately. Old master has already instructed us, so in ease. Few days please do put all your attention on cultivating, young master. Just, leave all the other chores to us. Fang Zheng felt a gush of gratitude in his heart. 
He did not say anything. But deep down inside he decided, this time I must get number one and not let aunt and uncle down. The dark clouds in the sky were getting heavier, and the night was getting darker. In the night sky most of the stars were covered away by the clouds, leaving a few shining with faint light, blinking away in the sky. Aunt and uncle must be plotting on how to expel me from the house right now. In my previous life they secretly instigated the servants to provoke me, and then framed me. Then they expelled me from the family, I wonder if there will be any changes in this life. Fang Yuan sneered in his heart as he walked along the streets. He had long seen clearly the true colors of his aunt and uncle. But he could also understand it. Men would throw away their lives in pursuit for wealth. No matter whether on earth or in this world, there would always be many people who would be willing to trample over kinship, friendly and love for their own self. Interests and benefits. In fact kinship did not exist. In the beginning when aunt and uncle took in Fang Yuan and Fang Zhang, their only purpose was to seek the heritage. It was just so that the two brothers were repeatedly unexpected. All things are difficult before they are easy. To me this is more so of the case. Firstly I do not have outstanding talent. Secondly I do not have the care of a teacher. It is equivalent to raising a family from nothing, but with my parents' legacy it can be said to be a huge advantage for me. In my previous life aunt and uncle stole away the heritage, and because of that I had to waste two full years to be able to cultivate to rank one peak stage. In this life I cannot afford to make the same mistake. Fang Yuan pondered in his mind as he walked. Instead of staying home, he held the two jars of wine and walked towards the outskirts of the village. The night deepened and the dark clouds obscured the starlight, the mountain breeze blew, growing stronger gradually. The mountain rain was coming, but he still had to search, to get a hold of his parents' inheritance, he would need to wait until he was sixteen. And the flower wine monk's treasure was the only thing that he could get his hands on in the short run. There were not many people on the streets. The houses along the road showed a dim light. Some small rubbish and leaves were blown away by the wind, drifting about. Fang Yuan's thin clothing could not stop the mountain wind, and he could not help but feel a cold chill. He simply opened the wine jar, drinking a small mouthful of wine, although it was turbid wine, but after swallowing it he felt a warm feeling rising up. This was the first time that he actually drank wine in these few days. The further he walked out of the village, the lesser the houses beside the road, and the dimmer the lights became. In front of him it was even darker. The wind blew heavily against the mountain forest, the branches swaying in the night, making a whistling noise that sounded like a herd of beasts. Roaring, Fang Yuan's pace did not slow down. He walked out of the huge entrance of the village and out into the darkness, going further as he walked. And, behind him were the bright and brilliant lights of tens of thousands of houses. In these lights there was a warm corner. The younger brother Fang Zheng was seated at his desk, reviewing the notes that he had taken down during class. The lights in the house were shining brightly, the insolid wall blocked away the cold winds. Beside his hand was a cup of warm ginseng tea, the steam rising up from the cup. Young Master Fang Zheng, the hot bathing water has been prepared for you. Outside the door, Shen Kui's voice softly floated through. Fang Zheng's heart jolted. Then bring it in please. Shen Kui walked into the room with her waist bowed, her expression. Pleased. Your servant greets young master. Her eyes sent amorous glances at Fang Zheng. Fang Yuan was only a C-grade talent, but Fang Zheng was an A-grade talent. To be able to get a hold of him, is truly the biggest fortune. Chapter 10. A storm may arise. From a clear sky, refining GU is full of hardships. Chapter 10 A storm may arise from a clear sky, refining GU is full of hardships. Pitter-patter. Big, heavy raindrops fell to the earth, battering the roof of the verdant bamboo house, making brittle sounds. The surface of the pond in front of the building was full of ripples as the rain fell, the fish in the water swimming lively around, the aquatic plants swaying about at the bottom of the pond. The sky was overcast, a thick rain 
curtain obscured the field of vision as far as the eye could see. In the somewhat dim room the window was open, and Fang Yuan quietly watched the heavy rainfall, sighing. It has already been three days and three nights. On the night three days ago he had walked out of the village with two jars of wine, searching around the surroundings. But when it was late into the night, it started pouring rain, put aside him being drenched to the bones, the main point was that in the situation he could not go about searching anymore. The rainwater would quickly wash away the wine fragrance. At the same time if he forced himself to search under such conditions, it might arouse suspicions. Although previously he pretended to become a depressed, drunken person to cover up his real motives, but he knew never to underestimate the intelligence of others around him. Only a fool would think others were stupid. Thus under this helplessness, Fang Yuan could only stop his search. Not to mention that the moment it started raining, the rain had went on. Continuously. Sometimes it became heavier and sometimes lighter, but it never stopped. I guess in this way, I won't be able to find the liquor worm for a short period of time. To be safe I can only choose to start refining the moonlight. G.U. While I refine it, if I can find the liquor worm during the process it would be the best, but if I can't then this would have to do. But this matter is very common, a storm may arise from a clear sky, something unexpected may happen anytime. In this world who can do everything without obstacles in his way, having a perfect journey. Fang Yuan's thoughts were very calm, his 500 years of experience had long washed away the impulsiveness that he rarely had in the first place. He closed the door and window and sat cross-legged on his bed. He closed his eyes slowly and after breathing a few times, he calmed his state of mind. In the next moment the vision of his primeval aperture appeared in his mind. The aperture may be positioned inside his body but it was mysteriously unusual, limitlessly big and yet infinitely small. The outer layer of the aperture was a layer of light. The white light gave a thin impression, but it still supported the aperture well. In the aperture was a sea of primeval essence. The seawater was a green, copper color, the surface of the sea clear and calm as a mirror. The water level was about half the height of the aperture. The entire volume of the sea occupied 44% of the aperture. This was the green copper primeval sea of a rank 1 GU master, and every drop of seawater was primeval essence. It was Fang Yuan's life elementary force and the condensation of his essence, vitality and soul. Every drop of primeval essence was precious, because it was the root of a GU master, and was the source of power. GU masters need to rely on primeval essence to refine and use GU. As he retreated his mind from the primeval sea, Fang Yuan opened his eyes. Retrieved the moonlight GU. The moonlight GU quietly sat in the middle of his palm, resembling a curved blue moon, small and crystalline. With a simple thought, the primeval sea in his aperture tumbled and a jet of primeval essence broke from the sea surface and transferred out of the body. Finally rushing into the moonlight GU. The moonlight GU suddenly radiated. Fiercely in blue light, slightly trembling in Fang Yuan's palm, resisting the influx of primeval essence. GU or the essence of heaven and earth, carrying the secrets of the world. The bearers of the law of nature. They are living creatures that live freely. Under the sky, each born with a will of its own. Right now with Fang Yuan. Trying to refine it, it would mean wiping out its will. Feeling the danger. Looming, the moonlight GU naturally resisted. The process of refining is a very difficult one. The moonlight GU was like a curved crescent moon. As the green copper, primeval essence poured into the crescent, the two pointed ends of the crescent turned green. Slowly this green copper essence began to spread to the middle of the crescent moon. In less than three minutes, Fang Yuan's face had become pale. A huge volume of primeval essence continuously poured into the moonlight GU, making him feel a weakness that rapidly attacked his heart. 1%, 2%, 3%, 8%, 9%, 10%. 10% minutes later, Fang Yuan's primeval sea had used away 10% of primeval essence. Yet on the blue crystalline moonlight goo surface, the 
points of green copper essence on the two tips of the crescent only. Expanded a tiny little area towards the center. The resistance of the moonlight GU was immensely strong. Fortunately, Fang Yuan had anticipated this earlier and did not feel surprised. He persisted and poured in more essence into the moonlight GU. 1%, 2%, 3%. After another 20 minutes, the primeval sea in Fang Yuan's body was only left with 14%. The green copper essence on the moonlight GU had expanded slightly, the two tips of green essence adding up together, covering the surface of the moonlight GU by about one twelfth. The rest of the moonlight goo surface was still the original color of light blue. Refining a GU is so hard, Fang Yuan sighed as he looked at it. He broke the influx of primeval essence, stopping the refining process. Up until now, he had been refining for half an hour, the primeval sea in his aperture consumed over more than half, with only 14% of primeval essence left, and the moonlight GU was only refined by one twelfth of it. To make matters worse the moonlight GU was still emitting its faint blue halo. Even though Fang Yuan had stopped refining, the moonlight GU did not stop resisting, it was still driving out Fang Yuan's green coppery primeval essence. Fang Yuan could clearly feel that the primeval essence that he poured into the moonlight GU was being pushed out, bit by bit by the moonlight GU out of its body. On its surface, the green copper essence at the two tips of the moon crescent was slowly shrinking. Based on this speed of reduction, in about six hours later the moonlight GU would be able to completely expel all of Fang Yuan's primeval essence. At that time when he needed to refine this GU it would make no difference. From starting over again, every time when refining GU, it is just like a fight between two armies, a battle of positional warfare, or war of attrition. Even though I refined one twelfth of the GU, I wasted three quarters of my primeval essence. When refining GU, a GU master has to replenish his primeval sea while continuously engaging the refinement process, consolidating his victory. The refinement of a GU is a test of one's skill in shifting his primeval essence and the patience of an enduring battle. Fang Yuan took out a piece of primeval stone from his money bag as he pondered. A GU master had two ways to replenish the consumed primeval essence. The first way was natural recovery. After a period of time the primeval sea would naturally replenish the primeval essence. In the case of AC grade, talent like Fang Yuan, it would take about one hour to replenish 4% of primeval essence. In six hours it could recover 24% points of the total quantity primeval essence. The second way was to absorb the natural essence directly from a primeval stone. The primeval stone is a treasure from nature itself. As condensed natural primeval essence, while absorbing at the water level of the primeval sea was rising with a continuous speed that could be seen with the naked eye. After about half an hour the primeval sea had been replenished back to its original volume of 44%. At this level the rising water level of the sea stopped abruptly. Even though there was still space inside the aperture, Fang Yuan could not store any more primeval essence. This was the limit of his C-grade talent. Thus from here one can see the significance of the grade of one's cultivation talent. The higher the talent, the more primeval essence the aperture can hold, and the faster the natural recovery of the primeval essence will be. In Fang Yuan's case to refine a GU and solidify his results, he would have to absorb primeval stones because his primeval essence natural recovery rate cannot defeat the rate of the moonlight GU expelling it out. However in the case of the A-grade talent Fang Zheng, he could replenish 8% of primeval essence every hour. In 6 hours he would recover 48% of primeval essence, and in the same time frame the moonlight GU could only expel away 3% points of primeval essence. Fang Zheng did not require the external help of a primeval stone. He could go on refining with a few rests in the process and successfully refine the moonlight GU in a few days. That was why Fang Yuan knew from the beginning that in this test, to refine the Moonlight GU he never had the chance to obtain the first position. 
it had nothing to do with a person's actual strength, as the first factor was the grade of talent. The second factor would be primeval stones. If there was an abundance of primeval stones, without hesitation to consume, a B-grade talent could also surpass an A-grade talent and obtain the first position. In my hands are six pieces of primeval stones. I cannot compare to GUU, Mobei or GUU Kai Chen, these kinds of people who have their elder family members supporting them from behind. My talent is on C-grade, and cannot be compared to Fang Zheng who has an A-grade talent. I never had a chance of winning in this test. Why not divert my energy and go look for the liquor worm? If I can make the liquor worm into my vital GU it would be so much better than the moonlight GU. Hum. The sound of rain outside. The window has gotten lighter. There seems to be a sign of ceasing. The rain has been ongoing for three days and three nights. It should be time it stopped. Fang Yuan kept the moonlight GU and got down from his bed. As he was about to open the window, there was a knock on the door. Outside the door came his servant Shen Kui's voice, Young Master Fang. Yuan, it's me. It has been raining straight for three days, so I brought you some food and wine. Young Master can eat and drink and ease some depressed feelings. Chapter 11, It's Just Power Play. Chapter 11 It's Just Power Play. Fang Yuan frowned slightly. Based on intuition and 500 years worth of life experience, he could smell a conspiracy. His eyes flashed and he relaxed his brows. I'm a little hungry right now. You came at the right time. Come in, he said. Outside the door, while carrying the food box Shen Kui smiled coldly as she heard his reply. But when she pushed open the door, her face was left with a gentle and meek expression. Young Master Fang Yuan, the food and wine smells really good. I can smell it as I hold the box. Her voice was sweet and had a hint of longing and flattery. She put the food box on a small table and took out the dishes, arranging them nicely. The food was indeed very fragrant and tasty. After that she took out two wine cups and poured the wine. Come, young master, sit down. Your servant mustered her courage today and wants to accompany young master for a drink. She smiled like a flower, walking to Fang Yuan's side. Boldly she took him by the hand and pulled him over to sit at the chair by the table. Then she sat on his thigh and leaned her gentle body against Fang Yuan's chest, acting like a timid and lovable woman, whispering in his ear. Young, Master Fang Yuan, your servant has always liked you. It doesn't matter. What grade you are, I will always wish to be beside you, rely on you, and comfort you. Tonight your servant would like to give her body to you. She really dressed up today. She put on blusher, her lips like cherry powder. When she whispered in his ear, a delicate and youthful breath teased at Fang Yuan's earlobe. Because she was sitting on his lap, Fang Yuan could feel her well-shaped figure. Easily. Her elastic thighs, her slender little waist and her soft chest. Young master, let me feed you wine myself. Shen Kui picked up the wine. Cup, raising her head and taking a sip. Then her eyes fixated on Fang Yuan. Her small cherry lips a little opened, slowly leaning over to his mouth. Fang Yuan's expression was indifferent, as if what was on his lap was not a young maiden, but a block of sculpture. When she saw Fang Yuan's expression, Shen Kui felt a little uneasy at first. But when her lips were just an inch away from his, she was assured. Sneering in her heart. You're still pretending, she mused. Just at this moment Fang Yuan scoffed, his tone disdainful. So it's just a power play, one. Shen Kui's face became stiff and she swallowed the wine in her mouth. Trying to pull false flattery. Young master Fang Yuan, what are you saying? Fang Yuan's eyes were emitting cold light. He stared into Shen Kui's eyes, placing his right hand on her snowy white neck at the same time, slowly pressing it with force. Shen Kui's pupils shrank and her voice was full of panic. Young master, you're hurting me. Fang Yuan did not answer, but his hold on her neck grew stronger. Young master Fang Yuan, your servant is a little scared. Shen Kui already had difficulty breathing, she was looking flustered. A soft pair of hands subconsciously grasped at Fang Yuan's hand, trying to pry his hand away. 
but Fang Yuan's hand was strong like iron, unable to be pulled away. Looks like uncle and aunt let you come over to seduce me and frame me. This must mean that there are already people arranged downstairs, huh? Fang Yuan laughed coldly, adding, but who do you think you are, coming? To use tactics on me, with the two piles of garbage of rotten flesh on your chest. As he said this, his left hand climbed up her chest and ruthlessly grabbed her soft breasts, making it incredibly deformed all of a sudden. Intense pain flared from her chest, Shen Kui's eyes were round and wide. Opened. The pain was so great that her eyes were full of tears. She wanted to scream, but Fang Yuan gripped her throat so strongly that in the end she could only sob for a few times. Then she started resisting strongly, for she really was going to suffocate. But at this moment, Fang Yuan slowly relaxed his grip. Shen Kui immediately opened her mouth and gulped in air greedily. Her breathing was too eager, resulting in a series of violent coughs. Fang Yuan laughed lightly, stretching out his palm. He gently stroked her cheek, his tone carefree as he spoke, Shen Kui, do you think I can kill you, or not? If Fang Yuan roared at her with an evil and loud voice, Shen Kui might actually fiercely retaliate. But when Fang Yuan smiled and spoke in a shallow manner, his soft voice asking if he could kill her or not, Shen Kui felt a deep fear from the bottom of her heart. She was scared. She looked at Fang Yuan with terror on her face, seeing this young man smiling all over his face as he gazed at her. At this instance, Shen Kui vowed to herself that she would never forget his eyes for the rest of her life. This pair of eyes were not mixed with the slightest emotion, dark and profound, resembling a deep ancient pool that was hiding a horrifying beast. Under the gaze of these eyes, Shen Kui felt like she was naked in the midst of ice and snow, the person before me, definitely dares to kill me, is able to kill me. Oh heavens, why did I come and provoke this kind of devil? Shen Kui's heart was full of remorse. At this moment she longed to turn and flee, but right now she was still on his lap, she did not dare to run away, not even able to pluck the courage to do any action. The muscles on her entire body were tense, her gentle stature trembling. Her face was as pale as white paper and she could not utter a single word. Since you as a personal servant girl, have been serving me for so many years, I won't kill you this time. Since you want to escape from slavery, go and find my little brother, he's stupid and naive. Fang Yuan retracted his smile and patted her cheek, his tone plain like water. With a sigh, he finally said, you can leave. Shen Kui was as dumb as a piece of wood as she walked out obediently. She was afraid out of her wits, and did not know how she managed to leave. The side of the devil called Fang Yuan. The men hidden in the shadows looked confused when they saw Shen Kui. Come out looking so shaken. They actually arranged such a beautiful trap, it's even more innovative than my previous life. Hee hee, aunt and uncle, this kindness of yours I will remember deeply. Not long after Shen Kui left, Fang Yuan stood up and left as well. No matter what, he could not stay at this residence anymore. A wise man sees and mitigates foreseen risks, what more to say for a devil? When there is insufficient strength, only a fool would put himself in danger. Innkeeper, do you have any rooms available? Fang Yuan came to the only inn in the village and asked for the price. Yes, yes, there is room on the second floor and third floor. Not only is it cheap, the rooms are also tidy and clean. The first floor is the cafeteria. Guests of the inn can come here and eat. There is also service for asking the inn workers to bring up food to your room. The innkeeper was full of hospitality as he entertained Fang Yuan. This inn was the only one in the village, but the business was not very good. In fact it was somewhat deserted. Only when the annual merchant caravan came by to trade on Qingmao Mountain, the inn would be full of people. Fang Yuan was a little hungry, so he passed two full round pieces of primeval stones to the innkeeper. Give me a good room for me to stay in, and prepare two jars of wine, three to four different dishes, return me any excess balance. Done. The innkeeper took the two pieces of primeval stone and asked, Would you like to eat in your room, or dine in the hall? Fang Yuan looked at the sky. 
The rain had stopped and it was nearing. Evening. He could simply eat in the lobby and set out straight for the outskirts of the village when he was done, continuing his search for the treasure of the flower wine monk. Thus he replied, I'll eat in the hall. The inn had a dining hall, there were a dozen square tables, four long benches surrounded each table, in between the tables were huge and thick pillars that were supporting the inn. The floor was covered with big tiles of marble, but it was wet, it was hard to conceal the moisture of the mountain. There were three tables seated with people. Seated by the window, an old man was drinking wine, gazing outside at the sunset, being all alone. In the middle of the cafeteria was a table seated with five to six hunters. They were discussing about their hunting experiences in loud voices, and at their feet were a pile of different kinds of mountain prey, like pheasants and hares. In another corner was a table with two young people, seemingly discussing in secret. Their figures were hidden in the darkness, it was hard to see them, and harder to know their gender. Fang Yuan decided to sit by the table nearest to the door. Soon after, the dishes were served on the table. With my C-grade talent, to refine the moonlight GU I would need to borrow primeval stones. If my luck is good and this moonlight GU does not have a strong will, I would only need five pieces. But if it is stubborn that I'd be in trouble, probably need around at least eight pieces. GU are living creatures, so it is natural for them to have the will to survive. Some have a strong will and would always resist the refinement process. Some GU have weak will, all throughout refining they helplessly surrender. Once there was no resisting, the refining process would become relaxing. Right now I only have six primeval stones on me, but I gave two to the innkeeper so I'm left with four pieces. There's not enough. In this world primeval stones are the local currency, and the buying power is very strong. A normal family of three would spend at most one piece of essence stone in a month. But when it came to a GU master, the consumption of primeval stones was greater. Take Fang Yuan for example. Just by refining GU alone he would need an average of seven primeval stones or so. And this is just on a moonlight GU, if he really did find the liquor worm, just to refine it with Fang Yuan's great talent, he would need at least a dozen more. In other words, right now my situation is, even if I find the liquor worm, I don't necessarily have the primeval stones to refine it. However I still need to search around, because there is a huge possibility that the flower wine monk's treasure has a huge abundance of primeval stones. This was not a difficult deduction. The flower wine monk was a rank 5. GU master after all. For such a famous strong warrior of the demonic faction, how could he not have primeval stones, which are the must-have item in a GU master's cultivation? One power play, tactics exhibiting are intended to increase a person's power or influence. TN note, was this chapter too dark? Chapter 12, Green Bamboo Wine is fragrant, GU Master flaunts. Power. Chapter 12 Green Bamboo Wine is fragrant, GU Master flaunts. Power. Right now everything comes down to the flower wine monk's treasure. If I can find it, all my problems will be solved. If I don't find it, all these issues will greatly slow down my speed of cultivation. If that happens all, lose out to people at my age in cultivating. I don't understand. I've spent more than a week trying to attract the liquor worm to appear, why'd I still not see it? Fang Yuan frowned and racked his brains. It was like putting food into his mouth, but still not knowing how it tasted one. Suddenly there was a loud noise, interrupting his thoughts. Fang Yuan looked at the direction of the sound, realizing that the six hunters seated around the table at the middle of the hall were heavily drunk. The Atmosphere around them was fiery and their faces were all red. Brother Zhang, come, drink another cup. Old Brother Fang, we brothers admire your abilities. You took down a black-skinned wild boar alone, what a man. This cup of wine you must drink, or else you'll be disrespecting us. Thank you brothers for your sincerity, but I really can't drink anymore. Brother Fang can't drink anymore, perhaps you dislike this wine because it's not good enough. Waiter, come over. Give me some good wine. 
The noise was becoming louder, it was obvious that the group had drunk a lot. The waiter hurriedly went over and said, Well good sirs, we do have good wine, but it is quite expensive. What, you're afraid we won't pay up? When the hunters heard the waiter, quite a few of them stood up and stared at the waiter. They were either big and tall or thick and burly in stature, capable and vigorous in a threatening manner, each having the courage that mountain men possessed. The waiter quickly said, I would not dare to look down on you brave men. It's just that these wine is really expensive, one jar costs two pieces of primeval stones. The hunters were stunned. Two primeval stones was definitely not cheap, it was the sum of two months of the normal average household monthly expenses. Even though hunters earn more from hunting when compared to ordinary mortals, like how sometimes a black-skinned wild pig could be worth half a primeval stone. However hunting was risky and a mistake could turn the hunter into prey. To the hunters, using two primeval stones just to drink a jar of wine was just not worth it. Is there really such an expensive wine? Boy, you aren't trying to lie to us right? The hunters were shouting about, but their voices felt a little timid, unable to back out of the situation with grace. The waiter kept telling them he wouldn't dare. The hunter called brother Fung saw that the scene was not right, and he hurriedly said, my brothers, let's not spend any more. I can't drink any more, let us drink this wine another day. What, you can't say that brother? This is. The rest of the hunters were still shouting, but their voices started to fade away. One by one they sat back in their seats. The waiter was also a shrewd person. When he saw this, he knew that he was not able to sell the wine any more. However this situation hardly surprised him. As he was about to retreat, a young man's voice came from the table at the dark corner. Hee <laughs> hee. Hilarious. Each one of them blindly shouting for nothing. If you can't afford to buy wine, you should just obediently keep your mouth shut and go to the side. When the hunters heard this, one of them immediately retorted in anger. Who said we can't afford it? Waiter, bring over that jar of wine, I'll give you the stones, two pieces of it. Oh, give me a moment sir, I'll get it. The waiter did not expect such a turn of events. He hurriedly replied and turned to grab a wine jar and brought it over. This wine jar was as big as the common jar of wine, but the moment it was uncorked, in that very instant a refreshing and mellow fragrance filled the entire cafeteria. Even the old man sitting alone at the window could not help but turn his head over when he smelled the wine aroma, and he gazed at the jar of wine. It was definitely good wine. Dear guests, it's not bragging. This is the green bamboo wine, the entire village only has one in, which is us. Smell the fragrance. The waiter inhaled deeply as he said this, his facial expression full of satisfaction and enjoyment. Fang Yuan was moved. This in waiter was really not boasting. In the Guu village there were three taverns. The wine sold there were the common rice wine, muddy wine and other similar common wine. In order for Fang Yuan to attract the liquor worm, he continuously bought wine for seven days, it was naturally that he was aware of the prices. Several of the hunters looked at the wine jar before them. They were consumed by alcohol addiction. Each of them twitched their noses and swallowed. As for the hunter who bought the wine in a moment of anger, his expression was even more interesting, a layer of remorse and anger appeared on his face. After all this jar of wine was the value of two primeval stones. I was too rash and bought the wine by impulse. This waiter is not too typical. He immediately brought the wine, now the cork is unsealed. Even if I want to return the goods it is too late. The more the hunter pondered, the more distressed he felt. He wanted to return it back, yet he was unable to do so in fear of being humiliated. At last, he could only bang on the table and said with a strong smile, Damn, this wine is good. Brothers please, drink all you want. Today this wine is on me. At this moment the young man at the table in the corner hissed, How is this small jar of wine enough for six? If you have the guts then go buy a few more jars. The hunter was furious when he heard this and stood up in a rage, his eyes fixed on the young man who spoke. 
Brat, you sure have a lot of words. Come, stand up and fight me. Oh, then I will stand up. The young man got up from his seat as he heard the hunter's remark, grinning as he walked out from the shadows. His body figure was tall and thin, his skin pale. He was dressed in navy battle robes and looked clean and neat. His head wore a blue headband, his upper body had a jacket that showed his thin and weak shoulders. The lower body had long pants, the feet were covered in bamboo sandals and the calves were tied. The most important thing about him was the green belt on his waist. The middle of the belt was a shiny piece of copper, on the copper plate was a black one word. It's a rank 1 GU master. The hunter clearly understood what this manner of clothing represented. He drew in a deep breath, the anger on his face dissipating, replaced by alarm. He had never imagined that he actually provoked a GU master. Didn't you want to fight me? Come on then, hit me. The young GU master walked slowly towards the man, a playful smile on his face. But the hunter who had challenged him earlier had become frozen like a sculpture. Unable to move from his spot. Maybe you guys can all come at me together, that works too. The young GU master slowly walked to the hunter's table, casually speaking. The expressions on their faces had changed. Some of the hunters who had drunken red faces had gone pale suddenly. Each of their foreheads was drenched in cold sweat, and they felt restless, too afraid to even breathe. Heavily, the young GU master stretched out a hand, picking up the green bamboo wine jar. He put it under his nose and sniffed, smiling. He said, it sure smells good. If my lord likes it, then please feel free to take and drink it. It is an apology from me for offending my lord, the hunter who provoked him earlier. Hurriedly replied and cupped his hands together before his chest, pushing a smile to his face. Unexpectedly the young man's facial expression changed fiercely, with a loud crack the jar fell into pieces on the ground. The GU master looked cold. As ice, his gaze sharp like a sword. He hissed angrily, you think you have the right to apologize to me. You bunch of hunters must be really rich, even richer than me, since you guys spent two primeval stones to drink wine. Do you have any idea how upset I am over primeval stones right now? You actually dare to show off your wealth in front of me at this time. You mortals can even compare to me. We wouldn't dare, we wouldn't dare to offend my lord, it is a heinous crime. We mortals did not mean to offend you, these are our primeval stones. Please accept Lord G.U. Master. The hunters quickly got on their feet and took out the primeval stones they had. But how could these mortals have money, all they pulled out was just bits and fragments of primeval stones, the biggest fragment piece was no bigger than a quarter of a primeval stone. The G.U. Master did not accept these primeval stones, but he did not stop sneering. He used his hawk-like gaze and swept past the entire cafeteria. The hunters that he scanned over lowered their heads. The old man who sat at the window watching the scene also quickly turned his head to avoid the G.U. Master's gaze. Only Fang Yuan watched quietly, void of hesitation. The clothing that this young G.U. Master was wearing was the uniform that only formal G.U. Masters could wear, so Fang Yuan was not qualified to wear it. Fang Yuan would only receive it from the clan after he graduated from the academy. The word, one, on the copper piece on the belt of the young GU master, was to indicate his position as a rank 1 GU master. However he was already around 20 years or so, and the aura of primeval essence that his body emitted seemed to indicate that he was rank 1 upper stage. Starting cultivation at 15 years of age and only reaching rank 1 upper. Stage at around 20 years of age, this showed that the young GU master was only of D grade talent, which was a grade worse than Fang Yuan. There was a high possibility that this man was only a logistics GU master, not even counted as a battle GU master. However, even if that was the case, when facing these six brawny hunters, it was more than sufficient. This was the gap of power between a GU master and a mortal human. With power, one can be at the top. This is the nature of this world. No, 
Actually any world is also the same, the big fish eats the small fish and the small fish eats the shrimp. It's just that this world shows it even more. Openly, Fang Yuan mused secretly. All right Zhang Ya, you already taught them a lesson. Let's not further embarrass these mortals. If it gets out, even if you are not embarrassed, I would be, the other young person sitting in the corner voiced out. When everyone heard the voice speak, they realized that this young person was a woman. The young GU master called Zhang Ya stopped sneering as his female companion chided him. He did not even bother looking at the fragments of primeval stones that the hunters had taken out. These stones were not even the sum of two primeval stones. He was definitely not interested in it. He flicked his sleeve and walked back to his original table. As he strode back he said maliciously, if you think you have the guts to continue drinking, then go and drink green bamboo wine. I want to see who still dares to drink this wine. The hunters all lowered their heads, acting like six obedient sons after being scolded. The strong aroma of wine filled the entire cafeteria. The hunter who bought the wine felt his heart aching as he smelled the fragrance. After all he had spent two primeval stones on this wine, yet he never got to drink even one. Mouthful. Fang Yuan put down his chopsticks, he had eaten enough. As he sniffed in the wine aroma his eyes flashed for a moment, then he took out two primeval stones and put them on the table. Waiter, give me a jar of green bamboo. Wine, he said indifferently. The whole scene froze. The young GU master called Zhang Ya instantly stopped in his footsteps. The corners of his mouth twitched and he exhaled. He had just finished his warning, yet right after he was done Fang Yuan wanted the wine. This was like specially stepping over him and slapping him in the face. He turned around and narrowed his eyes, shooting a cold glare at Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan calmly stared back, his face indifferent and void of fear. Zhang Ya's eyes flashed and the coldness in his gaze slowly disappeared, he felt the aura of primeval essence on Fang Yuan's body. After realizing Fang Yuan's identity, he lit up with a smile and said warmly, Ah, it's a junior. Brother. Everyone else came to the realization and the looks they shot at Fang Yuan. Changed. No wonder this young teenager was not one bit afraid of a GU master, it was because he was also one. Even though he was still attending the academy, his position was already different. Lord GU master, your wine. The waiter scurried over, smiling all over his face. Fang Yuan nodded at the young GU master and took a jar of wine and walked out of the inn. One, I believe it means that he is putting in effort, yet he cannot see the results. TN note, it's 7 a.m. now, I'm going to sleep and translate another chapter. Later if I'm not called to go to work. Chapter 13, The Bamboo Forest. Under the Moon, A Bead of Snow. Chapter 13, The Bamboo Forest Under the Moon, A Bead of Snow. Around 300 years ago, an incredible genius appeared in the GUU clan. He was very talented and had already cultivated to the point of a rank 5 GU master at a young age, and even had the possibility of going further. He was famous throughout Qingmao Mountain, had a bright future and was the pinnacle of hope and responsibility in the clan's eyes. In the history of the GUU clan, everyone spoke of him the most, the fourth clan head. Unfortunately he sacrificed himself to protect his people and fought the Equally powerful rank 5 GU master, the demonic flower wine monk. Even though he defeated the flower wine monk after a fierce battle, he let the devil get on his knees and beg for mercy. In the end he was careless and got caught by the flower wine monk's sneak attack. The fourth head angrily executed the flower wine monk, but due to his own heavy injuries he died an untimely death. This tragic incident had long since circulated until today, becoming a popular story among the GUU clan. However Fang Yuan knew that this story was not to be believed, because it had a very large loophole. In his previous life, a month later from now, a drunken GU master who had been rejected by his lover lay down outside the village, so drunk he was like a fish. In the end because of the overflowing smell of wine, it ended up attracting a liquor worm. The GU master chased after the liquor worm and found the remains of the 
Flower Wine Monk in a Secret Underground Cave, also finding the flower. Wine Monk's Inheritance. This GU master quickly hurried back to the clan and told them of the matter, causing a huge stir. As the storm gradually subsided he also gained benefit from it, he obtained the liquor worm, his cultivation increased, the girlfriend who once abandoned him went back to his side and he became the talk of the village for a while. When stories are passed down generation by generation, it is normal to change along the way. But in Fang Yuan's memories, the story of the GU master discovering the treasure seemed quite authentic, yet he had a feeling that the story was hiding other truths. I was not aware of it at first, but in these few days while I searched and analyzed on the side, I feel that something feels out of place. The night grew dark, and as Fang Yuan walked in the bamboo forest that grew around the village, he reviewed through the clues he had so far in his head. If I put myself in his shoes and think about it, when I discover the flower, wine monk's treasure why would I not take it all for myself, but go and notify the clan instead? Don't even mention sense of clan honor, everyone has greed in their hearts. What is it that would make that GU master betray the greediness in his heart, even going as far as to be willing to abandon all interest and profit, and report this finding to the clan's top brass? The truth is always hidden inside the fog of history. Fang Yuan racked his brains but he could not get the result. After all the clues he had were too few. The only two clues he had could easily be true or false, so it could not be fully relied upon. Fang Yuan could not help but think of himself. No matter what, after buying this jar of green bamboo wine I only have two primeval stones left on me. If I can't find the treasure then I'll be in grave trouble. Today shall be. Considered the final gamble, it's all or nothing. However he didn't have enough primeval stones to refine a GU worm in the first place. So why not invest it in this wine and increase the chances of success? If it were in the case of other people, most of them would probably play it. Safe and save up the primeval stones. But in the case of Fang Yuan, the Efficiency of doing so was too low. He would rather take the risk and gamble. You see, the people of the demonic faction love to take risks. Right now, the night grew thicker, the spring moon shaped like a bow. Clouds obscured the moonlight, as if coating the crescent moon with a thin sheet of gossamer. Because it just finished raining continuously for three days and three nights. The turbid energy between the mountains had been washed away clean leaving behind the purest of freshness. This fresh air was pure like a piece of white paper, and was more effective in spreading the wine aroma around. That was the first reason why Fang Yuan was full of confidence tonight. The previous seven days of searching was not without gain. At least it proved that the flower wine monk did not die in those places. This was the second reason for Fang Yuan's confidence. In the bamboo forest the grass was luxuriant, the white flowers endless and the green spear bamboo straight like a pencil, the forest resembling a clump of jade rods. Fang Yuan opened the jar seal, releasing a thick wine aroma instantly. Green bamboo wine could be said as the GUU village's number one wine. This was the third reason for Fang Yuan's confidence tonight. With these three big reasons gathering together, if I want to succeed it has to be tonight. Fang Yuan cheered in his heart as he slowly tilted the wine jar, pouring a small stream of wine, dripping it onto a stone. If those bunch of hunters saw this sight, they would have probably become insanely distressed. This wine is worth two whole primeval stones after all. But Fang Yuan was indifferent. The fragrant aroma quickly spread out into the night. The breeze was Gentle, the faint aroma floating about and contaminating the bamboo forest. Fang Yuan stood at his spot, smelling the aroma. He waited for a while, yet. He did not see any movement. All he heard was a nightingale crying in the near distance, it sound like a string of bells. His gaze was silent. He did not feel surprised, and he moved away, walking to a spot a few hundred meters away. In this place he did the same, pouring out a few drips of wine and waiting at the spot. He did the same thing over and over again, moving away to a few other different locations, dripping wine a few times. 
after all that the green bamboo wine in the jar was only left with a bit. This is the last time, Fang Yuan sighed. He tipped the wine jar over, the bottom facing the sky. All the remaining wine left in the jar flowed out. The wine sprinkled over the grass, letting the green grass sway about. The wild flowers were stained with wine, slightly lowering their heads. Fang Yuan stood with the last shred of hope in his bosom, and gazed around. Right now the night was already very deep. A thick cloud had obscured the moonlight. The dark shadows were like a curtain, covering the bamboo grove. It was deadly silent all around, each strand of green spear bamboo. Standing alone, leaving a trail of lines that were straight up and down in Fang Yuan's pupils. He quietly stood at the spot, listening to his own clear breathing. Then he felt the small hope that he carried in his chest, slowly dissipating away. Becoming nothing, it failed after all. His heart muttered, today I had three great advantages. Gathered together, yet I still failed, not even seeing the shadow of the liquor. Worm, this means that in future the rate of success will be lower. Right, now I only have two primeval stones left, and I still need to refine the Moonlight G.U. I can't risk it anymore. The end result of taking a risk was often unsatisfactory. But when the result was ideal, the profit would be impressive. Fang Yuan liked taking risks, but he was not a gambling addict, and he was not someone who was bent on gambling back what he lost. He had his own limit, he was clear about his own capabilities. Right now, the 500 years of life experience was telling him it was time to stop. Sometimes life was like this. Often it was that there was that one goal that seemed so perfect, filled with temptation. It seemed so near yet with so many twists and turns, the goal was constantly unfulfilled. It made people restless, thinking about it night and day. This is the helplessness of life, but it's also the charm of living, Fang. Yuan laughed bitterly, turning to walk away. It was at this moment. A gust of wind blew, like a gentle arm, lightly brushing away the clouds in the night sky. The clouds floated away to reveal the hidden moon. The crescent-shaped moon hanging in the sky was like a white jade lamp, pouring moonlight that was clear as water down onto the earth. The moonlight spilled over the bamboo forest, spilled onto the mountain rock, bathing onto the rivers and streams in the mountain, shedding onto Fang Yuan's body. Fang Yuan was dressed in plain clothing, under the gentle touch of the moonlight, his young face became fairer. The darkness seemed to fade away. In a flash, and taking its place was a field of snowy frost flowers. As if it was infected by the moonlight, the nightingale began to sing once more, but this time it was not just one, but many. Scattered among the bamboo grove, they all tweeted in response. At the same time, a type of insect that inhabited huge mountains, the dragonpill crickets that were active under moonlight started singing a rustling song of life. They were critters that only came out in the night. Their bodies emitted faint red light, at this moment they jumped out in droves, each of their bodies flashing with the brilliance of a red agate. At first glance, Fang Yuan thought that these dragonpill crickets were like Jets of crimson water bouncing about, landing on the green grass and wild flowers, prancing under the moonlight in the bamboo grove. The bamboo forest was like a conscious pond, under the moonlight the green jade colors of the spear bamboo flashed in the brilliance of light and smooth jade. The enchanting sight of the dense trees and bright flowers in spring, Mother Nature was showing Fang Yuan her immense beauty at this moment. Fang Yuan unconsciously stopped in his footsteps, feeling as if he was in a heavenly land. He was already about to depart, but at this moment he subconsciously looked around. The clump of wild flowers and grass that he had poured the last dredges of wine over trembled gently in the wind, remaining empty. Fang Yuan laughed at himself and took back his line of sight. However, unexpectedly in the process of turning away, he saw a dot of white snow. This bead of snow was glued to a spear bamboo pole not far away. Under the moonlight it was like a suspended round pearl. Fang Yuan's two pupils expanded fiercely, his body trembling slightly. His heart dropped and started pumping faster each second. It was the liquor worm. T.N. Note. 
I promised two chapters on Friday but I ended up having to go to work on both weekends, so sorry for the delay. I pumped this one out as soon as I could. Chapter 14, In the Mountain. Crevice Hides a Profound Theory. Chapter 14 In the Mountain Crevice Hides a Profound Theory. The liquor worm was shaped like a silkworm, its entire body giving out. Pearl white light. It was a little chubby and had a cute appearance. The liquor worm fed on wine and could fly. When it flew around, it would curl up into a ball, and its speed was very fast. Even though it was only a rank 1 GU, but it was worth even more than a few rank 2 GU. To make it into one's vital GU was way more beneficial than the moonlight. GU. Right now the liquor worm was glued to a bamboo pole nearly 50 to 60 steps. Away from Fang Yuan, he held his breath, not closing in rashly, but slowly. Walking backwards, he knew his distance was very near, but to really catch a liquor worm. Directly it was an incredibly difficult task for a GU master who just opened. The primeval aperture like him. You could say, there was totally no hope of success. Fang Yuan's was unable to see the liquor worm clearly, but in the darkness. He could feel the liquor worm directing its vigilance at him. He slowly, backed away gently, trying his best not to disturb the liquor worm. He knew that if the liquor worm was to fly away, he could never catch up. With his own speed, he needed to wait until the liquor worm drank until it was drunk, and then with its flying speed slowed down he would have a chance to catch it. Seeing Fang Yuan retreated further away, the liquor worm crawling on the bamboo pole stirred. The strong aroma of wine before it was so tempting, so attracting, making the worm lost in a reverie. If it had saliva, it would have long been drooling a pool of saliva around it. But the liquor worm was incredibly wary and vigilant. Only after Fang Yuan retreated 200 steps back did it shrink a little and bounced into the air. When it fluttered high in the air, its body curled up into a ball, looking like a small and white rice dumpling. The little dumpling swept across the air in a round arc, floating down onto the grass that was sprinkled with green bamboo wine earlier. With delicious food right before its eyes, the liquor worm dropped its guard. It impatiently climbed onto a flower bud filled with some wine and popped its little head in, only leaving a chubby tail on the outside. The liquor worm was ravenous, and the green bamboo wine was so delicious. It opened its mouth wide and inhaled, very quickly lost in the deliciousness of its food, totally forgetting about Fang Yuan. At this moment, Fang Yuan started to approach cautiously. He could see the tail of the liquor worm outside the flower bud. This tail was just like a silkworm's tail, chubby and rounded. The light it emitted made people think of a pearl. At first the liquor worm's tail was hanging outside, unmoving. Then after a while this tail started to curl upwards, showing that it was drinking really happily. At the end when Fang Yuan was only ten steps away, its tail started wagging and swinging with a cheerful rhythm. It was totally drunk. Seeing this made Fang Yuan nearly laugh out. He did not continue walking forward, but patiently waited. If he rushed over right now he would definitely have a huge chance on catching the liquor worm, but Fang Yuan's intention was to have this liquor worm guide him to the flower. Wine monk's remains. In a moment the liquor worm withdrew from the flower bud. Its body was fatter and its head swayed about, resembling a drunken man. Unexpectedly, it did not realize Fang Yuan's presence. It climbed up onto another bright yellow flower and perched on the stamen, feeding heartily on the wine. Droplets there. This time after it had finished drinking, it finally felt full. Its body slowly shrank into a round ball and slowly flew up. When it was 1.5 meters above the ground, it leisurely flew in the direction of the deeper part of the bamboo forest. Fang Yuan quickly followed after its trail. The liquor worm was already heavily drunk, making it fly slower by half of its usual speed. Even though this was the case, Fang Yuan still had to run with all his might to follow after its shadow. The night was washing past his vision as the young teenager ran in the bamboo forest, chasing after a small bead of snow not far ahead. The moonlight was gentle, the breeze slow and steady. In the bamboo forest, 
That was like a clear pond, the stalks of green spear bamboo flashed past. Before his eyes, quickly falling behind him, the ground was a green carpet. Of grass, riddled with blossoming wild flowers. There were small stones, with moss growing, and the yellow shoots of bamboo. Fang Yuan's faint shadow was also speeding ahead on the ground, passing through the shadows that each stalk of bamboo cast on the earth like a black line. He tightly kept his sight on the bead of snow, gulping in huge amounts of fresh mountain air, ordering his legs to catch up in the midst of faint wine. Aroma in the air. Because of his speed, the moonlight looked like water to his eyes. Light and shadow moved frequently, like he was galloping in water filled with seaweed. The liquor worm flew out of the bamboo forest, and so did Fang Yuan. A sea of white flowers with a yellow spot in the middle borrowed the wind. From his feet, scattering their petals, a group of dragonpill crickets, resembling a flowing poem just so happened to move to the front, as Fang Yuan dashed through there was a swoosh and a red cloud bloomed before him, dispersing about a sea of red star fireflies that emerged from the cloud. A quiet mountain stream paved with pebbles, the gurgling water surface. Reflecting the spring moon in the night sky, with a few splashes Fang Yuan. Waded across, creating thousands of silver-colored ripples. It was a pity that this stream, after so many ages, had its beautiful and precious stones trampled upon and broken. Fang Yuan was in hot pursuit, firmly following behind the liquor worm. Going upward the mountain stream, he could already hear the sound of a waterfall. After he turned around a sparse forest, he saw the liquor worm fly into a crevice in the middle of a boulder. Fang Yuan's eyes lit up and he stopped in his tracks. So it's here. He panted heavily, his heart beating against his chest like mad. With this one stop he could feel his entire body covered in sweat, hot air surging throughout his body accompanying his accelerating blood flow. Looking around, he found that this place was a shallow benchland one. Pebbles of various sizes covered the ground, the river surface barely covering over the small stones. There were also blocks of gray boulders scattered freely in the area. Behind Qingmao Mountain was a huge waterfall. The flow of the waterfall varied with the weather, it plummeted down to the earth, pounding out a deep pool. Beside the deep pool was the Bai clan village, a clan with powerful influence that was comparable to the Guu village. The waterfall branched out to many smaller branches, and it was apparent that Fang Yuan was facing one of the many branches of a branch. On normal occasions this benchland was dry, but due to the recent heavy rainfall that went on for three days and three nights, a shallow stream formed here. The source of the flowing stream was from the huge boulder that the liquor worm had entered into earlier. The boulder leaned against a vertical mountain wall. Small waterfalls that branched away from the main waterfall were like silver pythons that flowed down the mountain wall, hitting onto the boulder. After a considerably long time the middle of this huge boulder had eroded away and formed a crevice. At this time as the waterfall washed down, the water current gently roared. It was like a white curtain, completely obstructing the gap in the boulder. After observing his surroundings, Fang Yuan's breathing was no longer anxious. His eyes flashed with a hint of resolve, he walked to the boulder and took in a deep breath, and then he rushed in headfirst. The boulder gap was rather large, and two adult humans could walk side by side in it with no problems. What more to say with Fang Yuan, who was merely a 15-year-old teenage boy. Once he rushed in, the rapid currents pressured down on Fang Yuan's body. At the same time the cold water quickly drenched him from head to toe. Fang Yuan battled against the water pressure, moving in quick steps forward. As he walked a few dozen steps, the water pressure started to lessen. But the space in the fissure also began to shrink, and Fang Yuan could only walk sideways. His ears were filled with the roaring of the water, the top of his head was a sheet of white, and deeper into the boulder was a black darkness. What was hiding in the darkness? It could be a poisonous serpent, but it could also be a poisonous gecko. Perhaps it was a trap set by the flower wine monk, or perhaps it was empty. Fang Yuan could only continue forward by walking sideways, slowly. 
edging into the darkness. The water no longer washed over his head, the stone walls were covered in moss, grazing against his skin, feeling slippery. Soon he was swallowed by the darkness, and the stone crevice became narrower, squeezing around him. Gradually even his skull could not rotate freely. Still Fang Yuan gritted his teeth and continued forward. After walking another twenty more steps, he realized that there was a red shade of light in the darkness. At first, he thought it was an illusion. But, when he blinked and focused, he began to confirm that this was indeed light. This realization made him renew his spirit. He continued walking for another fifty to sixty steps, the red light growing brighter. In his eyes the light slowly expanded into a long, vertical and fine seam. He stretched out his left arm, suddenly feeling that the wall in front had bent away. Instantly he rejoiced, knowing that there was an enclosed space inside the huge boulder. With another few steps he finally rushed into this light seam. His eyes were greeted with the sight of an approximately 80 meters squared wide enclosure. I have been walking for so long. With this distance I'd have long passed the boulder, so I should be in the heart of the mountain cliff right now. As he sized up this hidden space, he moved his hands and legs about, stretching his limbs. The entire room was filled with dim red light, but he could not tell where the light was coming from. The stone walls were damp and covered in moss, but the air here was very dry. On the walls there was also a few withering vines. The vines intertwined with each other, weaving across half of the wall surface. There were even a few withering flowers growing on the vines. Fang Yuan looked at the remnants of these flowers and leaves, feeling somewhat familiar. These are wine sack flower GU, and rice pouch grass GU. Suddenly a thought had crossed his mind and he was able to recognize these withering stems and vines. GU came in many shapes and forms. Some were like mineral rocks such as the blue crystal form of the moonlight GU. Some came in the forms of worms, such as the silkworm-like liquor worm. There were also flowery, grassy types, just like the wine sack flower GU and the rice pouch grass. GU before Fang Yuan. These two types of GU were rank 1 natural GU. Just with pouring in primeval essence would they be able to grow. After growing up the middle of the flower would secrete flower nectar wine, and the grass pouch would grow out fragrant rice. Fang Yuan moved his line of sight along the vines, and sure enough he discovered a heap of withered roots gathered into a ball-shaped clump at a corner. The liquor worm was resting on the clump of dead roots, sleeping soundly. It was already within easy reach. Fang Yuan walked over and took the liquor worm into his arms. Then he got onto his knees and pulled the dead vines apart, discovering a pile of skeleton bones bundled inside. I finally found you, flower wine monk. There was a smile on his lips. As he saw this, just as he was about to reach his hand out and strip away the remaining vines, suddenly, try touching it, a voice full of murderous intent suddenly sounded behind Fang Yuan. Chapter 15, History is Written by The Victorious. Chapter 15 History is Written by The Victorious. In this secret cave, someone's voice loomed behind all of a sudden. Even when it came to Fang Yuan he could feel the hairs on the back of his neck standing, his scalp numb. He had been followed. Could it be that him repeatedly going out these few days had aroused the suspicion and attention of people? Or was it someone sent by his uncle? In his mind he even thought of the rank 1 GU master that he encountered. In the inn, the young man called Zhang Ya. In that short moment his mind flashed countless ideas and guesses, in addition to thinking of a solution. Fang Yuan could feel that in the short sentence, it was full of deep, murderous intent. This made him secretly groan, he was only a rank 1. Initial stage right now, and he did not even have a vital GU. To a GU master. This was the equivalent of having zero fighting ability, how was he supposed to fight? Too weak, too weak. He roared in his head. You have already been poisoned by my single gate poison GU. Without my other GU that acts as the counterpart to it, after seven days you will turn into pus and blood and die, the voice said behind him. Fang Yuan gritted his teeth, his expression cold. 
He said in a low tone, You want the liquor worm? I can give it to you. He slowly stood up, his actions careful. But at this moment, another voice appeared. This voice was full of fear, and said in a tremble, I'll give it, I can give you anything, please just spare my life, O oh flower wine monk. Wait a minute, this is, Fang Yuan frowned and suddenly turned around. In realization, he was met with the sight of light and shadow changing and fluctuating on the wall in front of him, a picture emerging. A lean and threatening GU master was standing at the top of a mountain. There was another GU master prostrating before him. Around the two GU masters was a collapsed pit, fragments and chunks of stone littering the area, showing the obvious scene of a fierce battle that just ended. Not far away from them was a group of old onlookers, their faces filled with anger and fear. In the middle of the scene, the victorious GU master lifted his head upwards and laughed loudly, ha ha ha, GUU's hero, cultivating to rank 5 at such a young age, I thought you were quite something at first, but I didn't expect you to be so unbearable, HMPH, the laughing GU master had long and thin eyes, he was dressed in long, pink robes, his huge and wide sleeves swaying with the wind, the area, where his robes intersected around his neck was loose and wide open, revealing his strong and pale chest muscles. The most eye-catching part of him was his bald head, shining without a single strand of hair. The flower wine monk, Fang Yuan immediately recognized the identity of this GU master. To compare myself to Sir Flower Wine, I'm just a fart. I must have been unwell in the head to actually not recognize such a great person and offended Sir Flower Wine. Sir Flower Wine, please remember my clan's generous hospitality earlier and spare my life. The GU master prostrating on the ground was shaking, cold sweat all over, tears and mucus mixing as he begged for mercy. Fang Yuan narrowed his eyes and carefully distinguished the two, realizing that the other GU master was wearing the GUU clan head uniform. Looking at the appearance, it was clear that this person was the fourth generation clan leader. As for those aged onlookers, they were probably the clan elders of that generation. Hee <laughs> hee, generous hospitality, you sure have the guts to say it. I was actually sincere in coming to trade with you, using primeval stones to buy your clan's moon orchids with a fair price. It was you who was harboring evil intentions, pretending to greet and take me in, telling me to take a seat at your banquet, intending to lace my liquor with a poisonous GU. You all, have been looking down on me way too much, I have made a living under. The sky with the name of flower wine, how could I possibly be poisoned? This way, the flower wine monk pointed at the kneeling fourth generation clan. Leader, sneering, if you cooperated fairly none of this would have. Happened. In the end you just wanted to use my head to raise your reputation and fame, you only have yourself to blame for dying. Sir, please spare my worthless life. The fourth generation clan head shouted in dismay, his knees scraping against the ground, he quickly crawled over to the flower wine monk's feet and hugged against his thigh. Sir, my clan has a spirit spring which produces primeval stones, we also planted huge numbers of moon orchids in an underground cave. I am Willing to take in your enslavement GU and become your servant, my life and death are at a whim, I am willing to devote a lifelong servitude to you. Sir. Fang Yuan watched speechlessly, while the few elders in the picture looked. Even more uncertain, the flower wine monk narrowed his eyes, his anger had already calmed. Down. His eyes flashed and he said, HMPH, the enslavement GU is. Precious beyond reasoning, it is a rank 5 GU, do you really think I would have one? However you have been infected by my single gate poison GU. Only I can cure the poison so I'm not afraid of you disobeying. Since that is the case, your clan has to give me 3000 stocks of moon orchids every week. Also 3000 primeval stones. I will come around every now and then to pick. Up the goods and temporarily cure your poison, sparing your useless life. Thank you so much for your mercy, sir. Thank you so much for your mercy, sir. 
The fourth generation clan head cried repeatedly, kowtowing. Non-stop. His head bled continuously as it bumped against the mountain. Rock. HMPH, stop kowtowing, I despise groveling people like you the most. What so-called GUU genius, strong rank 5 fighter, how unworthy of. Your name. You better serve me properly. This is also regarding your life. Uck. The flower wine monk suddenly cried out, his face making a horrified expression. He kicked away the fourth generation clan head with his leg, his body swaying. He frantically backtracked a few big steps, yelling at the fourth generation clan head, how do you still have GU? The fourth generation clan head was kicked at the pit of his stomach and he spat out a mouthful of blood. He got up with a painstaking effort, his face revealing a scheming smile, ha ha ha, anybody has the right to punish people of the demonic faction, this GU is called Moonshadow, it is the best at hiding, even though it is only rank 4, but it has the ability to restrict the usage of the primeval sea and primeval essence, demon, you, and I have been fighting fiercely, you don't have many GU on you anymore, how could you possibly restrain the Moonshadow GU, just obediently, Surrender and become my servant, as long as you serve me until I am happy, you will still have a chance to live. The flower wine monk flew into a rage and roared, to hell with you. His voice had barely faltered away when his body surged forward like a bolt of electricity, a punch landing onto the fourth generation clan heads. Heart. The fourth generation clan leader did not expect the flower wine monk to be so radical, even if his primeval sea was threatened, the flower wine. Monk was unwilling to compromise. A huge force came and he flew into the air, his body falling onto the ground like a broken sack. Thump. He spouted out a huge mouthful of fresh blood, the red liquid mingled with countless bits of internal organs. Have you gone mad, we could have totally settled this over a Discussion, he stared daggers at the flower wine monk, his lips moving. With great effort, his sentence went unfinished, for his legs gave way and his head crooked to the side. He died. Clan head. Men of the demonic path are all insane. Kill him, kill this demon. Avenge the clan leader. He has been inflicted by the moonshadow GU, he can't just simply use his primeval essence anymore, over a time even his primeval essence will be threatened. The elders who were watching at the sidelines all roared in fury and swarmed the area. Ha ha ha, all those who were looking for death, come. The flower wine. Monk cried into the air. Facing the elders charging at him, he rushed at them headfirst. A fierce battle ensued and the flower wine monk quickly had the upper hand. Very soon all the elders had collapsed onto the ground, some of them injured and the rest dead. Just as the flower wine monk was about to finish off the surviving elders, his facial expression suddenly changed and he covered a hand over his abdomen. Damn, I'll come back in future to deal with you lot, said the flower wine monk. He stared daggers at a few of the elders and his body moved like electricity. As he fled into the mountain woods, disappearing without a trace in the blink of an eye. Chapter 16, taking as much as possible that one can take. Chapter 16 Taking as much as possible that one can take. Try touching it. You have already been poisoned by my single gate poison GU. Without my other GU that acts as the counterpart to it, after seven days you will turn into pus and blood and die. To compare myself to Sir Flower Wine, I'm just a fart. I must have been unwell in the head to actually not recognize such a great person and Offended Sir Flower Wine. Sir Flower Wine, please remember my clan's generous hospitality earlier and spare my life. The scene replayed itself over for the second time on the wall. Fang Yuan remained silent when the motion picture started to repeat itself for the third time. He finally sighed faintly and said, I see. This method of leaving a moving picture with sound on the wall was Probably the flower wine monks doing with the help of a photo audio GU. This GU was able to record down imagery and project it out later. The photo audio GU fed on light and sound to survive. For some unknown reason this secret cave emitted red light, while at the same time the stone 
crevice was connected to the outside world, so it would not completely isolate the sounds outside. Right now Fang Yuan could still hear the roaring of the smaller waterfalls. Thus the photo audio GU was able to live on in this secret cave. A moment ago when Fang Yuan ripped away the withered vines, he had probably alarmed the photo audio Gu Heating in the stone wall. As long as one is not stupid, with mere guesswork one could tell that this moving image was authentic. Back then, the fourth generation clan had tried to plot against the flower wine monk but he failed. After he lost in the battle he tried a sneak attack. Even though it repelled away the latter, he eventually died because of it. This part of history was considered disgraceful, and the remaining surviving clan elders decided to tamper with the truth. They reversed the roles of the fourth generation clan head and the flower wine monk. The flower wine monk became the one who was defeated in battle and tried a sneak attack, and later died on the spot. On the other hand, the fourth generation leader was turned into the justified and perfect hero. But this story itself had a big loophole, the flower wine monk had clearly died on the spot, so his corpse should be in the hands of the GUU clan, but why was another pile of remains found? In his previous life, the GU master who found it had probably been terrified. After seeing the moving image, those surviving elders had long been dead. But to prevent the truth of the flower wine monk from returning, this truth was probably kept secret by the top brass of the clan. That GU master realized that if he single-handedly took the treasure it would be a huge risk. If people investigated and found that he was involved with the flower wine monk in future, the top brass would naturally execute him. Thus after making his choice, he did not dare to hide away this treasure, but instead make a decision to notify the top brass. By doing so it would prove his loyalty to the clan. His subsequent circumstances would also show that he made a wise choice. However even if he did that, it didn't mean that Fang Yuan would do the same. I went through a pretty rough time searching for this treasure, so I should take everything for myself. Why should I share it with others? So what if I've been found out? Without braving the risks, where would you get profit? That GU master is really cowardly, Fang Yuan smiled coldly, no longer caring about the moving image that kept repeating on the stone wall. He turned around and stretched his hand, using his strength to pull apart the dead vines and roots. The flower wine monk's remains were also affected. It was originally intact, but right now it was being broken into several pieces. Fang Yuan could hardly care, he kicked away a piece of leg bone that was in the way, and squatted again, searching through the remains. Firstly he found a bag of primeval stones. When he opened them he only found fifteen pieces. Old miser, Fang Yuan spat. The flower wine monk's outer appearance looked flashy, but unexpectedly he only had so little money put aside. However he quickly thought of the reason, the flower wine monk went. Through a fierce battle, add on to the fact that he got tainted by the Moonshadow GU, so he would definitely have used primeval stones to heal his injuries. To be able to leave behind 15 pieces was actually not bad. Already, after that he found a few dead GU remains. Most of them were flower and grass variety, and had all completely withered away. GU are also living creatures, so they also need food to survive, and most of them are picky. Though the grass GU and flower GU need less food, but in this secret cave, there was not even a single ray of sunshine. And after that, after that, there was nothing. The flower wine monk was on the same level as the fourth generation clan. Leader. After fighting a fierce battle, he fought with around ten elders right. After. His own GU were mostly consumed, and up to this stage as he wanted. To heal his injuries, he grew the wine sack flower GU and the rice pouch. Grass GU here, yet in the end because of the moonshadow GU he was. Dragged to death. After 300 year, the GU in his possession also died away. The only ones left were the photo audio gu on the wall and the liquor worm. This liquor worm was probably reliant on the wine sack flower GU and barely lived through until today. But as the wine sack flower GU withered, 
Away one by one, it also lost its food supply. This prompted the liquor worm to go outside and look for wild wine sack. Flowers. Then in this night, it was attracted by the aroma of the green. Bamboo wine and came before Fang Yuan. The photo audio GU can only record once, since it's a one-time use GU. Looks like the liquor worm is my greatest gain here, no wonder that GU. Master decided to report to the clan. Looks like it was because the prophet was too small, and not worth such a huge risk. A sort of understanding rose into Fang Yuan's heart. In his memories, that GU master was already rank 3, while the liquor worm was just a rank 1 GU. To Fang Yuan it was more precious, but to that GU master it was pretty much nothing. However it was clear that due to his report, the clan gave him a big reward. Should I also tell the clan? Fang Yuan thought for a moment, then he pushed away this idea. The flower wine monk's treasure seemed to be just the liquor worm and the primeval stones, but that was not the case. The most valuable thing was actually the wall that hid the photo audio GU. In other words, it was the moving image that did not stop repeating on the wall. This image could entirely be sold to other villages. Trust in the fact that the top brass of the two other villages on Qingmao Mountain must be very interested in this sort of evidence that could strike hard onto the conviction of a clan. What? You said something about a sense of loyalty and honor to the clan. I'm so sorry, Fang Yuan does not have one bit of that. Moreover this moving image isn't even some kind of strong force that can destroy the entire clan, it won't do much substantial damage. The indifferent nature of the clan will also not look at Fang Yuan with importance. He needed to rely on his own hard work and find cultivation resources, in the early stage of cultivation he needed to borrow the powers around him more. Count on the clan, ha <laughs> ha. Fang Yuan sneered in his heart, how can I be so naive like my past life? Do not depend on anyone, you must rely on yourself on everything in this world. After making sure that he had ransacked every corner of the cave, Fang Yuan began his way back following the original road home. Holding against the water pressure and squeezing past the boulder, he returned outside the mountain. Looking back at this huge boulder, Fang Yuan suddenly thought of his past life. It was said that the remains were found in an underground secret cave. But how was this place underground? It was clearly in the inside of the mountain wall. No wonder he couldn't find it for seven days straight even though he wasted so much effort. Looks like in his past life after the clan found out about this place, the first thing they did was to destroy the wall with the image, and then go about spreading a truth riddled with lies to mislead the clanspeople. To be able to find this place tonight was partly due to luck, partly due to hard work, and the biggest reason would be the green bamboo wine. This green bamboo wine was really rich, it could be said to be the best in Qingmao Mountain. Perhaps in his past life, after that GU master lost his lover, the wine that he had been drinking was this wine. But all of this was no longer important. The flower wine monk's treasure had been unearthed and ransacked by Fang Yuan, although in the end it was rather disappointing, it was also reasonable. The most important was that Fang Yuan's original goal, liquor worm, was in his hands, and the item he needed the most primeval stones was also gotten. Next up, I will need to set my heart on holding myself in the in refining. This GU, as long as I have a vital GU I can return to the academy and be qualified to stay in the academy dormitories. I'll also be able to borrow the clan resources to cultivate. I can only stay in this inn for one or two times, if I stay too long the cost is too much. Fang Yuan pondered, his footsteps never ceasing as he hurried back to the village. He was originally left with two primeval stones, but now he gained 15 pieces, so the total is 17 pieces. But to a GU master, this small Amount of primeval stones mean nothing. Chapter 17, Starting to Refine the Liquor Worm. Chapter 17, Starting to Refine the Liquor Worm. With my C grade talent, the amount of my primeval C in the aperture is only 44%. The speed of GU using up primeval essence is way faster than my own recovery rate. 
if I want to refine a GU I would need to borrow external help, which means I need to waste primeval stones. The weaker the goo's will, the smaller the resistance, the easier it becomes for me to refine it. However any living creature will always have the will to live. To refine the moonlight GU I would at least require 5 primeval stones, at the most I'd need 8 pieces. Right now to refine the liquor worm, I would need at least 11 pieces. At the most I would need 16 pieces. Although the liquor worm was also a rank 1 GU like the moonlight GU, but it was definitely rarer. Thus, the difficulty of the refinement process also increased. In other words, even though right now Fang Yuan had 17 primeval stones, but just to refine the liquor worm he would at most be left with 6 pieces, or at least 1 primeval stone. In the night, the bright crescent gave off clear and pure moonlight. The moonlight was like the lady saint's gentle hand, lightly stroking over the GU. U village. Along the way the bamboo houses were like jade, standing in great numbers. The night breeze blew slowly. Under this moonlight, Fang Yuan found his way back to the inn. The inn. Door had already closed. Fang Yuan banged on the door. I hear you. I hear you. Who is it, knocking on the door at this late time? The inn worker grumbled as he opened the door, his eyes puffy from sleep. But when he saw Fang Yuan standing at the door, all the displeasure and sleepiness from his expression changed, and he bent his waist and said with a flattering smile, Ah, it's his young lordship. This little one is very lucky to be able to open the door for his lordship. Fang Yuan nodded his head, his expression cold with indifference, and walked into the inn. His expression made the worker laugh in a more humble manner, and he took the initiative to ask, My lord, are you hungry? Would you like me to notify the kitchens and make some small dishes for you as supper? No need, Fang Yuan shook his head and only ordered, Go and prepare some hot water for me, I would like to wash myself. Yes, the worker immediately nodded, My lord, go on to your room first. I guarantee you, the hot water will be sent over immediately. Fang Yuan let out a noise of approval and went up the stairs, heading towards the second floor. The worker watched Fang Yuan's back, his two eyes glittering in the light, revealing an expression of jealousy. This is a GU master, oh if only I had the talent to cultivate, how good that would be. He shook his fists, sighing deeply. These words floated into Fang Yuan's ears and he smiled bitterly in his heart. A GU master had the power to transcend mortals, becoming a man above men, but in this process the price that was to be paid was also very high. The first difficult problem was financial resources. A GU master needed primeval stones to cultivate, battles also required primeval stones, refining. GU also needed primeval stones, trading was also not an exception. Without primeval stones, how could cultivation be possible? This point was a difficult position that, being an ordinary mortal who watched from the sidelines, the inn worker would not understand. Just like earlier in the evening, the young GU master Zhang Ya vented his anger and displeasure on the hunters when he dropped their wine jars. His meaning was, he himself could not bear to spend primeval stones to drink. This green bamboo wine, yet these hunters who were just ordinary men actually had such money to spare. To take a glimpse at the whole picture, just that meaning alone could tell a lot about the cultivation situation of a GU master. The strength of a GU master was great, they achieved more than a common mortal, but the price was also great. Many a time using every single piece of primeval stone needed great consideration, especially when it came to lower rank GU. Masters, do not be fooled by the glorious surface, in reality the life of a Gu master is constantly strained by money. Not to mention, as the realm of a GU master increases, the resources they require also increase. Without proper backing it is very difficult for a GU master's road to cultivation. Fang Yuan thought of his previous life and had deep understanding of this reality. He returned to his room. Just after he lit the lamp, the inn worker came up with a basin of hot water. Of course, there were cloth towels and other toiletries. 
Fang Yuan let the worker leave and close the room door. He put down the door latch, washed himself and got up to his bed. Although his body was feeling a little tired, his heart still flared with a surge of excitement. I finally got my hands on the liquor worm. The liquor worm is rarer than the Moonlight GU, because in a sense it is a GU that increase a GU master's latent talent. Fang Yuan sat cross-legged on the bed and took out the liquor worm. The liquor worm was still sleeping soundly. Its body size was slightly bigger than the Moonlight GU, soft and white like a silkworm. Under the light its body was shrouded in a layer of faint wavering light, just like a pearl's mellow luster. Two little eyes resembling two black sesame. Seeds were mounted on its chubby white head, making it appear charmingly naive. Placed in his hand, it was not heavy. Its weight was about half a chicken. Egg. When smelling it carefully, its body exuded a whiff of wine aroma. This fragrance was not the aroma of green bamboo wine but the liquor. Worm's own fragrance. The smell was faint and misty, as if it was not there. Fang Yuan's nose twitched as he inhaled the fragrance of the liquor worm. The wine fragrance moved straight downwards into the aperture, entering into the green copper primeval sea. The primeval sea surged and rippled for a moment, quickly absorbing in the wine. A gleam of pure and refined primeval essence was produced. The other primeval essence had an emerald green color, shining with a metallic copper luster. However this primeval essence was a pale green, and it was more condensed than the original primeval essence. This was the primeval essence that a rank 1 middle stage GU master could produce. Aware of this gleam of pale green primeval essence in his green copper sea, Fang Yuan revealed a satisfied smile. Right now my cultivation base is just that of a rank 1 initial stage. But with the liquor worms condensing, after the primeval essence is refined I will be able to have rank 1 middle realm primeval essence. The beauty of this benefit is something that cannot be said in one or two sentences. But very soon, he took back his smile. However right now I have yet to fully master the liquor worm. It is only when I refine the liquor worm and turn it into my vital GU, then I will be able to freely use it and later on with maximum efficiency, refine my primeval essence. Thinking up to this point, he no longer hesitated and began to draw out a jet of green copper primeval essence from his primeval sea. The primeval essence tightly wrapped around the liquor worm, bringing it into the air before Fang Yuan, and started to invade its body. The liquor worm felt its life at danger and woke up immediately. It began to struggle violently, using its own power to drive out Fang Yuan's primeval essence. This liquor worm has a really strong resistance. Fang Yuan's complexion turned grave as he felt the consumption rate of his primeval essence go beyond more than double of what the Moonlight GU had consumed. No matter what, I have to refine the liquor worm. His two eyes flashed with a firm light as he continued pouring primeval essence into the liquor. Worm. In the room, the candles on the table quietly burned, shining a bright light in the middle of the room while the far corners of the walls were dark. The candlelight radiated on Fang Yuan's face but he had already closed his eyes, gathering all his focus onto the liquor worm. A continuous jet of green copper colored primeval essence that resembled a jet of mist emitted out from Fang Yuan's whole body, then it gathered together and firmly wrapped around the liquor worm. The liquor worm hovered in the air, its distance less than a feet away from Fang Yuan's face. It struggled with all its might in the midst of the green copper primeval essence. Time slipped away quietly. As the candles burned they became smaller and the light grew dimmer. The crescent outside the window had slowly gone down, and then a new day arrived. The morning light squeezed through the narrow crack in the window and shone into the room. It was like the window had a light edge. Fang Yuan opened his eyes and looked at the liquor worm in front of him. The liquor worm's white body had a shade of green color. This was the result of Fang Yuan's effort after half a night. However it was clear that this Volume of green color was not even 1% of the liquor worm's body. Fang Yuan's face looked grave. This liquor worm's will was way too tenacious and its resistance was incredibly strong, simply put this was beyond a rank 1 goose boundary. 
This GU was most probably the flower wine monk's vital GU. The flower wine monk was a rank 5 master, so this liquor worm was originally rank 5, but because it went through all those years without enough food. Pretty much full in one moment and starving in the next, so its grade also fell. Right now it is left at the level of rank 1, yet its will is still as tough as a rock. Fang Yuan had guessed the truth. This liquor worm was originally the flower wine monk's vital GU. Its original will had been wiped clean and refined to the end, it had accompanied the flower wine monk throughout all his battles, passing through the underground world. After the flower wine monk died, his strong will continued existing in the liquor worm. Right now with Fang Yuan trying to refine the liquor worm, it actually meant fighting against the flower wine monk's will. This was way more difficult than trying to refine a natural GU. A human's will is generally stronger than a natural GU. When facing death, humans were able to produce strength that even they themselves could not imagine. Not to mention that the flower wine monk was a master of the demonic faction. He came and went by himself, going up and down the underground world. His will was more tenacious than the masters of his level from the righteous faction. To refine this liquor worm in a month is impossible, unless there is a strong master who can use a rank 2 or rank 3 goose breath to pressure this liquor worm and suppress the will inside the worm's body to the lowest limit. Under this kind of help then will I be able to do twice as much with half the effort. As he pondered, Fang Yuan could not help but sigh. His parents had died while his aunt and uncle were plotting against him. He himself did not have any backing, so where could he possibly find external aid? If he had a grade talent there might still be a chance, but he was only a C. Grade talent. Everyone in the clan were not optimistic about him, so who would be willing to expend such energy to come and help him? More crucially, he could not expose the existence of the liquor worm. There was no liquor worm in the GUU village, and Fang Yuan was not able to explain about the origins of this liquor worm. If it was exposed, there was a huge possibility that the top brass would find out and link it to the case of the flower wine monk. It was too easy to think of a relationship between the two. Based on this fact, 17 primeval stones will not be enough. I'd need at least 30 primeval stones. How troublesome, but no matter how hard it is I will still want to refine this liquor worm. Fang Yuan's own will was like metal, and he was already determined to refine the liquor worm. The importance of the vital GU was huge. It would greatly influence the future of a GU master's cultivation direction. Although the liquor worm was not the world's best choice for a vital GU, it was still much better than the moonlight GU. It was also the best option in Fang Yuan's present situation. Growl. At this moment Fang Yuan's stomach came up with a cry of protest. After a whole night without sleep and putting full effort into refining the liquor worm, Fang Yuan was naturally hungry. I guess I'll go and fill my stomach first and think of a way to accumulate primeval stones. Fang Yuan rubbed his belly and went downstairs. He went to the cafeteria and picked a seat at the corner, ordering a few kinds of breakfast dishes. Just as he was beginning to eat, his younger brother Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng appeared. Big brother, why are you staying at the inn, why didn't you go back home and sleep last night? His brother was very straightforward, his tone carrying the implication that it was demanding for an explanation. T.N. I am reworking the measurements a little, it used to be 4x4, four four, but I'm starting to realize it's something like 4x4. The measurements in this novel regarding the C volume and aperture are just pretty confusing to me, even. The people I asked were a little unsure. But I'm slowly getting an idea of it. Apologies for the confusion. Edit 2. All measurements regarding aperture and C are changed to percent, 4 by 4 quarters x 4 is now 44%. Confirmed. Chapter 18. Let the past disperse. Away like smoke. Chapter 18 Let the past disperse away like smoke. Faced with his brother's question, Fang Yuan did not speak, he continued. Eating his breakfast, he knew his younger brother's character, Fang Zheng, was not someone who could keep in his composure. 
Sure enough Fang Zheng saw that his older brother did not even bat an eye at him, as if Fang Yuan pretended he was heir. In the next moment he called, out in a tone full of unhappiness, Big Brother, what did you do to Shen? Hui, ever since she came out from your room yesterday, she cried all over the place. When I comforted her, she cried even more. Fang Yuan looked up at his younger brother, his face expressionless. Fang. Zheng frowned, staring firmly at his older brother, waiting for his reply. The atmosphere was growing tense. But Fang Yuan just looked at him for a second before he lowered his head. And continued eating. The younger brother Fang Zheng was immediately flustered. Fang Yuan's attitude was clearly an undisguised contempt towards him. Under shame and frustration he banged his hand on the table, roaring loudly, G-U-U. Fang Yuan, how can you act like this? Shen Kui as a servant girl has served you for so many years, I have seen her gentleness and care towards you. Yes, I know you feel lost, and I can understand your dejected feelings. Yeah, you're just a C-grade talent, but it doesn't mean you can vent your anger on others just because of your own misfortune. This isn't fair to her. He had barely finished when Fang Yuan stood up, raising his hand in a Flash. Slap. With a loud snap he gave Fang Zheng a solid smack. Fang Zheng covered his right cheek, stumbling two steps backwards, his face full of shock. Useless bastard, what kind of tone are you using to talk to your own older brother? That Shen Kui is just a servant girl. Just because of a lowly girl. Like her you would forget that I am your older brother. Fang Yuan. Reprimanded in a low voice. Fang Zheng finally reacted, his stinging pain on his face surging through his nervous system in waves. He stared wide-eyed, his breathing rough as he said in disbelief, Big brother, you hit me. From the time I was still young. Until I grew up, you have never hit me before. Yes, I was found out to be an a grade talent, you were just C grade. But you also cannot blame me for it. This is all the arrangement of heaven. Slap. Fang Zheng had not finished speaking, yet Fang Yuan used the back of his hand and smacked him again. Fang Zheng covered both his cheeks with his two hands. He was stunned. Naive fool, do you still remember? From young till now, how did I take care of you? When our parents died, our life was hard. During New Year, aunt and uncle only gave us both one new robe, did I wear it? Who did I? Give it to wear. When you were small you loved to eat sweet porridge, I would tell the kitchens to make another bowl for you every day. When you were bullied by others, who brought you back? Not to mention a ton of other things, I don't feel like it is worth talking about. Well, right now, because of a maid, you would talk to me like this, coming to question me. Fang Zheng's face was red. His lips trembled, ashamed and annoyed, as well as surprised and angry. Yet he was unable to say a single word of rebuttal. Because everything Fang Yuan said was the truth. Whatever. Fang Yuan sneered, since you even gave up your own biological parents and admitted someone else, what am I worth to you, as merely your big brother? Big brother, how can you say that? You also know that I have always longed for the warmth of a family since I was young, I, Fang Zheng, immediately explained. Fang Yuan waved his hand, stopping his brother from continuing. From today onwards, you are not my little brother, and I am no longer your older brother. Big brother. Fang Zheng was surprised, opening his mouth to say more. At this moment Fang Yuan spoke, don't you like Shen Kui? Don't worry, I didn't do anything to her. She's still a virgin, untouched and pure. Pass me. Six primeval stones and I'll pass her to you, from today onwards she can be. Your personal maid. Big brother, why are you, to have his inner thoughts revealed out loud? So suddenly, Fang Zheng felt a surge of panic, feeling rather unprepared. But at the same time his heart was assured. The one thing he was worried about the most did not come true. Not long ago in the night, Shen Kui personally served and washed him. Even though nothing important happened, Fang Zheng could not ever forget the gentleness of that night. Every time when he thought of Shen Kui, he would remember her skillful hands and her soft red lips, and his heart would throb. The sincere feelings of youthfulness had long planted itself in the young 
man's chest, starting to grow. Thus when he learned about Shen Kui's unusual state last evening, a bout of anger immediately burst from his heart. He instantly gave up refining his moonlight Gu and turned the village inside out trying to find Fang Yuan. Wanting to make a statement. Seeing Fang Zheng not replying, Fang Yuan frowned and said, Love is very normal, be more honest. There's no use hiding away. Of course, if you don't want to exchange, then that's fine. Fang Zheng was anxious on the spot. I'll exchange. Why would I not exchange? But the primeval stones on me are not enough for six anymore. As he said this, he took out his money pouch, his face red all over. Fang Yuan took the pouch and found six pieces in it, but one of the stones. Among them was smaller than a normal primeval stone by half size. He immediately knew that Fang Zheng had absorbed the primeval essence from this stone to speed up the process of refining his moonlight Gu. After all the more natural essence gets absorbed from the primeval stone, the smaller the stone becomes, and its weight will also become lighter. Even though it was just five pieces and a half, Fang Yuan knew, these were all the primeval stones that Fang Zheng had in his possession right now. Fang Zheng had no savings on his own, and these six primeval stones were what aunt and uncle had given to him not long ago. I'll keep these, you can go now. Fang Yuan's expression was cold as he tucked the bag away. Big brother, Fang Zheng wanted to say more. Fang Yuan raised his eyebrows slightly, speaking in a slow and leisure manner, before I change my mind, you better disappear from my eyes. Fang Zheng felt his heart tighten. He gritted his teeth, and finally turned and left. When he stepped through the doorway of the inn, he subconsciously covered his chest with his hand, feeling a wave of uneasiness. There was a feeling that was telling him that he had just lost something very important. But very quickly he felt hot as he thought of Shen Kui, and that dreamy night. I can finally have you rightfully as mine, Kui Kui Wan. He did not look back, and walked out of Fang Yuan's sight. Fang Yuan stood expressionless, he stood for a long time, then he finally slowly sat down. The bright sunlight passed through the window, shining onto his indifferent face, making those who saw this feel somewhat cold inside. The business in the cafeteria was rather poor, and the streets grew busier with people. The noise and excitement from the bustling crowd traveled over, making the place feel quieter. The dishes grew cold. A worker came up attentively, asking if Fang Yuan would like to reheat his breakfast. Fang Yuan did not hear it. His gaze kept shifting like a cloud, as if he was reminiscing some old memories. The worker waited for a while. But as he saw Fang Yuan in a trance, never saying a single word, he could only rub his nose and walk away bitterly. After a long time, Fang Yuan's eyes became focused again. The past memories in his heart were like smoke, they had already dispersed away. He returned to reality once more. The sunlight that flowed in shone over half the table. The hot air that wafted out of the dishes had already disappeared, and the bustling noise of the crowd on the streets traveled into his ears. He reached into his robes and patted the five and a half primeval stones at his bosom, his mouth curling into a bitter and mocking smile. But the smile was quickly cast away. Waiter, go and reheat these dishes for me. Fang Yuan took a look at his dishes and faintly opened his mouth, shouting away. At this moment his eyes looked so chilly. What? Your older brother really said that? In the hall, uncle frowned, his voice cold. Aunt sat aside, looking speechlessly at the fresh red handprint on Fang Zheng's cheeks. Yes, when I met Big Brother, he was at the inn eating breakfast. The entire thing went like this, Fang Zheng replied politely. Uncle's frown deepened, all condensed into three black lines too. After a few breaths he sighed and said in a solemn tone, Fang Zheng my child, you must remember this. The maidservant Shen Kui is not Fang. Yuan's personal property, we assigned her to him. How can he use her as a trading item? If you wished for it, you should have told us earlier on. We would just assign her to you. Ah, Fang Zheng was stunned as he listened to this. Uncle waved his hand. You can take your leave. You gave all your 
Primeval stones to fang you on, so I'll just give you another six. Remember, use them properly on refining your GU and C's number one. We will be very proud of you when you do. Father, your child is ashamed, Fang Zheng was suddenly moved to tears. Uncle sighed and replied, just go, hurry back to your room and refine your GU. You don't have much time left. When Fang Zheng took his leave, uncle's face revealed a ferocious and angry expression. Bang. He hit the table with his palm using great force, hissing, HMPH, this damn bastard. He actually took our workers to do an exchange, he's really cunning. Aunt advised, husband, calm your anger. It's just six primeval stones. What do you understand, woman? This Fang Yuan is only a C-grade talent. If he wants to refine the moonlight goo he would need primeval stones. With his weak experience of a first-timer, six primeval stones won't be enough to refine it. But now that he has twelve pieces, it will be more than sufficient. Uncle was so furious he gritted his teeth. He added, a GU master's cultivation will vary swift as long as there are enough resources and no obstacles. In two or three years, the clan will be able to produce a rank 2 GU master. The lower Fang Yuan's cultivation rank, the smaller his hopes of trying to seize the family inheritance one year later. Right now he is still young, just starting to cultivate. We shall hinder him and let his starting process fall behind those at his age. The academy. Resources are always awarded to excellent students. With his latent talent, once he falls back he won't be able to get any resources. Without the help of resources his cultivation will fall even further. With this vicious cycle, I would like to see if he has the ability to inherit the family inheritance a year. Later, Ant did not understand. Even if we do not stop him, he would at most be at rank 1 middle stage a year later. Husband, your cultivation is at rank. Two, why are you still afraid of him? Uncle was so angry he stomped and said, Woman, you really are a case of long hair but short insight. With just my identity as the senior, should I really beat down the younger generation? If he wants to get back the inheritance, it is reasonable and cannot be stopped directly, I can only fight back using the clan rules. It is stated in the clan rules, to be head of the House at 16 years old, the person must have at least rank 1 middle stage cultivation. Otherwise it means that Fang Yuan will have no right to waste the clan resources. After I have said this, do you understand now? Aunt was enlightened. Uncle narrowed his eyes, a glint in his gaze. He shook his head a little. Sighing as he said, Fang Yuan is just too smart, too cunning. He could even see through a power play. What kind of intellect is this? scheming and calculating at such a young age, how terrorizing. Initially I was going to continue plotting against him, yet he moved out straight away. I wanted to further rely on Shen Kui to monitor and trouble him, but in the end he went away and even earned six primeval stones. Alas, if he could be as stupid as Fang Zheng, that would have been great. Oh, right, from today onwards you must treat Fang Zheng better. He is an A. Great talent after all. Not to mention I can see that he has feelings of dissatisfaction and unhappiness towards Fang Yuan. These emotions are a good thing, they must be guided properly. I have a sort of feeling that he will become the best tool to deal with Fang Yuan in future. In the blink of an eye, two days had passed. In the room at the inn, there were no lights. The moonlight poured in, casting a color of frost. On the bed Fang Yuan sat cross-legged, his eyes closed. He moved his green copper primeval essence, concentrating his mind on refining the liquor worm. On its body, a small cut had already been dyed the green color of green copper, but the liquor worm's will was still as tenacious as ever. It constantly struggled in the midst of the ethereal primeval essence. Fang Yuan's refining process was not going smoothly. It was very difficult. I spent two days and two nights, only resting two hours each day, and I spent twelve pieces of primeval stone but only managed to refine around one fifteenth of progress. Calculating according to the time, I guess someone will succeed in refining their GU in these few days. Fang Yuan could see the situation clearly. 
However his talent was a poor grade anyway, add on the liquor worm that he was trying to refine having. An incredibly tenacious will to live, it was even stronger than a normal. Moonlight G.U. The resulting situation of falling behind was normal. A moment of falling behind is nothing, as long as I have the liquor. Worm, Fang Yuan's heart was clear like a mirror, not a single trace of anxiety and discouragement in him. Suddenly, the liquor worm curled up into a ball. Oh no, the liquor worm is counter-attacking. Fang Yuan instantly opened his eyes, a hint of astonishment in his gaze. Before him, the liquor worm had curled into a round little dumpling, fiercely giving out a blinding white light. It was risking everything in this one last stand. At once Fang Yuan felt a strong will coming out from the liquor worm's body, flowing directly through the primeval essence and descending into the primeval sea in his aperture. The situation where a GU counterattacked was incredibly rare. Only GU, with extremely strong will would give their all, it was either success or death. In the face of such a scenario, the usual teenager would be panicking. Right now. Though he was surprised, Fang Yuan did not panic, in fact he was somewhat delighted. Staking everything in one last attempt, this is also a good thing. As long as I can handle this counterattack, the liquor worms will shall greatly weaken. However I need to put full focus into fighting. Back against this will, I cannot receive even the slightest outside interference. Or else that would be bad, sigh, but I hope no one will come and disturb me during this period. His thoughts finalized, he was ready to gather the primeval essence in his aperture, ready to accept the liquor worm's will. He would be entangled with it and fight it 300 rounds. But at this moment, a miraculous event happened. In the middle of his aperture, just above the sea high in the air, a GU appeared. Boom! A mighty strong breath erupted from this GU. This breath was like the Milky Way pouring out, and floodwater rushing down from the mountains. Yet, it was also like a dreadful beast whose dignity was offended that opened its scarlet red eyes and looked around to see who would dare to violate its territory. This is the spring autumn cicada. Seeing this GU, Fang Yuan was completely shocked. One Kui Kui is just an affectionate way to call Shen Kui. Two, the novel says Do Ning Sheng Li Yigi Chuan Zi, which means condensed into a Chuan. Word Chinese words are used to describe things sometimes. Author's note, he thanks a bunch of people. I will keep on going forward, three years, six years, nine years, in this period of time, some of you may leave temporarily and some will always stay. In the busy process of human life, we constantly mark our constant existence, and we all prove to each other that we have lived before. I had imagined this sort of scenario, when we are old, you all will look at Ji Gen Ren, this ID, and will laugh in your hearts, oh, it's him, when I was young I have read his book before. I even gave him a recommendation. Vote. Maybe I will open my previous layout and see all these familiar ids. Those that have rewarded, voted and commented before. I will reminisce the Times when I was writing alone, these names were the company of my long and difficult journey, giving me warm little lights. Right here in the book is a small little twist. Fang Yuan will begin to truly show his unique style. Those who were able to read up till here are predestined. I guarantee you right here, this book will become more and more exciting. T.N. Thank you everyone for reading up till here, and sorry for the long wait. This was such a long chapter to translate, but it is also one of my all time favorite chapters. The sadness and meaning of this chapter has always stayed with me. As the author said, this is the turning point and beginning of the real story. I hope you will give lots of support to the author and I hope to translate even more tilde. Chapter 19, Rank 6 Vital GU, The Spring Autumn Cicada. Chapter 19 Rank 6 Vital GU, The Spring Autumn Cicada During the process of refining, the GU counterattacked. At this time, the liquor worm that had inherited the flower wine monks. Extremely strong will invaded his aperture, brazenly counterattacking at Fang Yuan. This strong willpower descended from above, surging down towards the bottom of the aperture where the green copper primeval sea was. 
The waves in the sea tumbled, setting off bursts of high tide. Under Fang Yuan's will, large amounts of primeval essence rose upwards to the sky and gathered. Together, forming a towering monster wave, brazenly accepting the incoming liquor worm's will, just as both sides were about to collide viciously in the middle of the aperture, a faint image of a GU worm emerged in a blank area between the two energies. This was a cicada. The cicada's body was not large, if the moonlight GU was described as a blue crystal shaped like a curved moon, then this cicada would be a delicate craftwork that was made from palm wood and tree leaves by a master craftsman. The GU sported a brownish-yellow head and abdomen. Its surface had the texture of a tree's growth rings, as if it had witnessed countless years. On its back were two very wide and translucent wings, like two tree leaves. Overlapping, the wings had similar structure, this structure was like a typical net vein leaf. The center had a coarse stem, and from this stem, sprouted out a network vein of leaf lines on both sides. The spring autumn cicada, it had been startled. It was just like a giant beast, usually hiding in its cave. In a deep sleep, but suddenly it was awakened, furthermore learning that its territory had been violated. Who dares to come into my turf and act wildly? As if its dignity was offended, the spring autumn cicada was angry and let out a whiff of aura, the aura was weak yet powerful. It was like the surging, milky way, rolling forth with vast and mighty waves, it would sweep across mountains for ten thousands of miles, or submerge a broad desert. To be compared to this aura, the liquor worm's will was like the case of an ant meeting an elephant. The aura swept around and expanded, just like a raised invisible tsunami. The invading will of the liquor worm did not even have the ability to withstand it, it was immediately swallowed whole by this aura. Fang Yuan felt depressed. The green copper primeval essence that he had thrust forward with his might collided with this aura like it was a wave crashing onto a great mountain. In a moment the condensed primeval essence disintegrated and dispersed into rain, scattering down to the primeval sea. The waves on the primeval sea rose one after another, it was like a Rainstorm had just swept across, increasing its turbulence. But after a few seconds, the spring autumn cicada's aura spread down, pressing onto the primeval sea. Boom! Fang Yuan felt like he heard a buzz. In an instant, the rolling waves on the sea calmed down. The spring autumn cicada's aura firmly repressed the entire primeval sea, just like an invisible mountain pressing down. The surface of the sea was calm like a mirror, not a single wave rolling about. It was like an originally crumpled piece of paper, a boundless giant hand, covering over it suddenly, flattening it. This was easily an incomparable power. Fang Yuan felt a pressure weighing like an enormous invisible mountain, pressing down on his heart. He compared it to Sun Wukong being pressed. Down by the Five Elements Mountain, Fang Yuan could not even mobilize a single pint of primeval essence. However although he was shocked, he was not afraid. In fact his heart felt great joy. I didn't think the spring autumn cicada would actually follow me and be reborn together. So it's actually not a one-time use GU worm, but one that can be used again repeatedly. The spring autumn cicada was a rank 6 grade, and it was the first rank 6 GU in Fang Yuan's previous life, as well as his last. Just to make it, Fang. Yuan had used all means and resources, wasting an incredible amount of strength, using 30 years of fermenting to finally succeed. But not long after he succeeded, when the spring autumn cicada was still fresh from the oven, warriors of the righteous faction felt Fang Yuan's threat and gathered together to attack and kill him. After being reborn, Fang Yuan did not find the spring autumn cicada, so he thought it had died. But in reality it had fallen into a deep sleep, resting inside Fang Yuan's body. To travel back 500 years in an instant was a huge blow to its vitality. It was too weak, so weak that even Fang Yuan as its master could not feel it. Right now even though the spring autumn cicada had appeared, its situation was still bad. After being reborn it had always been resting in a deep sleep. To appear, right now was because it had felt the danger that the aperture was facing, it 
Could be said that the liquor worm's will had awakened it. It was weak, very weak, extremely weak. In Fang Yuan's memories, the original spring autumn cicada was full of vitality. Its body was like a precious floorboard, giving out a warm and glossy varnish. Its two wings were verdant green, like two soft tree leaves that had just freshly sprouted. But right now, there was a strong and deathly chill emanating from the body of the cicada. There was no shine or gloss from its body, making it feel rough and dim like dead wood. Its wings were not the color of soft and green leaves, they were fully yellow, just like the withering leaves of autumn. The tips of its wings were slightly rolled up, a little incomplete, just like the corner of fallen leaves. Seeing this, Fang Yuan felt both distressed and lucky. He was distressed. Because the spring autumn cicada suffered such a heavy blow, it was barely a step away from death, just a foot away from the edge of a cliff. The fortunate thing was, thank heavens the spring autumn cicada was weak to this point, or else he would be in great trouble. One must know, between a GU master and a GU, both must complement each other, the best would be both having the same rank. A rank 1 GU master should use a rank 1 GU, this was the most appropriate. If the Gu's grade was lower than the GU master, when the GU master uses it, it would be the equivalent of a strong man carrying a small stick, the strength output would be small. If the Gu's grade was higher than the GU master, when the GU master uses it, it would be the example of a small child carrying a heavy axe, unable to wield it properly. The spring autumn cicada was a rank 6 GU, and Fang Yuan was just a rank 1 initial stage GU master. To use an image as example, the spring autumn cicada would be a mountain, and Fang Yuan would be a squirrel. If the squirrel wanted to use the mountain to beat its enemy, the squirrel would just be squashed flat by the mountain at the first second. If the spring autumn cicada was at its peak state, Fang Yuan's weak rank. One aperture could not even tolerate it, the majestic aura of the cicada would just make the aperture burst to death. Fortunately it was at its weakest state, so Fang Yuan's aperture could accommodate it right now. I gave up the moonlight GU, going through all the links to find the liquor worm just to refine it into my vital goo. But in reality I already had a vital GU from the start, the spring autumn cicada is my vital GU. Fang. Yuan's heart was filled with emotion as he felt the close connection between him and the spring autumn cicada. The vital GU is the first GU that a GU master refines. It is terribly important, and would affect the future development of a GU master by a large extent. If a vital GU is well picked, the GU master's development will become smoother. When the vital GU is of a poor grade, to a GU master it would just drag down his cultivation and let peers surpass him. The more important thing is that it would affect the matter of life and death in a battle. Fang Yuan was clear on this point, so he was not satisfied after choosing the GUU village's signature moonlight GU. He just had to go all the way to find the liquor worm. In his memory to a rank 1 GU master, the liquor worm was already considered a high quality pick. The moonlight GU was just a choice that was slightly above average, but life is fascinating, because no one will ever know what is waiting for him or her at the next moment. Fang Yuan had refined the spring autumn cicada in his previous life. After his rebirth the spring autumn cicada fell into a deep sleep, but the connection between them still existed. In fact Fang Yuan found that, as if going through the refinement of the river of time, his connection with the Spring Autumn Cicada had grown even closer and mysterious than his previous life. It was just because the Spring Autumn Cicada was too weak. So Fang Yuan was not aware of it. Therefore in the real sense, the Spring Autumn Cicada is the first GU that he had refined. The only thing was that the Spring Autumn Cicada was not refined in his current life, but the result of hard work in his previous life of 500 years. The spring autumn cicada was Fang Yuan's vital GU, a rank 1 GU master, having a rank 6 vital GU. If this sort of thing was said out loud, it is expected that no one would believe such a thing. This has already broken the limits of human cognition. 
But yet, that is exactly what happened. The truth is beyond doubt. The liquor worm is a vital GU is already one of the best choices, but when you compare it to the spring autumn cicada, it is just like scum on the ground. My vital GU in this life is actually the spring autumn cicada, ha. Ha ha. Chapter 20. The Academy Elder is speechless. Chapter 20. The Academy Elder is speechless. The immense joy he felt did not overcome his mind, he quickly calmed down and started to consider the consequences that the spring autumn cicada would bring to him. The spring autumn cicada's ability is rebirth. But right now it is at its weakest state, at the instant I use it, it'll die. However it is still a rank 6 GU, so I can totally use its aura. This won't do any damage to its body. He he he. After he finished pondering, he closed his thoughts and opened his eyes. The liquor worm was hovering before him, shivering in the midst of the smoke-like green copper primeval essence that had surrounded it. Earlier because it wanted a chance to survive, desperation drove the liquor. Worm risk everything on a single throw. Yet in the end its will was easily defeated by the spring autumn cicada's aura. Due to this it suffered a heavy blow, its current strength not even 1% of the original will it had. Spring Autumn Cicada. With a simple thought, Fang Yuan released a small trace of the Spring Autumn Cicada's aura. This aura pressured onto the liquor worm's body, the liquor worm immediately stood still, motionless like a dead creature. Its scattered will felt the Spring Autumn Cicada's aura, like a mouse that had run into a cat, it was frightened. It shrank into a ball and was too afraid to move even a slight bit. Fang Yuan laughed and took the opportunity to mobilize his primeval essence. In the beginning when he tried using his green copper primeval essence to refine it, the liquor worms will resist it fiercely, so it could only expand arduously bit by bit. But right now Fang Yuan's green copper primeval essence drove straight in, flowing vigorously without resistance. There was no obstruction at all. The green copper color on the surface of the liquor worm rapidly expanded. In a few winks, the once pearl-white liquor worm was fully dyed green. The general situation had passed, the last remains of the liquor worm's will was finally washed away easily by Fang Yuan's will, dissolving into nothingness. With that, the liquor worm was fully refined. Compared to the beginning where Fang Yuan had to endure hardship akin to trampling mountains and crossing ravines, the refining process right now was as easy as swallowing saliva. A kind of mysterious and cordial feeling connected the liquor worm and Fang Yuan together. The refined liquor worm was like a part of Fang Yuan. If Fang Yuan told it to huddle up, it would curl, if he told it to curl into a ball it would curl into a round little dumpling. The feeling was like moving his own finger. Fang Yuan took back his primeval essence, and the liquor worm returned to its fat and white state. Then with a leap, it went through thin air and plunged into the middle of Fang Yuan's aperture. When it was inside, the liquor worm flew a distance away around the hovering spring autumn cicada and entered the green copper primeval sea. On the sea surface the liquor worm stretched its body arbitrarily, occasionally it would twist around its chubby waist, appearing comfortable as if it were bathing in a hot shower. With the spring autumn cicada, my plans will have to change. Fang. Yuan gathered his mind away from the aperture and took out the moonlight. G.U. He repeated what he did earlier, letting out a hint of the spring. Autumn cicada's aura, pressing it down on the moonlight G.U. As it felt the spring autumn cicada's aura, the moonlight goose will. Immediately surrendered, its fear so great its will could only turtle up in the furthest corner of its own body. Fang Yuan's primeval essence poured in. In the blink of an eye, the Moonlight GU was dyed a jade green color. Finally with just a simple thought, the Moonlight Goo's will was easily strangled. After he was done he took back his primeval essence and the Moonlight GU returned to its original, semi-transparent, blue crystal form. He put away the Moonlight GU, it did not enter his aperture, but instead directly dropped onto his forehead, forming a pale blue crescent mark in the middle of his brow. The entire refining process of the Moonlight GU from beginning to end did not take more than five minutes.
Comparing the start of his difficult refining process to the situation right now, the speed was rapid and created a sharp contrast. Not only was it very fast, the consumption of primeval essence was also very little. For the past few days, Fang Yuan had consumed six pieces of primeval stones just to refine the liquor worm. But tonight, while Fang Yuan could see the bottom of the primeval sea in his aperture, he did not use a single stone. Ha ha, with the spring autumn cicada at hand, it is as easy as having a God's help. After today all I just need to do is use its aura to pressure down. Any rank 1 GU will be easily refined. Even though I only have C grade talent, I don't need to borrow the help of primeval stones. The difference of before and now is like heaven and earth. Fang Yuan's mood was joyous. Right now his situation was like pushing away the mist and cloud to see the blue skies. Although the spring autumn cicada was at its weakest point, it was still a rank 6 GU. A fallen tiger still leaves behind threat, a festered ship still has. Three pounds of nails, one. Just relying on its aura, Fang Yuan's cultivation. From today onwards would receive a huge driving force. At this moment, the moon outside the window was bright and the stars were. Phew. The moonlight flowed through the window, shining on Fang Yuan's. Face. Initially I thought I wouldn't be able to get number one, but the road. Twisted and turned unexpectedly. Time waits for no one. I must go to the. Academy now and receive the top prize. Fang Yuan's eyes glistened. With a thought the spring autumn cicada faded away from view and disappeared once more, returning to its deep slumber. Then he called out the liquor worm and hid it away at a corner of his bed. This was to prevent the academy's unnecessary examination. Fifteen minutes later, in the clan academy, the academy elder had long gone to bed, but in his dreams he could Vaguely hear the sound of somebody knocking on the door. He was awoken by the noise and he opened his eyes, rather displeased. Who is it outside? There in the middle of the night. Instantly a voice replied in a respectful tone, reporting to Sir Elder. It is a student from this year's batch. He has already finished refining the Moonlight GU. You have instructed your subordinates earlier to report to you the very instant the first name appears, no matter what time it is. Well, it's true that happened. The academy elder frowned, and then he got off his bed. As he put on his robes he asked, which student is it that got number one this year? Is it Gu Yu Fang Zheng? The subordinate outside the door replied, it seems so. The moment I heard the news I hurried over here to tell you about it, sir. It seems to be someone from the Fang family branch. He he, counting the time, it is probably him. The academy elder laughed, lightly, confidently saying, who else could it be besides the A-grade talent? Genius. All those B-grade talent students would still be worse even with the help of primeval stones. Or else why would the grade of cultivation talent be so important? As he said this he pushed the door open and came out. Outside the door, his subordinate respectfully bowed, moving two steps backwards. Sir is right, he echoed. In the hall, ten candles are so burned together, brightening up the hall. The man who had received Fang Yuan had already cleared up all doubts by now. Under the bright light of the candle fire, his face showed a stunned expression. Wait, what did you just say? You were called Ji Yu Yu Fang Yuan, not Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng. Fang Yuan nodded. At this moment the elder walked in from the entrance. Fang Yuan and the man stood up and turned around to greet. When the academy elder saw Fang Yuan, his face was full of smiles. He strode over and stood in front of Fang Yuan, patting his shoulder in a friendly manner. You did well, Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng, you did not disappoint me. You were indeed an A-grade talent, genius. All those B-grade, C-grade peers of yours will never compare to you no matter how hard they try. Ha, ha, ha. Fang Yuan and Fang Zheng were twin brothers, their outer appearance was similar to a fault. Even the academy elder was mistaken. Fang Yuan was neither haughty nor humble. He took a little step back, letting his shoulder free from the academy elder's hand. He stared at the academy elder, his hands folded behind his back. Then he said with a faint 
Smile, Sir Elder, you have been mistaken. I am Guyu Fang Yuan, Guyu. Fang Zhang is my younger brother. Ha, huh. the academy elder opened his mouth slightly, his expression. Startled, he glared at Fang Yuan doubtfully, his brow turning into a frown. After a few breaths, he finally spoke. You are Guyu Fang Yuan. Correct sir, Fang Yuan replied. You have refined the moonlight Guyu. The academy elder was extremely surprised. His two eyes glared firmly at Fang Yuan's crescent mark on his forehead. His eyes were shining, he was asking the obvious. Indeed, that is the case, Fang Yuan said. Then, you are first of your batch. The academy elder was asking stupid questions, but he was not entirely at fault. After all, this situation was entirely out of everyone's expectations. One must know that he had been in charge of the academy for decades and is extremely experienced. He had seen C-grade talent students contending for number one before this, but it was never this early. Not to mention that, in this batch there were peers with A and B-grade talent. If there is no one earlier than me, Fang Yuan pretended to be in deep thought, then he rubbed his nose and continued, then it seems like it. The Academy Elder. 1. It means that while spoiled damaged, it can still be put to use. Chapter 21. How can it be that big? Brother got number 1. Chapter 21. How can it be that big brother got number 1? The sky was not yet bright, and the sun had yet to rise. The east sky just began to turn bright, the dark colors in the sky slowly fading away, the smell of the night still remaining in the air. The streets were empty, then came the sounds of quick footsteps. The early dawn mountain air was moist, yet Guyu Fang Zheng did not feel the slightest cold rush, his heart was full of surging enthusiasm. His face blushed red, and now he was walking swiftly toward the academy. I have been cultivating hard these few days, spending two primeval stones. I did not sleep at all last night, and I finally successfully refined the Moonlight GU. I am an A-grade talent and I was so hardworking. No one can be faster than me, no one. Father and mother, I told you I won't let you feel disappointed. When he thought of the moment where he told his aunt and uncle about the Good news earlier, they expressed happiness and relief, making Fang Zheng feel a surge of joy and pride. Just wait, all you clanspeople who look down on me, and big brother. From today onwards, I shall make you all look up to me, Guyu Fang Zheng. The more he thought the more Fang Zheng felt excited. He could not help, but clench his fists, and his pace quickened a little more. He came to the academy entrance. The academy's two guards looked at him strangely. They asked him, Um, Guyu Fang Yuan, why are you back? What, big brother was here just now? When Fang Zheng heard them, his face showed a hint of surprise and puzzlement. Ah, whatever, he would never have guessed that Fang Yuan would snatch away number one. He shook his head and cupped his hands together, his tone carrying a trace of arrogance. Two elder brothers, I am not Guyu. Fang Yuan, but I'm Guyu Fang Zheng. I have already successfully refined my vital Guyu, and I am here to come and take the top prize. You are Guyu Fang Zheng. You brothers are just two alike, no wonder. The academy elder was mistaken, the guard on the left side shouted, his eyes widening. The guard on the right shook his head and said, you came one step too late. Just last night in the late hour, your older brother Guyu. Fang Yuan came and met with Sir Elder and took the top prize. My older brother, Fang Zheng suddenly opened his eyes wide, crying. Out, wait, you said he'd gotten number one. How can this be? Isn't his big brother a C-grade talent? Getting number one, this has to be a joke right? It's true. How could we possibly joke around with this matter? Seeing Fang Zheng in disbelief, the guard seemed somewhat unhappy. This matter has been confirmed by the academy elder. In due course the name list will be released and announced. What's wrong, your older brother? Did not tell you about it. The other guard added. Fang Zheng just stood silly at the door. The truth was so much different from his imagination, right now he just could not understand what had just happened. In Fang Zheng's heart, there were several illusions of his adversaries. Among them, the ones that 
brought the most threat were Tu, Yu Yu Mo Bei, and Ji Yu Yu Kai Lian. These two were of B-ranked talent. Behind them were the clan's two largest family branches, and each of them had a grandfather that carried huge authority as elders, as well as sufficient financial power. If any of these two people won first place over him, Fang Zheng's heart and mind was still prepared. Even though he would feel a sense of loss, it was still acceptable. But right now, the one who took away number one was not Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei. Or Ji Yu Yu Kai Lian, it was not even any of the opponents in his heart. But it was Ji Yu Yu Fang Yuan, his older brother. That person with AC grade talent. That person who fell downhill and turned dejected after the awakening. Ceremony. That person who slept soundly in class all day. That person who was always heavily drunk and never turned home at night. That person who bullied Shen Kui, slapped him twice, and took all his primeval stones away. That person who always held him down, just like a shadow entrenched in his heart. How can it be like this? It can't be possible. In a short while, Fang Zheng roared in his heart, I was so hard working, but he just drank every day until he became drunk, and yet in the end he was the one who got number one, is this even fair? Why? Why? The sun rose from the east, the birds chirped around, and the overflowing air of spring took over Qingmao Mountain. Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng bathed in the warm sunlight. He slowly lowered his head, gritting his teeth, looking at his own lonely shadow. The excitement in his heart had turned into a balloon that leaked air, long dissipating. Instead what took its place was the emotions of confusion, resentment, unwillingness, puzzlement, fear and other complicated feelings. As time went by, the sun climbed higher. The Academy Bulletin Wall had posted a new name list, and on the list were just two names, firstly Fang Yuan, and then Fang Zheng. Following the appearance of this list, the news gradually spread out. After hearing the news, all those young students who had been bent on Refining their GU at home after receiving one were in an uproar. How can it be like this? If it was Fang Zheng who got number one I would still have believed it. But it's Fang Yuan, isn't he a C-grade talent? Could there have been a mistake, the A-grade talent Fang Zheng actually? Lost to the C-grade talent Fang Yuan, is this Tales from the Thousand and? One Nights, One. The Mo Branch Family Home. The greenery in the courtyard was overflowing, the fragrance of tea dancing. About one of the clan elders of the Giyuyu clan, Giyuyu Mo Bei was sitting in front of his desk, looking at the spring scenery outside his window. He leisurely drank his tea and said, Mo Bei hasn't continued refining his Giyu. The housekeeper standing at a side hurriedly replied, after he heard about News concerning Fang Yuan in the afternoon, young master Mo Bei seemed to be deeply affected and has no mood to continue refining the moonlight. Ji Yu, it is a pity, young master Mo Bei was just so close to succeeding. Actually, if Fang Zheng got number one it could still be ignored, but it just has to be that C-grade talent Fang Yuan. So young master Mo Bei lost his interest, it can't be helped. HMPH do not excuse him. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen snorted coldly, his face stern and his tone hard. A Ji Yu master's cultivation process is full of hardship each step. What is a small setback like this? That Fang Yuan is just AC grade, so to be able to get number one, it is presumably because of luck. The moonlight Ji Yu that he chose must have had a weak will, so that is how he could snatch the top. If Mo Bei can't see through this and let such a small setback get to him, then how is he supposed to be in charge of our Mo family branch in future, how can he compete with the Kai family branch? No one is allowed to advise him, let him think about it by himself. Yes, master, the housekeeper did not dare refute. Almost at the same time, in the home of the Kai family branch. Sai, Ji Yu Yu Fang Yuan, the clan elder Ji Yu Yu Kai Lian gave a long Sigh, his brows held down in a frown as he thought, waving his hand around. Someone, call young master Kai Chen over please. In a moment, Ji Yu Yu Kai Chen walked into the room with a lost expression, kneeling down with respect, your grandson greets his grandpa. 
Seems like you already know about the news, Ji Yu Kai Lian stared at. His only direct grandson, his tone gentle. He slowly said, I called you over. To prevent you from getting influenced by this matter. You see, when, refining the vital GU, firstly one looks at the talent, secondly at the GU. Worm. Fang Yuan's talent is just C grade, yet he was able to gain number one this. Time. This means that the GU he chose compared to all the Moonlight GU. Your peers have, has a will that is much weaker. This is entirely due to. Luck. So my grandson, do not be discouraged, this is nothing really. He is. Just a C grade talent, though he is the same as you, but his supply of. Resources is not as well as yours. His road to advancement will also be. Harder than yours, believe your grandpa, you will soon surpass him. Hence you should put away this trivial matter. Fang Yuan will not be your. Opponent, and is not worthy to be your adversary. Your real enemies are the. A great talent Fang Zheng and the Mo family's Mo Bei. Do you. Understand. Yes, thank you for your advice, Grandpa. I understand. I will go now and. Continue refining my GU. GU Yu Kai Chen had lost the sad expression on. His face, replacing it with a high spirited will to fight. Um. Elder GU Yu Kai Lian nodded his head, satisfied. A kindly smile emerged from his face and he said, Good grandson. While your talent is only C grade, but you can be rest assured that grandpa will fully support you. Later on, I will come out and use the aura of a rank 3 GU worm to suppress your moonlight goose will and help you refine this GU. 1 Tian Fang Yi Tan I am not entirely sure what it means here, but I only got Arabian Nights from looking up the word, Baidu tells me it is the title of Tales from the Thousand and One Nights. Chapter 22, Dancing Moonblade. Chapter 22 Dancing Moonblade. The sky was blue and clear, looking pure as if it had been washed clean. The sun was shining golden. Puffs of white clouds floated away, and a group of colorful peacock. Parrots chirped as they flew beneath the blue sky, forming an arrow. Formation under the clouds as they soared. This variant of colorful parrots would only appear in large groups during springtime. Their bodies were littered with feathers the color of the rainbow, their bodies the size of an eagle. The birds had parrot beaks, while their tails were that of a peacock's flowing long tail. It had been ten days since the day Fang Yuan managed to acquire number one in the test to refine the vital GU. The spring breeze blew over the whole mountain's green grass, while the wild flowers bloomed eagerly, and the bees and butterflies danced around together. Life was surging all around, it was the wonderful beauty of spring. The breath of spring was so strong that the tall bamboo walls surrounding the training grounds could not hold it back. This training field occupied three mute one. The ground was flat, paved with a layer of thick and wide gray graphite. Its four sides were planted with green spear bamboo. These green poles were placed closely together side by side straight and tall, forming a circle of green high walls. While below the wall corners were stone as well, clumps of green grass emerged from many areas. In between the bamboo were also some wild roses, poking in from the outside, a few even climbing the wall. Fifty-seven young teens at the age of fifteen were standing in the midst of the training field right now, formed in a semi-circle around the academy. Elder Hu was in the center, putting their focus on him. This was a lesson to teach the students on how to use the Moonlight GU. The Moonlight GU is our GUU clan symbolic GU, just like the Shang 2 houses bear strength GU, and the Bai 3 houses stream GU. The majority of you on the field have chosen the Moonlight GU as your vital GU, so you must all watch properly. Soon I will demonstrate personally how to use the Moonlight GU to attack. Students whose vital GU is not the Moonlight GU must also concentrate on me, as this classical long distance attacking method can also be used on other GU, the spectrum of methods one can use is very wide. As he spoke, the academy elder stretched out his right hand, his five fingers opening wide. He lowered his palm so that the young teens could see the center of it. Firstly, you use your mind to mobilize the Moonlight GU, moving it to the 
center of your palm. Following his voice, the crescent mark that represented the moonlight GU moved down the elder's arm and into his palm. Then, you mobilize the primeval essence in your aperture, pouring it into the moonlight GU. A thread of white silver colored primeval essence gushed out from the elder's body, so fine it was almost impossible to see. It entered the moonlight GU in his palm. The Academy Elder was of a rank 3 realm, and only rank 3 GU. Masters could produce white silver colored primeval essence. Rank 1. GU Master's primeval essence was commonly known as green copper. Primeval essence, while rank 2 GU Masters had theirs called red iron. Primeval essence. When they reached rank 3, it becomes white silver. Primeval essence. Once it absorbed the thread of white silver primeval essence, the crescent. Shaped mark in the elder's hand instantly glowed brighter and brighter. Although it was daytime, it still issued a brilliant pale blue light. That's awesome. How beautiful. The youngsters could not help but let out praises of surprise and amazement when they saw it. The pale blue light was clear like water. It flickered faintly in the elder's palm. At first glance it would seem as if the academy elder's hand was scooping a handful of moonlight. The academy elder smiled a little. Now, watch carefully, the last step is just like how I will do it, launching it out. As he said this, his widely opened five fingers slowly closed together, then. He lifted his arm up and slowly moved it forward, his arm straight. Finally, he waved his palm lightly in a cutting motion. The entire movement was steady and powerful. Swoosh. The young students could hear a light brushing sound beside their ear. Following the Academy Elder's movement, the condensed water-like pale blue light in his palm was thrown out like that. The light transformed into a small moonblade in the air, the faint blue moonblade only the size of a wide-open hand, the shape just like the crescent moon in the night sky. It drew a straight line in the air before it hit a grass puppet ten meters away. A tearing sound was heard, and the grass puppet's neck that was about 30 centimeters thick was cut clean by the moonblade. The puppet's body swayed about, the huge head suddenly falling onto the floor. After cutting the grass puppet into half, the moonblade immediately appeared dimmer. However it continued flying about another 6 meters in. The air before the crescent began to gradually fade away, finally dissipating. In the air, looking at the grass puppet's neck again, one could see that the cut area was extremely flat, as if it was cut away by the sharpest sickle. The youngsters were all shocked as they saw this, their eyes wide open. A. Few of them even touched their own necks involuntarily, astonished by the attacking power of the moonblade. After a short silence, the sounds of exclamation began. The teenagers had shining eyes as they stared at the grass puppet, some of them staring at the elder's palm. A few of them were looking at their peers, talking in whispering excitedly. Only Fang Yuan stood hidden in the crowd with a cold expression, his stature calm. In his previous life, Fang Yuan had cultivated to rank 6, and he had created the blood-wing demon sect in the Middle Kingdom. He taught tens of thousands of people, and was reputed as a giant figurehead of the demonic faction, his fame illustrious. The Academy Elder was just a rank 3 GU master. This small trick was just child's play to him, it would not cause any ripple of emotion in Fang. Yuan's heart. All those of you who have refined the Moonlight GU, step out. Each one of you shall take a grass puppet and follow the way I just did it, throwing out the Moonblade, practice attacking. Once the Academy Elder was finished, around 30 students stepped out. In this batch the entire clan had a hundred young teens joining the awakening ceremony. Those who had cultivating talent were around 50. 7. Among these students, those who had chosen the moonlight. Gunnumbered around 35. After going through these few days of hard work, they had all refined the moonlight GU. Those that were left were all D-grade talents. It was not because they did not desire to refine the moonlight GU, but it was due to the inability of their talent, so they could only withdraw after learning of the difficulty. To the youngsters of the GUU clan, the Moonlight GU was not a simple GU worm, but the symbol of the clan's glory. Very quickly 35 of them stood in a row. Each of them faced 
forward, standing ten meters away from a grass puppet on the opposite. Fang Yuan stood in the middle of the row, but he did not garner any attention. The practice began. The students all stretched out their right hands, letting the moonlight G.U. move to the heart of their palm. One by one the blue crescent mark started to give out water blue light as green copper primeval essence was poured in, but when they drew a vertical cut with their palm, only seven or eight crescents flew out. Among these crescents, some of them only appeared for a short moment before dissipating away. Some flew out for two to three meters before disintegrating into blue light with a bang. Some flew further, but the direction was severely off course, flying straight up to the sky. The young teens all frowned. When they saw the elder's demonstration, earlier it seemed quite easy. But when they started practicing themselves, they realized the skill required in this action. To throw out a moonblade and to have it hit on the grass puppet, it really was not that simple. The elder had a faint smile as he watched. He saw this scene every year, and was not surprised. The remaining 22 students could only stand outside the field, watching jealously. After practicing for five minutes, the youngsters were gradually able to produce moonblades. For a time in the training ground, pale blue colored moonblades flew about everywhere. A few moonblades would fade halfway, a few unluckily crashing into another. Some flew out of the training field, twisting around. Those that were able to hit on the grass puppets were just a small few. Of course these were all due to sheer luck. The academy elder started to tutor and guide each one personally. He focused greatly on Fang Zheng, Mo Bei and Kai Cheng and those others. With good latent talent, he patiently corrected their postures, teaching them his experience. Towards those C-grade talent students like Fang Yuan, he only mentioned two sentences. Fang Yuan kept condensing the blue light in his hand. He waved his palm up, few times cutting the air, but he did not release the light, pretending and acting, with the field a mess at the moment and no one focusing on himself. He moved his thoughts and released his hold on the moonlight G.U., his palm, tilting a little, making a cutting action. In order not to raise attention, he did not focus on his own grass puppet. Opposite him, but aimed at the one on his left. With a whoosh, a moonblade flew out quickly, passing through the center of chaos, drawing a straight line in the air and cutting accurately into the neck area of a grass puppet. The grass puppet wavered for a moment, the neck area cut deeply by the moonblade. But very quickly, the green grassy area that was cut began to regrow, tangling together and healing away the wound. Of course, this grass puppet was not a normal scarecrow. It was a rank 1. Scarecrow G.U., having the nature type ability of self-recovery. Unless the puppet was cut into half at once, it would just recover back to normal in a short while. Wow, look at that crescent. How cool, who threw it? Moonblades that were able to hit grass puppets right now were rare. Fang, Yuan just casually hit one, yet it caused the most significant result so far. Thus in an instant the students outside the field gave out cries of surprise. Even the academy elder's attention was caught, and he asked, that Moonblade just now was not bad. Was it yours? He looked at AC grade talent student with an enquiring eye, since that grass puppet was just opposite him. This male student blinked his eyes, feeling somewhat bewildered as he faced everyone's sudden gazes at him. To be honest the field was just in a chaos earlier with Moonblades flying about, so even he did not know if it was he himself who threw it? However looking at it, it probably is me, thought the young boy. Then he nodded his head subconsciously. The youngsters around him immediately looked at him with admiration. Who is he? What is his name? Some of the girl students asked around. Even he can throw out a moonblade, I must not lose. G.U.U. Mo Bay's eyes flashed with a hint of determination. So it's not Big Brother who threw it, G.U.U. Fang Jung inexplicably sighed with relief. After uncle and aunt consoled him, he was able to recover from the previous blow. Big brother, you won first place last time because your luck was good. Picking a weak-willed moonlight GU. A GU master's cultivation cannot always rely on luck, I will win you. Fang Zheng was cheering for himself. In his heart, 
You did well. Continue trying hard. Seize the feeling you had earlier. The Academy elder patted the student's shoulder, smiling as he encouraged him. The young boy quickly showed excitement and he nodded continuously, his eyes appearing with a different luster. The elder took the opportunity and announced, listen up everyone, this will be your homework. Practice well after class, in three days I will check the results. Whoever performs the best will receive ten pieces of primeval stones as the prize. Understand? Yes. The young students all shouted loudly. They could not help but be more excited when they heard about the primeval stone reward. However only three minutes later, the moonblades that flew about in the air started to thin gradually. Damn, every single moonblade takes up 10% of primeval essence. The consumption of the moonblade is just too much, I am just AC grade. Talent, my aperture can only hold 38% of green copper primeval essence. I can only throw out three moonblades. Those that stopped all side. The academy elder was calm as he witnessed everything, but his heart sighed, this is the benefit of those with high cultivating talent. To use the moonblade, it is simply just three words, practice makes perfect. Those with higher grade talent are able to hold more primeval essence in their apertures, and the rate of recovery is faster, so they have more chances to practice. Those with poorer talent can also use primeval stones to make up for it, strengthening the number of practices. But those with low grade talent and have no primeval stones, though they have the mind to practice, they will still be powerless. Sigh, the GU master's cultivation process is just so cruel. I had just better take care of those high grade talent students. 1 Mu Mu, an ancient Chinese measurement. 1 mu is 666 and 2 thirds meters squared. 2 Shang Jia Shang House, Shang is the word for bear. 3 Bai Jia Bai House, Bai is the word for white, as in white color. Tn, well as per mentioned, Guu clans Guu means ancient moon. I will keep people and clan names in their original Chinese term but if there is any significant meaning or anything important and relevant to the story I We'll explain it, of course. I'll probably make a page in future, detailing and listing down all these names and stuff so you can refer to it anytime. Chapter 23, Raising a GU is like Raising a Mistress. Chapter 23, Raising a GU is like Raising a Mistress. The sun had already set. The sunset glow was still burning in the sky. The mountains far away in the distance were covered in a thick layer of gray ash, gradually turning to black. In the academy, a day's class was over. The students walked out from the academy in groups of twos and threes. I'm really happy today, I learned quite a few things. Especially how I got to learn how to use the moonlight GU. The way the moonblade flies in the air looks so cool. It's too bad that my talent isn't enough, so in the future I can only be a logistics GU master, I won't be able to go onto the battlefield. The young teenagers happily chatted away. A few of them called their friends over. Let's go and eat, we can drink some rice wine while we're at it, what do you think? Sure, that's not a bad suggestion. You guys go on first, I need to go to the store beside the academy's GU room and buy a grass puppet. It will be easy to practice at home with it. Fang Yuan went to the GU room alone. The academy's GU room kept quite a few rank 1 GU worms. There were many types and variations, and Fang Yuan's Moonlight GU was taken freely from inside. Once in a while the students would have a free chance to pick a GU worm. If one wanted to get extra GU, they would need to pay up. In this short time Fang Yuan had no wish to refine any other GU. He walked to the building beside the GU room, it was a small store. In the store there were seven students, each of them negotiating over the counter with the store owner for buying grass puppets. It's you, Junior. The rank 1 GU master responsible for the store was in his 20s. When he saw Fang Yuan, he automatically greeted him while bargaining with his customers. Fang Yuan was taken by surprise, finding out that this GU master was Zhang. Yeah, it was the young GU master that had taught the hunters a lesson in the in. Ah, it's you senior. 
Fang Yuan nodded his head, his face expressionless. Zhang Ya took out a grass puppet from the counter behind him, passing it to the student who purchased it. At the same time he threw Fang Yuan a friendly smile and asked, Did junior brother come here to buy a grass puppet as well? If you want me to leave one for you, you just need three pieces of primeval stones. These things sell like hotcakes, right now there's only seven left, if you wait any longer there won't be any stock left. Zhang Ya's attitude towards mortals was arrogant, but towards people like Fang Yuan, he was very kind and sincere. Fang Yuan shook his head, laughing secretly as he thought, this Zhang Ya really did know how to do business. The grass puppets were made with the Scarecrow G.U., even after including the primeval essence that was put in. The final cost should not be more than one and a half primeval stones. Senior, this isn't fair. It should be first come first serve, why leave any for him? Yeah, we all came early. If you want to do business you should know the rules. Three pieces will be three pieces, here's the primeval stones, give me a grass puppet. The youngsters in the store were all worried when they heard that the store only had seven puppets left. They stopped trying to negotiate, and took out their stones to buy it. Very quickly, seven satisfied teenagers walked out. Does my junior want to buy a grass puppet? Zhang Ya laughed as he asked, it seems like they were sold out, but actually there's still the eighth. Puppet stowed away below the chest. If junior doesn't buy it now, you will miss the opportunity. Fang Yuan had no interest towards the grass puppet. He shook his head and pulled out a piece of primeval stone, putting it on the counter. I want to buy ten moon orchid petals. Zhang Ya was stunned. He looked Fang Yuan deep in the eye, taking away the primeval stone and pulling open the counter drawer. Then he took out a paper bag, saying, ten pieces of moon orchid flower petals, not one less. Please make sure. Fang Yuan checked the goods on the spot and found no mistake with it. Finally he left the small shop. GU have to be fed. A GU master refines GU, uses GU, and at the same time needs to raise GU. Refining a GU is difficult, there is the risk of counterattack. Using a GU is not easy, one needs a lot of practice. The knowledge of raising a GU is even more extensive and profound, because there are all kinds of GU worms and their food are exceedingly strange. Some need to swallow soil, some need starlight, some require tears and some feed on the clouds and air from the nine skies. Just by taking Fang Yuan's current 3 GU for example, the Moonlight GU requires moon orchid petals, two meals a day. In the morning and night one meal, every meal two pieces of flower petals. Meanwhile for the liquor, worm, it needs to drink wine. A jar of green bamboo wine could support it for four days. As for the spring autumn cicada, it is even more peculiar as it drinks straight from the river of time, maintaining its vitality. The river of time supports the flow of this world. It is not far away in the sky but very near at hand, flowing by every person's side. Every move made by every living creature requires the push of time. Time is like flowing water, hurriedly gliding forward. The river of time is invisible and colorless, while in reality all living creatures are actually surviving and living in the waters of the river of time. After buying the bag of moon orchid petals, Fang Yuan went to the inn to buy green bamboo wine. The liquor worm could also drink some turbid wine or rice wine to live. However with this kind of second-rate wine the amount it needed to drink would increase, and it would need many jars every day. After calculating, Fang Yuan decided it would be better to buy green bamboo wine straight away. Not only would it be more worth than buying second grade wine, it would also not arouse suspicion. Young sir, you've come. The workers in the inn had already known Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan passed him three pieces of primeval stones directly, saying with a familiar ease, give me a jar of green bamboo wine and make me a few good dishes. You don't need to give me the change, just put it here first. At the end of the month when it amounts up to one stone, you can subtract from my bill with it. Even though Fang Yuan no longer stayed at the inn right now ever since he 
moved to the academy dormitories, he would always have a meal here when he bought wine. All right, young sir, please take a seat. The dishes will be sent over. Immediately, the worker echoed, leading Fang Yuan to his seat. He took the cloth on top of his shoulder and gently wiped the table before leaving. Indeed, as the worker said, the dishes were very quickly served. Fang Yuan ate and calculated at the same time in his mind, a piece of primeval stone can buy me ten pieces of flower petals. The moonlight G.U. consumed four pieces every day. A jar of green bamboo wine costs two pieces of stones, and it can support the liquor worm for four days. In other words just to raise and feed the two of these G.U., I would need to spend nearly one stone every day. It does not seem like much, but in reality this was very costly. The monthly living expenses for a mortal family of three only used up one piece of primeval stone. From the starting of refining the GU until today, 16 days had already passed. Just to raise the GU alone Fang Yuan had already spent 14 and a half primeval stones. I have acquired the flower wine treasure, taken away Fang Zheng's bag of primeval stones and also got the first place reward. My primeval stone assets once reached up to 44 pieces and a half. However in the early days of refining the GU I wasted 6 pieces and a half, then I used 14 pieces and a half on feeding these GU. My living expenses cost half a piece. And today I am probably left with 20 pieces. Fang Yuan took out his money pouch. He opened it and looked inside. The Bag contained pieces of primeval stones inside. Each of these stones were grayish white in color, their shapes ellipsoid and the volumes equal, the size similar to a duck egg. After counting he found that he really only had 20 pieces left. In other words if this continued on then Fang Yuan would only be able to go on for half a month with the remaining stones he had left. He was not like his Peers, they had relatives and friends to help them out, especially with the case of students like Guu Mo Bei and Guu Kai Cheng who were loaded with primeval stones. Fang Yuan could only think of a way himself. Uncle and aunt have already cut off my living expenses, but every weekend the clan academy would give out three pieces of primeval stones as subsidy to every student. Looks like I would need to show off in the Moonblade assessment in three days and take that ten primeval stone prize. Fang Yuan chewed the food in his mouth while he pondered. His current age was just at the age where the body was growing. Without realizing it all the rice and dishes had entered his stomach. Taking up the sealed green bamboo wine jar, Fang Yuan lifted his feet and started walking, leaving the inn. Young sir, young sir. The inn worker chased after him from behind and said, just to tell young sir something, but in less than a month the trading company will arrive to the village. By convention they would always buy the green bamboo wine in our shop. Young sir loves our green bamboo wine and always buys a few jars every week, so the innkeeper ordered me to tell young sir about this matter. The green bamboo wine in our store has limited supply, so after we sell it to the trading company I'm afraid we would be left with very little. Is that the case? When Fang Yuan heard the news, he frowned slightly. To know someone and tell apart the conversation, Fang Yuan had 500 years of experience. The shop worker and the young GU master Zhang Ya spoke with similar meaning, however Fang Yuan could naturally tell the difference with Zhang Ya's tricky words and the shop worker's truthful words. This matter was a little troublesome. Fang Yuan needed to feed the liquor. Worm and he needed a huge amount of green bamboo wine in the long run. If this inn ran out of stock then he would have to use huge amounts of second-rate wine to feed the liquor worm. It was not possible for him to drink several jars a day. After a while people would be suspicious. After thinking about it, Fang Yuan took out ten pieces of primeval stones and said, then I'll buy another five jars. I will need you to carry them for me and follow me to put them in the academy dormitory. All right, young sir. The worker immediately accepted the primeval stones. The moon orchid flower petals could only last for five days without any special storage means, so Fang Yuan would only buy a bag every time. 
However the green bamboo wine could be kept for a very long time, thus. There was no problem with this. A few workers followed Fang Yuan into the academy dorms and placed the wine jars under his bed, and then they bid their leave. As he saw the money pouch that had suddenly flattened down in his hands, Fang Yuan heaved a sigh. Refining a GU is hard, but raising a GU is also not easy. This is also considering the fact that he had his 500 years of previous life experience, so he did not need to practice using his GU. Meaning that the consumption rate of primeval essence would be lessened, and thus saving him a huge sum of expenses. For those at his age around him, they would need to practice using the Moonlight GU and would need to waste primeval essence. To increase proficiency, one would need to practice many times. When too much primeval essence is consumed, primeval stones would have to be used as a supplement since the recovery rate is too slow. To buy a grass puppet it costs three primeval stones as well. All this is money. Fortunately my spring autumn cicada feeds on time and not anything else. Otherwise I would have long gone bankrupt. I would never be able to support it. Fang Yuan suddenly felt very lucky. The more high-end the GU is, the greater the food consumption needed or the more precious and rare the food required would be, thus the more difficult it would be to keep. A normal level rank 2 GU worm would cost up to around 1 to 2 pieces of primeval stones a day. It is good enough if the food is purchasable. There were some GU that required food that was relatively difficult to find, some of it did not even circulate in the market. Just like the spring autumn cicadas food being time itself, this was actually more precious. After all there was a saying, an inch of gold cannot buy an inch of time. No matter how much money you have, can you buy time? You can't. In theory a GU master can refine an unlimited amount of GU. As long as you can refine it, whether 10, a hundred or a thousand worms is possible. You can refine as many GU as you wish to. But in reality a GU master normally only had 4 to 5 GU. Why? The biggest reason is because it is hard to afford. The higher the grade of the worm, the more expensive it would cost to feed and raise. It often gave a GU master too many difficulties to cope with, making them have unceasing headaches over it. Another reason was, unable to use. To use the Moonlight GU to throw out a single Moonblade attack, one would need to use up 10% of Primeval Essence. AC Grade Talent GU Master could run out of Primeval Essence in their apertures after launching 3 to 4 attacks. To raise so many GU, wouldn't it be a waste if one couldn't use them? Anyway, thus in the GU Master's cultivation there was a saying going around. Raising a GU is like raising a mistress. To keep a mistress you would need to buy food, clothes, a house etc. It is very expensive and the more you have the more costly it is, a normal man cannot afford it. Even if you keep so many, a man's energy is limited, he cannot use them all. Would you raise them just to look at them? When the rank of the GU master increases, so does the food standard of the GU worm. Thus please refrain from seeing how a GU master has no limit to the number of refining GU, in general a GU master only keeps around 4 to 5 GU of his level. If the number of GU was raised higher, the GU master would go bankrupt. Chapter 24, Close Combat GU Master Chapter 24, Close Combat GU Master Three days later, lowering your body to dodge, that is the usual technique of restraining. Against a flying fist. When your enemy comes and attacks you, quickly, squat down and at the same time do a counterattack, striking his crotch and abdomen. Do not be afraid of a swinging fist. Usually those who come up and start swinging their fists at the first moment are people who have no brains and are impulsive and rash. On the martial arts field, the academy's martial arts, one instructor spoke. While he performed actions to demonstrate a wooden puppet's right first swept over, and the martial arts instructor quickly squatted down, dodging the incoming attack. Then he threw a punch at the puppet's abdomen, knocking it down with a few punches. The students were looking at the demonstration in a circle, but most of them 
were lacking in spirit, showing very little interest. The academy taught a variety of courses and this lesson was the one that taught foundation of martial arts. Using fists and legs to exert oneself was too inferior to the handsome and cool attack style of the Moonblade making almost all the students absent-minded. The next class will be the Moonlight Goose Usage Assessment. How have you been practicing so far lately? I'm still doing good. I can do three Moonblades, but only a few of them actually hit. Usually I get two blades on the grass puppet. Um, that's the same like me. I specially bought a grass puppet just to practice for this in these few days. Ellipsis dot dot. The young teens whispered to one another, their minds long gone from the lesson. They were all worried about the assessment in the next class. Just for this assessment, they had practiced hard for a long time after class and now they were flexing their hands and feet, looking forward to the assessment. The sounds of the students' discussion had reached the instructor's ear, and the martial arts coach jerked his gaze back at them, shouting, no talking. Aloud in class, all of you keep your mouths shut and watch closely. He was a rank 2 GU master, his body rather muscular. His upper body was naked and robust, the bronzed skin littered with countless scars on it. With a loud shout he showed a threatening manner, pressing down on all the students in the field. Silence fell in the martial arts field. The foundation of martial arts is the most important among important things. Especially in the early stages of a GU master's cultivation, it is more important than anything else. All of you better focus your attention on me. After he finished scolding, the martial arts instructor called out another wooden puppet. This light yellow wooden puppet was two meters tall, its huge wooden feet making sharp sounds as it stepped on the bluestone floor. Tiles. The wooden puppet stretched open its arms and rushed clumsily towards the coach. The instructor dodged its attack, then fiercely hugged its waist and used his strength to push it forward down, causing the huge and tall wooden puppet to fall to the ground. Then the instructor rode on the puppet's waist and swung his fist quickly at the puppet's head. The wooden puppet resisted for a moment, then its head was smashed. Broken by the instructor's raining blows, it was paralyzed on the ground, lying motionless. The martial arts instructor stood up, his breathing calm and long as always. He explained to the students, when facing a huge and tall enemy in close combat, do not be afraid. Ruining the opponent's center of gravity is a type of sensible tactic to pin down your enemy. Just like how I did it earlier, you must hug the opponent's waist, control his hips and then push forward with your strength. After that you take the opportunity and get on his body and fiercely punch at your enemy. Those with no defensive capabilities will instantly collapse. The students nodded repeatedly, but most of their eyes showed disapproval. The coach saw all of this and laughed bitterly in his heart. Every batch was like this. The attitudes of these youngsters were naturally easily attracted by gorgeous things. Without personal understanding and experience, it was hard for them to understand the importance of having a martial arts foundation. In truth especially for a GU master in his early stage, while the basic martial arts did not look promising, it was actually more important than the blade attack. Quote ellipsis dot. Remember, in close combat, your sight must not always stare at the enemy's eye. It should focus on the enemy's shoulder. No matter punching or kicking, the enemy's shoulder will always move first. In close combat your speed is very important, the speed I am talking about in this context is not the speed of your fists, but the speed of the movement of your legs. Quote ellipsis dot. Distance is the best defense. Keep your legs elastic, then you will be able to easily burst out your strength. When striking with your fists, maintain a triangle support. Otherwise you will lose your footing. The enemy has not fallen, yet instead you fell. First, the instructor patiently explained while he demonstrated. These were all his valuable experiences that he got from sacrificing blood and tears. Experience accumulated from long battles. Unfortunately the students were unaware of this. They gradually started to whisper again, the focus of the discussion still on the next lessons. Moonblade Assessment. 
This martial arts instructor is very pragmatic, but his teaching style is wrong. Fang Yuan watched quietly among the crowd, nodding and shaking his head at times. The instructor had no discipline in his teaching, he taught completely by interest, and just taught whatever he thought of. Therefore, the things he taught came out in a mess and there was a lot of complicated info. In the beginning many students listened seriously, but gradually they lost interest and diverted their attention to other aspects. Only Fang Yuan listened meticulously all the way, while others were learning, he was revising. His combat experience was richer than the instructor, but listening to others narrating was also a way of verification in cultivation. A GU master's method of fighting is usually divided between melee and ranged. The moonblade attack is a type of ranged attack, but when strictly Speaking, it is considered medium range due to its effective distance only being 10 meters. When it came to close combat GU masters, the martial arts instructor was the best example. Melee battle GU masters would usually choose GU that amplified their own body strengths and cultivate. These GU would give them superhuman strength, agility, responsiveness, endurance etc. Just like this martial arts instructor, his whole body was covered in bronze skin. This was of course not his own skin color, but it was a type of copper skin goo's effect. The copper skin GU would increase the GU master's skin toughness and defense by a lot, letting the GU master be able to endure more damage. A single moonblade would consume 10% of primeval essence. How many? times can a GU master throw a moonblade during battle? The number is few, especially for beginners who have difficulty forming effective blows. It can only be used as a type of trump card, the terrorizing factor is greater than its lethality. To a rank 1 GU master, the truly useful skill would be martial arts kung fu. This is because the martial art offense is more durable and reliable. It's a pity that this fact is something that they will not understand unless they face it with their own experience. Fang Yuan lightly glanced around at his peers, a faint sneer somehow forming on his lips. The basic martial arts class was finally over. After a short rest, the students' eyes were filled with anticipation, the academy elder was late. He waved, his big hand, pointing at the row of grass puppets in front of the bamboo wall. He went straight to the subject and said, all right, today is the day to Check the results. I want five people in a group coming up in proper sequence, using the moonblade to attack three times. Swoosh. The first group of students went up, and the moonblade danced in the air. After three rounds, only nine moonblades hit on the grass puppets. The academy elder shook his head a little, feeling slightly displeased. This hit rate was too low, the key being that among these five only two managed to successfully throw out two moonblades. You all better practice properly after this, especially you, and you. The elder reprimanded in a short sentence, then he waved his big hand and said. Next group. The two that were reprimanded dropped their heads and left the field in. Dismay. One of them was a girl, her eyes a little red and her heart grieving. She was only a C-grade talent, yet she could not bear to use primeval stones. To quickly recover her primeval essence. Thus in these three days she practiced very little, resulting in her unskilled throwing of the moonblade. A GU master needed money to refine GU, raise GU, even practicing to use. GU needed cash. But where was she able to get so much money? Even though her two parents were supporting her from behind, but every family had their own problems. To be short of funds was often the dilemma that a GU master faced. Anyway I don't have the slightest chance of getting number one. I might as well give up and save on primeval stones, that is better for me. As she thought of this, her heart became calm once more. There were actually quite a number of people who thought the same way as this young girl. Because of the lack of practice, many of the students performed poorly. The academy elder's brow deepened more and more. Fang Yuan watched, secretly shaking his head. These people are really pitiful and sad. Just for a small amount of primeval stones, they gave up their own chance to make progress. Primeval stones are meant to be used, if 
You want to become a miser and accumulate primeval stones, then what did? You become a GU master for. In other words, those who are short-sighted would often haggle over every penny and chase after less important things. As for those with lofty aspirations, they usually showed a tolerant and generous attitude, and had the strength to give up and let go of things. It's finally my turn. At this moment, Guu Mo Bei's horse face lit up in a confident smile all over, and he walked up to the field. His stature was stout and gave out a fierce and strong aura. After standing still he raised his hand and threw three moon blades, all three of them hit. Among the blades, two of them hit on the puppet's chest, while the other blade hit the puppet's left arm, shaving away a few green grass. This result naturally caused the young teens to burst with admiration. Well done. The elder's brow slightly smoothed out. The next group came up, Guu Kai Cheng standing among them. He had a small and short body, his face full of pockmarks, his expression bringing a slight nervousness. He sent out three moonblades continuously and all three hit on the puppet's chest, cutting out three intertwined scars. The scars went from deep to shallow and restored back to its original appearance after a few breaths, due to the puppet's self-healing ability. However this outcome was already tied to Guu Mo Bei's result, and also received the elder's praise. Kai Cheng held his head high as he walked out of the field, looking at Mo Bei defiantly in the eye on the way. HMPH. Below the field, Guu Mo Bei gave a cold snort, but he did not return Kai Cheng's glare. Instead, he continued looking at Guu Fang. Zheng who had not gone up yet. His heart clearly knew that the real threats were only Ji Yu Yu Kai Cheng and Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng. The previous was the same like him, a B grade talent while also having the constant supply of primeval stones. The latter was an A grade talent, while Fang Zheng did not have as many primeval stones as them, but just by relying on his own natural recovery speed thanks to his grade talent, he would also be able to practice a lot in a short amount of time. Right now Guu Kai Cheng's results have appeared, showing a tie to Mo Bei, and only Guu Fang Zheng was left. In the last few groups, Guu Fang Zheng finally came up to the stage. One Quan Zhao Chinese boxing but I translate it as martial arts, because firstly, I'm not sure Chinese is the proper word here. This land isn't really China, and their language isn't really Chinese, also writing Chinese boxing feels out of place here. Chapter 25, The Light of Spring is Enchanting. Chapter 25, The Light of Spring is Enchanting. Is he Fang Yuan or Fang Zheng? Some of the students were muttering. There were still people who could not differentiate between Fang Yuan and Fang Zheng, the two twin brothers. It's Fang Zheng. Fang Yuan is always wearing a cold expression, he would never appear tense, someone answered. Oh, then there will be a spectacle. Fang Zheng is the only a great talent. From our village in three years, after all, the crowd casted their eyes over to the field. Fang Zheng could feel the pressure among the gazes shot at him, and this made him feel even more nervous. Standing on the stage, his fingers were trembling slightly. He threw out his first moon blade, originally intending to aim at the grass puppet's chest. But because he was tense, he missed, in the end the Moonblade imprinted onto the grass puppet's neck area. The young teens instantly let out a sound of slight surprise. They thought that Fang Zheng deliberately did it. Instead of aiming for the easiest spot which was the chest of the puppet, he went for the neck instead. This was a showcase of huge self-confidence towards his own attacking skill. They could not help but look forward to Fang Zheng's next move. Guu, Mo Bei and Guu Kai Cheng however had their complexions cast down. Only those among the field who could see Fang Zheng's error were the Academy Elder and Fang Yuan. How dangerous. Looking at the Moonblade, Fang Zheng exclaimed in his heart while secretly feeling lucky. He took in a few deep breaths, trying his best to calm down. Then he threw out two blades. This time he did not make any mistakes, and the two blades hit accurately on the grass puppet's chest. This result made the academy elder nod his head, and Mo Bei and Kai Cheng calmed down as well. 
Fang Zheng's result was different from theirs. So it would all come down to how the academy elder decided to grade them. The other students let out sounds of sighing. Fang Zheng's later performance was not interesting, making them feel slightly disappointed. The next few groups were not interesting either. No one was able to perform better than Mo Bei, Kai Cheng and Fang Zheng. The youngsters started to whisper around. At this rate, the top scorer in today's assessment should be among the three of them. All three of them managed to hit the grass puppet, I wonder who the academy elder will deem better. Hold on, it's the last group. Fang Yuan's going up. Oh, that C-grade talent, cold genius. Haha. <laughs> right when it was the last group, Fang Yuan finally went upstage. It's that Fang Yuan. Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei lifted his head and looked at Fang Yuan for a moment, then he lowered his eyes uncaringly. Last time you got really lucky, choosing a weak-willed Moonlight Ji Yu by accident and getting number one. Let's see how you perform this time. Ji Yu. Yu Kai Cheng hugged his arms, waiting to see Fang Yuan make a fool of himself. Big brother, this time will not be like the last. I have practiced so hard. For so long, I can definitely surpass you. Among the crowd, Ji Yu Yu Fang. Jung pursed his lips, subconsciously clenching his fists tightly. Previously in the assessment to refine the vital Ji Yu, he is someone with an a grade talent actually got second position. Naturally he was not happy with this, especially after he understood that Fang Yuan was able to win and get number one because of sheer luck, this made him even more unsatisfied. To Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng, being victorious over his own older brother Fang Yuan had a special and great significance. Many gazes were gathered on Fang Yuan, and the academy elder's sight was fixed on him as well. Fang Yuan made no emotion, his expression was cold and detached. He stood still, primeval essence pouring into the moonlight Ji Yu in the heart of his palm. With a cut in the air, he struck out the first moonblade. This moonblade flew very high. It not only went over the grass puppets head, but flew over the bamboo wall as well. It went on for almost 15 meters before the light turned dim and vanished into thin air. PFF, someone couldn't help but laugh out. This is way too outrageous, isn't it? Someone sneered. He's indeed a genius. No wonder he managed to get number one in. Refining the GU. Another spoke sarcastically. In the earlier years when Fang Yuan created poetry and showed early wisdom, it had already caused discontented emotions among these people. Later on when he relied on luck and got number one in refining his vital GU, this made them feel a layer of jealousy among their dissatisfaction. Many of them were waiting to see a good show. They waited to see the genius Fang Yuan reveal an embarrassing action and this moonblade of his did not let them down. Waves of laughter swept across the crowd. The academy elder shook his head slightly, secretly laughing at himself. Why did he have to be so concerned with Fang Yuan for no reason? He was just a C grade and merely a boy who got number one in refining Ji Yu because of sheer luck. In his heart he had already made up his mind. Although Mo Bei, Kai Cheng, and Fang Zheng's results were the same, he would still pick Fang Zheng as number one. The war between Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei and Ji Yu Yu Kai Cheng was the epitome of the political struggle between the two most powerful elders in the clan. The academy elder had always remained in the center and had no intention to enter the middle of the political vortex. The academy elder was more inclined towards the clan head Ji Yu Yu Bo, and Fang Zheng was a set with the clan leader. Add in the fact that he had a Grade talent, choosing him as number one would mean showing biased care for him, and it was something the clan's upper authorities could accept. A warm spring breeze blew over, the smell of flowers drifting into the training grounds. The sunlight shone down on Fang Yuan's body, sending a lonely black shadow onto the ground. His expression was still cold as he quietly gazed at the grass puppet ten meters away. The moonblade in his palm was giving out a faint blue light. Of course, he had deliberately thrown the first Moonblade off course. Right. Now he only had two chances left to act. Taking into account the Academy. Elder's position, to acquire number one he would have to create an outcome. 
that exceeded everyone's expectations in the next two attacks. With only two chances left to attack, it's impossible. Big brother, I have finally won over you. Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng's eyes did not flicker as he stared at Fang Yuan. From young till old, the life shadow that his older brother had brought onto him finally faded away slowly at this moment. Fang Zheng could feel victory so nearby. His two fists were subconsciously clenched tight, his entire body so full of excitement that he trembled. Slightly, big brother, my victory this time is just a beginning. Next, I will keep on winning over you again and again until I banish away all the shadows in my heart. I will prove to the clan the excellence of an A-grade talent genius. Fang Zheng told himself in his heart. But just at this moment, Fang Yuan acted. His right palm was like a knife, splitting the void. With a sharp tearing sound, the watery blue light shrouded in his palm was thrown out. It flew in the air, turning into a curved blue moonblade, shooting towards the grass puppet. In just the next second Fang Yuan's right palm lit up again in a coat of blue light. He turned his palm and shot out the third moonblade. These two attacks connected smoothly like flowing water, it was a seamless combination. The two moonblades flew out in quick succession, the distance between the two blades less than half a meter apart in the air. Under the stunned gazes of the crowd, the two moonblades accurately hit onto the grass puppet's neck. This, Fang Zheng's pupils shrank, a bad feeling emerging from his heart. In the next moment, the students slowly opened their mouths wide as they wore astonished expressions. They saw that the grass puppet's head slowly tilted to one side, then it fell off the neck and dropped onto the ground. With a bounce, it rolled two to three meters away. Fang Yuan had beheaded the puppet. This outcome had gone beyond the expectations of everyone on field. As this luck or skill, the academy elder frowned. This doubt hovered in the hearts of the rest of the students. For a time, the entire training ground lapsed into silence. How could this be? Fang Zheng murmured. He stared at Fang Yuan. Blankly, the surged emotions in his heart dropping instantly, falling deep. Into the lowest point, Fang Yuan narrowed his eyes, acting as if he was oblivious to the gazes that fell onto him from the crowd. Cluck, cluck. Under the blue skies and white clouds, a group of peacock parrots suddenly flapped their wings and flew in midair. They dragged their magnificent Long and slender peacock tails, clucking in the air as they flew about. Playfully, Fang Yuan stood in the center of the training field, looking up. Under the bright sunlight, the multicolored feathers of the birds dazzled even greater. And gorgeous. His expression was indifferent, as if the person who just cut off the grass puppet's head was not him. Ah, the light of spring is really enchanting. He sighed in his heart. Chapter 26 The Nature of All organizations. Chapter 26 The Nature of All Organizations. As it neared nightfall, the sun on the edge of the horizon looked like blood. The afterglow rays poured into the school where around 50 students sat. Upright. On the stage above, the academy elder was reading out names one by one, distributing allowance to them. This was the academy's weekly subsidy where every seven days allowance would be distributed. One could say it was financial aid for these young teens. After all with their capabilities, to feed and raise their own GU was a lot of financial pressure. GUU Fang Yuan. The elder read aloud. Fang Yuan got up from the seat by the window at the last row. He walked up the stage, receiving two money bags. In one bag was three primeval stones, the clan's allowance. The other bag held the reward of ten primeval stones. Work hard, the elder said. He gave Fang Yuan a deep look. Fang Yuan had continuously achieved number one, and this had let those elders who were originally disappointed in him start paying slight attention. Fang Yuan nodded his head and took the purse into his arms, returning to his seat. Damn it, he actually got number one again, Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei fixed his gaze onto Fang Yuan firmly, his heart rather furious. Those two moonblades consecutively hit the neck of the puppet. Is this because of sheer luck or real skill? Ji Yu Yu Kai Chang narrowed his eyes. Since the end of the assessment until now, this question had been hovering in his mind. 
It was not just him, many students unconsciously drifted their sights. Towards Fang Yuan, this question haunted them, although they had lost, their hearts were unsatisfied and they wanted to question what actually had happened. When the day was about to end, the academy elder announced a matter. You all have been in the academy for an amount of time now, and you are familiar with how to use your vital GU as well. In the next few days I will teach you all how to warm and nourish your aperture, advancing a GU. Master's Cultivation Realm The higher the realm of a GU master, the more concise your primeval essence becomes. A rank 1 GU master has green. Copper primeval essence, a rank 2 GU master has red iron primeval essence and a rank 3 GU master possesses white silver primeval essence. A portion of red iron primeval essence is comparable to 10 portions of green copper primeval essence. Similarly a portion of white silver primeval essence equals 10 portions of red iron primeval essence. You must all remember, the GU are just tools that we use. Cultivation is the foundation of us GU masters. The higher your rank, the stronger the GU you are able to use. In the next three months, whoever can take the lead and promote to rank 1 middle stage will receive a reward of 30 primeval stones. At the same time he will be able to choose the second GU first. After three months, we will elect a class monitor and two vice class monitors. Based on the results, the class monitor will enjoy a subsidy of 10 primeval stones while the vice class monitor will have an allowance of 5 pieces. Alright, that's all for today. You can all leave. The elder's words made the academy burst with noise. Time to elect the class monitor and vice class monitor. Someone clenched his fist in excitement. The class monitor receives 10 primeval stones every 7 days and the vice class monitor gets 5 pieces. If I am able to be the first to reach rank 1 middle stage, I will definitely be able to become the class monitor. Another had lights in his eyes. The primeval stones are not the important focus. What matters here is the position of class monitor and vice class monitor, it represents glory and places one's identity over others. When normal students sees the class monitor they must all bow and greet him. Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei and Kai Cheng did not lack primeval stones, but they deemed the glory of the position very important. To become the class monitor, without mistake it is the first person who promotes to rank 1 middle stage first. That means when Big Brother see me in future, he would have to bow and automatically greet me. Hold up. Where is Big Brother? Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng subconsciously looked back, but Fang Yuan's seat was empty. The students walked out of the academy. Where's Ji Yu Yu Fang Yuan? Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei wanted to look for Fang Yuan and ask him face to face. However Fang Yuan was one step ahead and had long left. HMPH, he sure ran away fast. Is he afraid? Looks like he got lucky again in today's test. Ji Yu Yu Kai Cheng sneered. Whatever, it's just 10 primeval stones. I don't need to care about this. Small matter, right now what's important is to advance to middle stage and get that class monitor position. Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei narrowed his eyes, looking at his side where Ji Yu Yu Kai Cheng and Ji Yu Yu Feng Zheng were. These two figures were his real enemy, while Feng Yuan was just a small C. Grade talent, he was not on par. In the first two times, Feng Yuan got lucky and got number one. However, this time it is a cultivation test, and the focus is on the talent of cultivation. When the talent is higher by a grade, the advantage becomes much greater. Ji Yu Yu Kai Cheng thought, depressed in his heart. His real grade talent was only AC grade, it was only because of cheating that let him gain the illusion of having B grade. Just a mere class monitor and two vice class monitor positions got them itching their fists. How hot-blooded and naive they are at this age, Fang. Yuan sneered as he leaned against the gateway of the academy. The so-called glory was just a valuable tool the upper levels used to motivate those below them. In the end, it was just a layer of illusionary glory, it was useless. His 500 years of experience had long allowed Fang Yuan to understand some of the secrets of life. Whether it comes to a clan, sector demonic group, whether it is this world. 
or Earth, all organizations are like this. The high and low positions are established, making the law of promotion clear, letting those in the organization climb up non-stop from the bottom. Because chasing after profit is the nature of humans, and positions of authority often make people have superiority, creating the illusion that oneself is living a more valuable life than others. Power is like the carrot dangling in front of a donkey. The desires of humans are stimulated by it, and each of them secure their personal gains with someone with authority for it. After climbing up one level, there will be a higher level. While they are busy currying favor for personal gain, their hard work is squeezed out from them and their value is exploited by the upper position. In every organization, as long as there is a chain of command, it is to give serve to those at the upper ranks. The so-called class monitor and vice class monitor position is like the smallest carrot, luring everyone else into the structure of the clan. And to stop those below from realizing the truth, those at the higher positions integrate shared values, clear-cutting the idea of glory, meritorious deeds etc. The establishment of high and low positions are made along with unequal benefits. Sometimes the use of religion is done to dominate people's hearts. This is the real truth, yet it is a pity that too many people in the world do not understand, they foolishly work hard for others. And for every organization in the world, the most fundamental of its essence is just one thing, and that is, the redistribution of resources, where the higher the position the more resources they can enjoy. In his previous life Fang Yuan had founded the Bloodwing Demon sect in the Middle Kingdom, where he taught up to tens of thousands of people. He erected the positions of demon soldiers, demon generals, demon sages etc. Each position gave their corresponding benefits, letting countless people flock over like ducks, letting Fang Yuan order them around. This kind of experience allowed Fang Yuan to understand clearly the way of thinking in this principle. Thus any organization is just a representation, while the real basis is just one word, resources. Without food resources, one will die of starvation. Without water resources, one will die of thirst. Without cultivation resources, one will become weak and sooner or later, be bullied to death. And for a GU master, primeval stones are the most important resource. Fang Yuan's two orbs were deep like an ancient pond, and as his mind reached this point the corners of his lips curled up slightly, creating the outline of a sneer. He had long left the academy, and right now he stood at the gate entrance of the school. He saw the first batch of students coming out, gradually walking closer towards him. It's Fang Yuan. What's he doing at the middle of the gate entrance? HMPH, every time I see his dead dysfunctional state, I feel so pissed off. Don't worry about him, he's probably waiting for someone. The young teens paid no attention to him, just as they were about to walk. Over, Fang Yuan strode across and blocked them. I'm plundering. Everyone must surrender a piece of primeval stone before they can leave. T. N. Robbing time. What a pain this chapter was to translate greater than underscore greater than. Chapter 27, Outright Extortion. Chapter 27 Outright Extortion. The young teens were instantly shocked and angry. What, I didn't hear wrongly, did I? Fang Yuan, your head must have overheated and gone confused. You, would actually stand at the gates of the academy and blackmail us. Have you gone mad? Who gave you the guts to put your ideas on us? Scram, you're just a petty C grade, how dare you block my way? If you, don't scram, I will send you flying with my, erg. Fang Yuan suddenly lashed out. His right palm furiously cut forward. His movement was quick and precise. His slice of his palm hitting the left side of someone's neck. This unlucky teenager was totally not expecting Fang Yuan to suddenly attack him. While he was still cursing at Fang Yuan, he suddenly suffered a heavy blow. His two eyes instantly rolled up and he fainted on the spot. Fuck. You actually dared to strike. The crowd jumped, and the young teen subconsciously retreated backwards. Guu Beiju fainted, what do we do? Some of them were terrified and scared, shouting around in horror. What else can be done? There's so many of us, and Fang Yuan is alone. 
We should all rush at him together and beat him up. Some people were shouting, their rage erupting. That's right, he sure doesn't know his place. How he dares to provoke us. By himself, he's definitely digging his own grave with his over. Ambitiousness. Everyone get on him together. Yet before they could do anything, Fang Yuan had already struck. He strode a few steps forward, rushing into the group of teenagers. He slashed his palm and the edge of his hand cut onto a youth's neck. The young man rolled his eyes upward and fell. Ah, another teen yelled loudly, swinging his fist at Fang Yuan. Sweeping through the air, Fang Yuan lowered his body and dodged, then he lifted his leg and kicked the boy's crotch area. Ah oh wwwwww The youngster's loud roar was originally sonorous and indignant, but after he took the blow his voice instantly rose higher and became sharp and shrill, filled with a kind of misery and pain. Thump. He covered his crotch with his two hands, his knees giving way as he dropped to the ground. He rolled around on the floor screaming loudly, the pain so great his entire body was covered in cold sweat. Fang Yuan swung his two fists around like a tiger that had entered a flock of sheep. He had 500 years of battle experience, and these youngsters were just a bunch of soft green kids, they had only just started cultivating not long ago, how could they possibly be his opponents? In the blink of an eye, Fang Yuan put down the entire group of young students. If they had not fainted, then they would be lying on the ground. The pain making them drained and their bodies hurting all over. What's going on here? Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei arrived and exclaimed. He saw that Fang Yuan stood at the entrance of the academy gates, and there were five to six students on the floor around him. This Fang Yuan, H. He wants to extort our primeval stones. One of them, lying on the floor shouted angrily while clutching his belly. Wow, still full of energy huh? Fang Yuan's expression was flat as he kicked fiercely at the abdomen of the boy who just yelled. O-W-W. The youngster immediately cried out in pain, his body curling up like a shrimp. Fear emerged from his face, his tears streaming down as he dared not to speak again. As they saw this scene, the students that came over all felt Fang Yuan's fierce savageness and cruelty, their hearts throbbing. All right, all of you be good and hand out a piece of primeval stone. Then, I'll let you go, or else, these people on the ground here will be your fate. Fang Yuan made a big step forward, his tone callous. In your mother's face, you petty little C grade would even dare to win me. A B grade. Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei flew into a rage, swinging his fists as he rushed toward Fang Yuan before they knew it. With a slight turn of his ankle, Fang Yuan swerved gently sideways and let Mo Bei's fist fly past. Then he stretched out his left hand, lifting the index and middle finger toward the center of Mo Bei's clavicle, accurately jabbing at the area below the throat. Mo Bei immediately blacked out, falling onto the ground with a thump, fainting on the spot. Hiss. As they saw what just happened, the young students that planned to rush forward quickly stopped, each of them releasing a mouthful of cold air. In the eyes of these youngsters, Fang Yuan's attacks were suddenly too profound to be understood. They did not pay attention to basic martial arts. But in reality it was vaguely mentioned during class. The human body had many vulnerable parts, and several parts that Fang Yuan had struck were one of those vulnerable places. When these parts were struck, it would easily make a person faint on the spot, and a heavy blow would induce a life-threatening crisis. However Fang Yuan had proper restraint when he attacked. Those that he had tackled down were either knocked out or suffering in immense pain, losing the ability for combat in a short amount of time. There was no one who was really seriously injured. This was the terror of 500 years worth of combat experience. Are you going to give me your stones or not? Fang Yuan did a step forward, forcing the other youths. They looked at each other for a moment. Then half of them gritted their teeth while the other half roared angrily, all of them swarming towards Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan dodged about while striking at the same time. His cultivation base was lowly, but his realm was still there, his heart was cool as ice, his movements quick and precise. Thump, thump. After a few breaths, bodies fell down onto the ground again. 
It's too vicious. Too terrible. They're not going to die, are they? There were still a few young girls left behind, they did not rush forward. Their eyes were open wide, and after seeing what had happened so far there, bodies trembled more and more. Fang Yuan swept his gaze to them, and their faces turned pale as they quickly waved their hands and retreated. No, don't come over. We'll surrender, we'll surrender the stones. After Fang Yuan received a few pieces of primeval stones, he let them go. They stumbled out of the academy gateway, while in succession several students came over. To leave the academy, this gateway was the only route. With Fang Yuan blocking this path, he would be able to block out all the students. Damn, what's going on? The new wave of students stared in amazement. Isn't that Guyu Mo Bei? Guyu Kai Cheng stared at the unconscious. Mo Bei on the floor, his eyes wide and his mouth agape. When Fang Yuan opened his mouth and spoke, the youngsters were instantly angered and they attacked him, then they fell. Sir Elder, we're just going to keep watching all of this and not stop them. What if someone loses their life, how are we going to salvage the matter? The guards were worried. Some of the guards were indignant, saying, this Fang Yuan has too much guts. He would actually dare to extort his classmates at the academy school. Gates under our eyelids. This is acting with utter disregard of the law and discipline. As long as sir gives the command, we subordinates will take away this kid. The violent matter of Fang Yuan blocking the gateway and openly extorting. His classmates had long attracted attention since the beginning. But mortal guards had no right to punish the students, so they could only go first to the academy elder and report. When the academy elder heard the news, he did not immediately command for them to stop it. Instead he went up the pavilion and observed from afar. Looks like this child has fighting talent. The longer the academy elder watched the more interested he felt. Fang Yuan's use of the moonblade today had already caused some uncertainty in the elder. Right now he watched as Fang Yuan with his strength alone, making an enemy out of the entire batch of students, bearing a sort of unstoppable fighting style of graceful demeanor. With this the doubts in his heart were cleared. In this world, there were those who were particularly keen and sharp. Towards battles, these were hidden gifts. They were good at fighting, and they loved battles. In the battles they were often inspired, and always created surprising and even unbelievable accomplishments. Ah, he's a natural battle GU master. Pity, his talent is only C grade, in the end he just lacks one step of a grade. The academy elder heaved a sigh. Sir, are you not going to stop this farce? Letting him go on with this. Nonsense, I'm afraid the consequences wouldn't be too good. The guards beside him had worried expressions on their faces. T.N. They really do curse and swear in this novel, by the way. Hope you guys don't mind the vulgarities, though that's probably the least of your worries in future. Chapter 28, Capital Free Business. Chapter 28, Capital Free Business. Why stop it? The academy elder lifted his eyebrows and laughed. He lifted a finger and pointed it at Fang Yuan who was far away and said, this Young man has taken control of the entire situation, and his attacks are fully restrained. Look at the way he cuts at the neck, he only acts on the left or right side, but never cutting at the nape. This is because he knows that striking the neck sides can make a person faint on the spot. Meanwhile, attacking the area at the back of the head and neck could cause death, so he automatically abandoned that way of attacking. Look at all those youths on the ground, which one of them is actually heavily injured? None. Even if they were badly hurt, so what? Are you saying that our academy's treatment GU masters won't be able to cure this sort of traumatic wound? But Sir Elder, that child is just too arrogant. He blocked the entrance, this is obviously not acknowledging our existence as guards. Being ignored isn't. The main problem though, the important matter is how the clan will think of our academy. To actually allow a small petty C grade student make a fuss in the academy and not stop it. If word goes out, we're afraid this might affect your reputation, Sir Elder. The guard squinted as he said this. HMPH, in reality is that because you all were disregarded by the boy, so 
Your own dignity feels challenged. The academy elder was not too happy. He sneered and shot a gaze as sharp as a sword edge at the guards. They all lowered their heads, all of them disagreeing. What's wrong with fighting? As long as lives are not lost, it will stir up the competitive side of the students and temper their will to fight. To stop this kind of fight is to stifle the students' fighting passion. Was there no fighting? In the past batches, every batch had their own battles, and it happened very often. The only difference was that it usually happened in the latter half of the year when the students had already mastered some means of fighting. With strength they itched to fight, and at the same time it is an aggressive age. Why didn't you stop those people back then? The academy elder questioned in a cold voice. Maybe it was because the fights in the previous years were all single battles. There were rarely huge-scale fighting like this one. But this Fang Yuan is really good at creating a disturbance. The chief of the guards replied, No, no, no. The academy elder shook his head, that was because you all did not dare to stop it. Because after half a year, a GU master will have the ability to fight beyond a mortal's strength, and with your petty mortal bodies, how are you supposed to stop it? Right now you all want to stop Fang Yuan, perhaps it is because he just started cultivating, so he doesn't have enough power. It's also because you feel that he ignored your existence and offended your dignity. But you must all remember, these students all bear the surname of GUU. They are my GUU clan's clan. Members, your masters, even if they are still of young age, no matter how weak, they are still your masters. The elder's tone had turned sharply. Your surnames are not GUU, what is your worth? Because of your loyalty, you were all given the position of guards, rewarding you with some sweet benefits. But in reality, you are still slaves. Just slaves. A slave dare give preposterous opinions of their masters, caring about the matters of their masters. The elder's face was dark like water. This was not your subordinate's idea, not my meaning. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. The guards were ashen-faced as they kneeled down to the ground, spouting. Non-stop. The academy elder gave a cold snort and pointed at the chief guard who had just called Fang Yuan a person good at creating disturbances. You gave an outrageous comment on your master. You were relieved of your position. After a while, the elder said to the others, after half a month, there will be a re-examination to determine the new chief. The other guards immediately had eyes that shone, their hearts pumping. With enthusiasm, the position of chief of the guard. Every month I'll be able to receive half. A primeval stone more. To be able to become the chief is to become a man above men. Aside from the masters, I dare to see who else would show displeasure at me. If I became the chief, how cool that would be. All right, what are you all pestling here for? Get downstairs and wait for the battle to end, then sweep the field. The elder roared. Yes, yes, yes. Your subordinate takes his leave. The guards left in reverence and awe as they went down. One of the guards, on the stairs lost his footing and fell down. Immediately there was a series of sounds implicating a chain of people falling and knocking down. However under the academy elders' power and influence, the guards reddened their faces and endured in suffering, not letting out a single noise. HMPH. Those minions are just like dogs. Every once in a while they'd get this itch to misbehave, you'd have to smack them so that they know fear and respect, then just throw some small victories and bones to them, letting them fight amongst themselves like dogs, letting them compete amongst themselves to serve my clan with their life, to hold a stick in one hand and a carrot in another, this is the unique way of the upper echelons. As the academy elder heard the quiet movements below, he sneered in his heart, and turned his head, looking through the window and at the school gates. A fresh group of ten or so students were on the ground at the entrance. Fang, Yuan stood proudly, and there were three young girls back to back. Huddling at a side opposite him. You, you you better not come over. If you come over, we'll shoot you with the moonblade. In their hands were a layer of blue radiance. It seemed like they were. Compelled to the point they would actually mobilize their primeval essence. And use the moonlight GU. 
Fang Yuan's body was still that of a normal 15-year-old boy, and if they attacked him with the moon blade it would not do him any good. Yet he was not afraid, instead he sneered at them and walked step by step towards the girls. You girls have pretty big guts huh, have you forgotten the rules of the school? Inside the academy fighting using GU is forbidden, or else the penalty will be expulsion. If you girls want to be expelled, then just do it. This, the young girls hesitated. Indeed there is such a rule. The blue light in their hands faded away. Fang Yuan's eyes flashed as he caught this opening and dashed forward, his palms waving in the air, cutting down two of them without a shadow of doubt. Being the last one, her morale dropped and her knees turned weak. She collapsed to the ground crying heavily, begging Fang Yuan, don't you come over Fang Yuan, please let me go. Fang Yuan stared down at the young girl with a condescending look, his cold voice sounding in her ears. A piece of primeval stone. The girl's body fluttered and she quickly opened her money pouch. Realization taking hold of her. She took out three to four pieces of primeval stones and held them in her palm, stretching out her hand to Fang Yuan. Don't hit me, I'll give them all to you, I'll give all my stones to you. Fang Yuan was expressionless as he slowly reached out with his right hand. He lifted his forefinger and thumb, gently pinching at a piece of primeval stone from the girl's hand. The young maiden could not stop trembling. Fang Yuan's hand had a youth's pale and slender form, but in her eyes his hand was horrifying like a ferocious claw of terror. I've said it earlier, I will only take one piece of primeval stone. Fang Yuan paused for a moment, then he said plainly, you may leave. The girl stared at Fang Yuan for a good while, then she finally got up. But, her limbs were still weak and she could not properly stand. Her heart was, already full of fear towards Fang Yuan, and she was afraid to the point that, she could not muster a single breath of energy. When the academy elder saw this, he could not help but shake his head. One of his reasons to remain an observer was to borrow the chance to see each of the students' respective fighting talents. This girl who collapsed on the ground was only a C-grade talent, but with this kind of mentality she could only become a logistics GU master. She would be able to be productive in the clan, but there was no expectation for her to be on the battlefield. As for this Fang Yuan, the academy elder rubbed his chin, his eyes squinting with a flash of light. He felt that Fang Yuan was very interesting. Not only did Fang Yuan possess fighting talent, he even had a sense of propriety. To just extort for a piece of primeval stone was not beyond the bounds in the elder's heart. But if Fang Yuan wanted to blackmail for two pieces, that would be too much and he would need to intervene. The academy's allowance was originally three pieces. To have a piece taken away would still be considered harmless. But if he extorted away to stones, then what is the point of giving out subsidy? He might as well just give everything to Fang Yuan. Very quickly the last group of students arrived. There were only five people, and among them was Fang Yuan's twin younger brother. Big brother, how could you be like this? You were too bold to actually beat up your classmates at the gates and take away their primeval stones. G Yu, Yu Fang Zheng was wide-eyed as he looked at the scene. He could not believe what he was seeing before him, I advise you to quickly go to the Academy Elder and take the initiative to admit your mistake, or else with you making such a huge matter, it's not a joke, you might actually get expelled. Fang Yuan laughed and said, you're right. Fang Zheng heaved a relieved sigh, seeing that his older brother hadn't gone insane and could still be persuaded, that was good. But very quickly he heard Fang Yuan say again, every one of you, a piece of primeval stone. What? Fang Zheng opened his mouth wide with surprise, even I need to pay up. My dearest little brother, of course you can choose not to. Fang Yuan's tone was very gentle, but you will end up just like them, he said and pointed at those fallen on the ground. Some of them had fainted, and some of them were moaning in pain. Even his own younger brother isn't spared. This Fang Yuan is crazy, he's too vicious. We cannot defeat him, a wise man does not fight when the odds are against him. 
we better hand it over and overcome the trouble. That's right, we'll just pass up the primeval stone first. It's just one piece. Anyway, when we go back and report to the teachers, he'll be getting it. With the lesson drawn from their classmates' mistakes, the remaining youngsters obediently accepted Fang Yuan's blackmail with gazes of defiance. Hold up. Just as they were about to leave, Fang Yuan shouted at them to halt. Fang Yuan, are you actually going to go back on your word? The youths started to become nervous. Fang Yuan faced the teenagers on the ground, gently sighing. Do you guys really think that I would squat down and search through their bodies one by one? The youth stared blankly, then they were hit by realization one by one. Each of them turned red in the face and stood at the spot hesitatingly. Fang Yuan stared at them, narrowing his eyes. There was a flash of cold light in his gaze, immediately the five youngsters felt their heart beating. Fast, their scalps going numb at the same time. All right, Fang Yuan, we understand your meaning. We'll just help you this once. Under Fang Yuan's despotic aura, they could only lower their heads and search through each of the young teens' money pouches on the ground, taking out a piece of primeval stone from each bag. Then they brought it together and passed it to Fang Yuan. The entire class had a total of 57 people. By extorting a piece of Primeval stone from every single one of them, Fang Yuan held 56 pieces. He originally had 20 pieces, but he spent 10 to buy a few jars of green bamboo wine. Adding the number of primeval stones from his own allowance and reward, the total number of primeval stones he had in his possession amounted up to 79 pieces. This sort of capital-free business that consists of extortion and plundering is really the most profitable business. Fang Yuan pocketed his money, pouch that had suddenly expanded greatly into his bosom and strutted away, leaving behind a floor full of teenagers, lying like corpses on the ground. And a few teenagers, Fang Zheng among them, blankly stared after Fang Yuan's gradually disappearing shadow. Get out there fast, all of you, faster. Arrange the little masters properly. The treatment GU master, where is he, ask him to come over fast. The guards were yelling as they all rushed forward, falling over each other. In their eagerness to present themselves, they willingly gave their all for the small position of being the chief guard. Authors note, there were some problems with the layout yesterday, but they've been corrected now. Really sorry about it, I gave you all obstacles to your reading. Hum, with my new book on the list of new books, I'm really happy, this is all due to all my new friends' support. I've seen the power of you all, the popularity is also rising. Due to the uniqueness of the book style, I hope those of the same type will support it. This book will be written all the way, and will have stable updates. All my books have always been finished, the aspect of integrity in this matter is full drop. TN, translating author notes to let you understand him more. And like he said, he claims to have finished all his books. At the time of this chapter I'm translating now, Reverend Insanity hasn't ended yet. But the author has said, he plans to end it this year, after four to five years of writing this novel. And sorry, for the delay, while I do plan to push out a chapter every two to three days, I try not to release on the third day, haha. Ha. Chapter 29, Unscrupulous 1. Chapter 29 Unscrupulous 1. Put all the wine jars under the bed. Fang Yuan pointed and directed four workers from the inn. In each man's hands were jars of green bamboo wine. Right after Fang Yuan successfully extorted his peers, he went to the inn and bought twenty jars in one go. Each jar cost two pieces of primeval stones, and Fang Yuan pumped in forty primeval stones for the sake of the liquor worm. The money pouch that had bulged out not long ago inflated by half in an instant, leaving 39 pieces of primeval stones behind. However it was worth the money, these wine would be able to support the liquor worm for a long time. All right, the workers immediately replied. They would not dare to show any hint of disrespect to a GU master. Add on to the fact that Fang Yuan had bought so much wine, he could be said as the inn's big customer. With just a casual word before the innkeeper, the workers were able to easily put 
down their current activities and workload. After the in-servants left, Fang Yuan closed the dormitory door and sat cross-legged on his bed. It was already nighttime. The stars and moon in the sky were bright, and the night breeze flowed with a hint of scented fragrance. There was no light in the room. Fang Yuan calmed his state of mind, letting his focus slip into the primeval sea. The waves of the primeval sea rose and fell, the seawater giving out green, copper-colored light. Every drop of seawater was the green copper, primeval essence that a rank 1 GU master specially had. The primeval sea took up 44% of the entire aperture, this was Fang Yuan's sea grade. Talent's limitation. The four walls of the aperture were a thin layer of white light, supporting and encasing the aperture. In the sky above the primeval sea there was nothing. The spring autumn cicada had already hidden itself away under Fang Yuan's command, restoring itself under a deep sleep. Floating on the primeval sea was a cute and chubby white liquor worm. It frisked about with its heart's content on the seawater, sometimes diving into the sea, other times shaking its head and tail, splashing and splattering water droplets around. Fang Yuan sent a thought through his mind, and the liquor worm immediately responded. It stopped playing and curled up into the shape of a rice dumpling, leisurely floating into the air. It rose up to the middle of the aperture and out of the green copper sea. Go! Fang Yuan mobilized a tenth of his primeval essence, transforming it into a narrow flow, thrusting it all into the liquor worm. The liquor worm had already been refined by him, so this time it did not resist. It took in the entire jet of primeval essence and absorbed everything into its body. Immediately the sea surface dropped by a small cut. The curled up liquor worm turned the primeval essence into a driving force and began to radiate out white light. Inside the soft light, an enshrouding mist of wine fumes were gradually produced, finally converging into a pale white wine mist. The wine mist was marvelous. It did not drift apart, instead enveloping. Around the liquor worm, rise. Fang Yuan gave a thought, transferring another 10% of his primeval essence. The green copper seawater dived into the wine mist, as the wine mist melted into the seawater, it gradually lessened, and eventually there was no trace of it left. As for that 10% of green copper primeval essence, it also lost its general volume and was left with 5%. However this 5% of primeval essence was even more condensed than before. The original primeval essence was a jade green, giving out a copper luster. Right now although this new primeval essence had the same copper luster, the green was a darker shade, it was pale green. Pale green colored primeval essence was the primeval essence that only a rank 1 middle stage GU master would have. The liquor worm's use was to condense the primeval essence and increase it by a small realm rank. A GU master had nine great realms, from the bottom, rank 1, rank 2, all the way to rank 9. Every great realm was split into four smaller realms, which were initial stage, middle stage, upper stage and peak stage. Fang Yuan was only a rank 1 initial stage GU master right now, but with the liquor worm's help he had 5% of a rank 1 middle stage GU master's primeval essence. If I want to condense out 5% of middle stage primeval essence I would need to use 20% of initial stage primeval essence. I want to convert all the 44% of my primeval C into middle stage primeval essence, so I'd need to Use around 180% of initial stage primeval essence. To reach this target as soon as possible, I'd need to borrow the help of primeval stones. As he thought of this, Fang Yuan opened his eyes and took out a complete primeval stone the size of a duck egg from his bag. The primeval stone was a sort of ellipsoidal shaped, translucent gray stone. As the natural essence inside it is consumed, its size would continue shrinking. His right hand slowly closed, the primeval stone tightly clenched in his palm. He absorbed the natural primeval essence inside the stone, continuously replenishing his own aperture. The level of the sea surface that had fallen in his aperture slowly began to rise. The primeval stone was meant to be used. Fang Yuan was not stingy by one bit, and he would not save it up. 
I do not have someone to back me up, and I do not have support from friends and family, thus I can only rely on extortion and plundering. Today was just the first time, but after this, every seven days when the academy gives out the school allowance, I will continue blocking the academy. Gates. How could robbing and blackmailing once satisfy Fang Yuan's appetite? In a GU master's cultivation, the primeval stone was the most scarce thing. As for the consequences of his plundering actions, Fang Yuan was not the least worried. This world was not the same as Earth. On Earth, schools would always prohibit fights to mainly stabilize harmony. But in this world, fighting was the main theme. No matter a GU master or common mortal, they would fight for survival. Sometimes it would be a fight with a scary wild beast. Sometimes it would be a battle against the raging weather, and other times if could be a fight against other GU masters over resources. As a result, moderate fighting was instead encouraged and advocated by people, from young to old, from simple brawls to battles determining life and Death, this was the portrayal of most of the human lives here. This surface of this world was boundless. Just the southern border alone. That Fang Yuan stayed in now, it was bigger than seven to eight times the entire surface of Earth itself. The living environment here was hostile and cruel, so humans would often construct mountain villages in the form of clans, holding up together. Every now and then there would be waves of beasts, or perhaps extremely bad weather assaulting a village. The GU master would become the core force of a village's protection, and every year the situation of attrition would become more serious. Surviving requires men with strong fighting will. A clan needs battle GU. Masters, there is never too much. Moreover, Fang Yuan's attacks were within the proper limit. He never attacked the lower jaw, as this would easily cause the skull to fracture and cause the loss of a human life. He also never struck the back of the head. When fighting he did not use his fists or elbow, or even jabbing with his fingers, but he used his palm. The number of kicks he used could also be numbered. The students that fell were not heavily injured, at most they were lightly wounded. Fang Yuan was not bloodthirsty, he just treated killing as a type of means. Every time he acted, he would have a clear goal. Whatever the type of method, whichever would let him reach his goal the fastest, he would use it. In other words, he was unscrupulous in doing things. Ellipsis ellipsis. The clouds floated over, covering the moonlight. A shadow enveloped over the GUU village. The watchman banged on his clappers, prompting people to know that it was already deep in the night, be careful of fires, be on guard of beast. Assaults, as well as the possibility of foreign GU masters sneaking into the village. There were still a lot of lights in the village. In the Kai family branch home, GUU Kai Lian stayed in his study, the lights radiantly bright. This high authority old man spoke with a gentle tone, expressing sympathy as he asked his own grandson GUU Kai. Cheng, I heard you were beaten up by that Fang Yuan today. Giu Kai Cheng had a black right eye, and he angrily said, Yes. Grandpa, that Fang Yuan was just a petty C grade, yet he dared to act so arrogant. He blocked us all at the entrance, not caring about the friendly sentiments of his classmates, and he robbed us of our primeval stones. What's more, the academy just opened one eye and closed one eye over the incident. It was only when Fang Yuan strode away that the guards hurried. Over. Grandpa, this time you have to help me expel this angry resentment of mine. Instead Giu Kai Lian shook his head. This is between you and your juniors. You were blackmailed to lose a piece of primeval stone, and you did not suffer heavy injuries. Grandpa cannot act without any justifiable excuse. Even if you were heavily wounded, I will not stand up for you, do. You understand why? Giu Kai Cheng was stunned. He struggled to think, and after a long while he hesitatingly said, Grandpa, I think I understand your meaning. You are hoping that I will rely on my own strength to find my way, right? You only understood one aspect. Giu Kai Lian nodded his head and added, You must remember, you are not just an individual representative 
but you are the image on behalf of our Kai family branch. For many years, we have confronted the Mo family branch, and your every move will represent the hope of the future of the Kai family branch. Grandpa may help you in the shadows, but you must stand up and erect a self-reliant and strong image. Otherwise the elders who are supporting our family will not see the hope for our future, and they will abandon the Kai family. As he said this, Guu Kai Lian heaved a sigh. This is also why Grandpa helped you to cheat and let you impersonate a B-grade talent. Our Kai family needs a strong successor to hold on to those who are supporting us. Guu Kai Cheng was then enlightened. Grandpa, I understand now. Guu Kai Lian shook his head. Just understanding won't do any good. You must work hard. Fang Yuan is just small trouble, next up you must. Study hard and train diligently on your basic martial arts and get your dignity back. At the same time do not forget to work hard on cultivating. Promoting to middle stage as soon as possible. The best you can do is to win the position of class monitor, this will be great honor and a kind of help. To our Kai family. All right, Grandpa. Guu Kai Cheng replied loudly. Ha ha ha, this spirit is how the heir to our Kai branch should be like. Grandson, you must work hard, I will do my best to help you. One, unscrupulous, having or showing no moral principles, not honest or fair, unethical, immoral, shameless, will go through any means necessary to achieve or do something. 244% formerly known as 4x4 or 4x4. TN, that's final, if anything I am clear about the measurements of the aperture sizes now, it's all percent, this was confirmed by Chinese readers. So, if you remember all that, 4x4 four four feet, 5x6 feet, 9x8 feet or 4x4 four four fifths by 6 ninths x8. It's 44%, 56%, 98%. Really sorry for any confusion regarding these measurements and aperture. Primeval Sea Sizes. Chapter 30. Fang Yuan, you're robbing again. Chapter 30. Fang Yuan, you're robbing again. Almost at the same moment, in another place. Honorary father and mother, that was pretty much how things went. Fang. Zheng stood straight, his tone respectful and cautious. In the hall, Fang Yuan's uncle Ji Yu Yu Dong too as well as his aunt sat in. Their wide back huge chairs frowning. Aunt gnawed her teeth. While. Feeling injustice for Fang Zheng and at the same time gloating over the matter, she said, Fang Yuan that bastard son, him extorting others is one thing, but to think he would not even spare his own younger brother. How, heartless and unfeeling, however this time with such a huge crime, I expect, he will be expelled from the academy soon after this. That's enough, you should talk less. Uncle heaved in a deep sigh and told. Fang Zheng, you only lost a piece of primeval stone, don't worry. Go to the treasury and pick up a stone, there is no business for you here now. You must go and work hard in cultivating. With your agreed talent, becoming the first middle stage GU master is a huge possibility. Do not waste the talent that heaven blessed you with, for your mother and I look forward to seeing you become number one. Yes, father and mother. Your son takes his leave. Fang Zheng left with a heart full of trepidation. He secretly thought, Big Brother robbed all the students when he blocked the academy gates today. He created such a terrible aftermath, I'm afraid he might really be expelled. If that happens, should I plead on his case for him? Two voices appeared in his head. A voice said, No need to plead for him, he even robbed your primeval stone away although you were his own young brother. Even if he was expelled, that was his own fault. If heaven commits a sin, it can be forgiven, but if one commits a sin himself, he deserves to die. Another voice said, but he is your very own older brother, he shares a similar face, his blood thicker than water. All right, even if you do not acknowledge him, you still must plead his case. If you do not do so, how will the outsiders look at you? I'm afraid they might think of you as a heartless and ungrateful person. Seeing Fang Zheng leave the hall, Aunt could not help but exclaim happily. Husband, we cut off Fang Yuan's living expenses. This little bastard finally couldn't stand it and went off committing a huge error.
to actually dare to block the academy gates and fight in public, not to mention extortion, this is the equivalent of provoking the academy elder. I dare say, the time for him getting expelled is very near. However uncle shook his head. You think too simply of things. Fang Yuan will not be expelled, in fact there may not be any punishment. Why? Aunt was puzzled. Uncle snorted. Brawls and fights are encouraged as long as there are no heavy consequences. Did any students die in this fight? No. Aunt refused to comply. Husband, how would you know there weren't any casualties? There are always accidents happening from fighting. Uncle closed his eyes, leaning against the back of his chair. Woman, you are really naive. Do you really think the Academy Elder is just for show? When did the guards start acting? They came out at the last moment, this means that the entire scene was under control. If someone was heavily injured, they would have rushed over a long time ago, not at the last moments. You are not a GU master, so you won't understand. The academy does not forbid brawls among the students, but in fact they maintain an encouraging attitude towards it. The more brawls there are, the more helpful it would be for battles. Some students can even create strong bonds through fighting. The elders will not pursue this. It is already a routine. If anyone wants to take action on behalf of their offspring, it would break the rules. Aunt was dumbfounded as she heard this, and she replied in an unsatisfied manner, then nothing's going to happen to Fang Yuan who robbed away such a huge amount of primeval stones. He's just going to be let go like that. With such a big number of primeval stones, it will bring a lot of help to his cultivation. Uncle opened his eyes, his face cloudy. What else can we do? Are you expecting me to go over by myself and snatch away all his primeval stones? However this matter is not something that we cannot exploit. For Fang, you want to rob and extort even his own brother Fang Zheng, this is the key to his fall. Fang Zheng is an A-grade talent, he will definitely be stronger than Fang Yuan one day. We will use this matter to divide and sow discord in Fang Zheng. We'll lead Fang Zheng away from Fang Yuan for our own use. And with that, three days passed. The disturbance that Fang Yuan caused from his robbery and extortion did not spread nor grow bigger, but instead it gradually died down. No elders broke the rules and came to find trouble for Fang Yuan, and the Academy elder naturally closed one eye and opened one eye, acting like nothing happened. Although in this period of time, there were two to three youngsters who refused to accept the truth of having their primeval stones taken, and they challenged Fang Yuan. But after Fang Yuan knocked them down easily, everyone became aware that if they did not train hard in martial arts, they would never beat Fang Yuan. Among these teenagers, a burst of mass fervor towards training hard in martial arts erupted. The martial arts instructor was overjoyed, he had never seen a batch of students so enthusiastic and dedicated towards martial arts. Before this, when he was teaching, the students were all lacking in interest, yawning all day. But right now they would constantly seek advice with eyes brimming, with radiating vigor. The academy elder specially came over to inquire about his situation. The martial arts instructor had an excited tone as he reported, the students have been showing unexpected enthusiasm, and this change is too great. Only one student among them called Fang Yuan remains as lazy as ever. The academy elder laughed and patted his shoulders. He said, this student that you speak of is the cause of the other student's transformation. The martial arts instructor was puzzled. But of course the changes were more than this. After the incident, Fang Yuan had undoubtedly become the public enemy of the entire student batch. Everyone was hostile towards him and he was isolated. No longer did anyone speak to him, and no one greeted him. The youths exerted full force, training their basic techniques privately. With their parents and elders' encouragement and inspirations, they had decided that they must reclaim their honor by their own hands. Under the calm surface, the undercurrent was surging. Another four days passed. The academy elder passed out the primeval stone allowance once more, and the time for Fang Yuan to act came again. Fang Yuan, once wasn't enough for you, you still want to rob away our 
Primeval stones again. The students were shocked and angry as Fang Yuan blocked them at the gates once more. Fang Yuan stood in the middle of the entrance, his hands behind his back. His expression cold and tone flat. A piece of primeval stone per person and you'll be spared of physical pain. Fang Yuan, your bullying is excessive. I want to challenge you. G U U. Mo Bei roared angrily, coming out first. Oh, Fang Yuan raised his eyebrows slightly. Mo Bei raised his fists and rushed forward. After a few rounds, he fainted. Onto the ground. Mo Bei, you're too useless. Watch me. Ji Yu Yu Kai Cheng yelled loudly and dashed towards Fang Yuan. After a transition of attack and defense, he joined after Mo Bei's footsteps. Fang Yuan's battle experience was 10,000 times more than theirs. Although he only started cultivating, every force inflicted was used properly. Meanwhile, this bunch of students had only started their journey. If they came at him together, they might still be able to bring him a little trouble. But with them coming up to challenge him one by one, it was more relaxing than the first time of extortion. After 15 minutes, Fang Yuan leisurely walked away with a bulging money bag, leaving behind a floor full of youths. Some of them were lying motionless, and some were holding their bellies or clutching their crotch as they moaned and howled. Brothers, time to come up and sweep the field fast. The guards shouted, and all rushed over. T.N. Just a notice, all measurements regarding aperture sizes in all the S. And especially the rate of recovery in Chapter 10 have been changed to percent as. How it should have been. Chapter 31, Fang Yuan. You're in huge trouble. Chapter 31, Fang Yuan. You're in huge trouble. I've trained hard in basic martial arts for seven consecutive days, but two. Think I only managed to endure two strikes from Fang Yuan and lost consciousness afterwards. Shame, unforgivable shame. G U U Mo Bei exclaimed, full of anguish and regret. In the family garden, he faced the wooden puppet, unleashing punches and kicks that were resulting in resounding echoes. Suddenly, he heard a laughing voice. Little brother, do you have deep hatred for the puppet? Why the great resentment? Upon hearing this familiar voice, G U U Mo Bei relaxed and stopped his attacks. He turned his head. Sister, you're back. Aha, uh -huh, the family council sent me out for an investigation mission which lasted more than 10 days, Ji Yu Mo Yan laughingly replied. She was Mo Bei's blood-related sister, a rank 2 middle stage Ji Yu master. But soon, her face turned grim, her eyes sharply gazing at Mo Bei. Brother, what's the matter with those bruises on your face? Who bullied? You. Ah, it's nothing. I accidentally tripped and fell. A hint of panic flashed across Mo Bei's face as he came up with an excuse. He did not wish for his sister to know of such an embarrassing event. The truth of the Mo family's future heir and the family head, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen's beloved grandson, consecutively knocked out twice in combat. But the fortunate thing was that he wasn't the only unlucky one. The others had suffered as well. Oh, you have to be more careful in that case. As for your combat training, this won't do. You do not have a gut that enhances your defense right now. So use thick towels to cover yourself. This will protect your limbs from getting hurt. G U U Mo Yan instructed before leaving. Hello, young miss. Good morning, young miss. Young miss is back. Your servant greets you, miss. G U U Mo Yan hastily walked with a cold demeanor, and the servants she met on the way bowed and paid respects to her without fail. She walked to the study room. Without any warning, Mo Yan pushed the door and entered through. Inside the room, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen was practicing his calligraphy art with his back facing her. Your back, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen asked directly without turning his body. After investigating for half a month, what is the situation with the wolves? Den, how did you know it's me, grandfather? Mo Yan gasped, slightly taken. A back. HMPH, in the entire family, you're the only person that dares to enter my room without even knocking the door once. Who else can it be besides you? My beloved granddaughter, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen reprimanded, although his face showed traces of concern and warmth, and he looked at Mo Yan with a smile. Mo Yan pouted. When it comes to doting, you actually adore little brother. 
more. However, since he's the future family head, you are more strict on him so others cannot sense your concern for him. After a while, she asked, Grandfather, little brother was beaten up. I asked him and he lied about the situation, so I had no choice but to ask you. Ji Yu Mo Chen's face turned serious. You have not answered my question. He put down his brush and sat down. Mo Yan reluctantly reported, the wolf's den is almost full, so according to the current rate of breeding speed, although there won't be an outbreak. This year, there will definitely be a wolf tied next year at our mountain village. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen inquired again, generally there's an outbreak every three years, so this is no surprise. However, within that horde, how many thunder crown wolves are there? Around three. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen nodded, feeling assured. The thunder crown wolves were the head of the pack and were the most troublesome to deal with. During an outbreak, Three wasn't a large number since Qingmao Mountain had three clan villages. Each village could handle one wolf, and the pressure of the outbreak would be greatly reduced. Grandfather, you have not told me about my little brother's matter yet. Mo Yan pursued again. I suppose there's no matter telling you, but he was beaten up. The first time was seven days ago, and the second time happened today. It happened in front of the school gates, and he was beaten until he sprawled on the ground and fainted on both occasions. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen laughingly replied, Who has the guts to knock out my little brother? Mo Yan stared, wide-eyed. He's a classmate of Mo Bei called Fang Yuan. He fights really well, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen sniggered. Ji Yu Yu Mo Yan's eyes grew larger, and she was perplexed as she replied, Grandfather, what are you saying? He is your own blood related. Grandson. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen stared deeply at his granddaughter and spoke. Meaningfully, Mo Yan my dear, you are a girl so you may not understand. Defeat and humiliation only serve as fuel for improvement. Without failure, one can never develop and grow into a true, mature man. Mo Bei was defeated, and that is his own failure. Once he wakes up, he will ask fighting techniques from the teachers. This is a sort of improvement, and this improvement comes from Fang Yuan, who beat him into realization. As his sister, if you really care and want to protect your brother, you should not interfere with his growth. Fang Yuan is just a boy with C-grade talent while Mo Bei has B-grade talent. With a supporting him, he will step over Fang Yuan and drive him into the ground eventually. Leave this opponent to Mo Bei. In a woman's life, she needs a family and a lover. But for a man, a family is not a necessity, yet what he cannot lack is a rival. Do not find trouble with Fang Yuan, do you hear me? This is a matter between the youths. If you get involved, this will be perceived as bullying. Breaking the rules like that will cause our Mo family to be looked down upon. Mo Yan gasped wordlessly, but under Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen's gaze, she finally lowered her head. Yes grandfather, your granddaughter understands. She staggered out of the study room, but even Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen did not. Notice, her eyes shined ominously. Grandfather, this is your way of loving your grandson. And I, Mo Yan, have my own methods. Mo Yan's heart already had different plans. Ellipsis ellipsis. In the inn's dining room, several tables were occupied and people were having dinner, thus the environment was rather lively. One or two waiters served dishes rapidly, traversing between tables. Fang Yuan sat at the table near the windows. He ordered a few dishes and ate while gazing out of the window. Looking out, the sunset looked like fire, slowly burning away. Half of the sun had already set, it longingly gazed at the lands, its afterglow. Being the sun's reluctance, far up the mountains, it was already veiled by the seeping nightfall. The Streets nearby were gathered full of people who were going home. Some of them were barefooted, some muddy farmers, some of them herb pickers. Some hunters holding mountain pheasants, wild boars and other animals. And some were GU masters. They wore a blue uniform, looking clean and spirited, a headband and a waist belt completing their appearance. The belt had a specific function, for rank 1 GU masters it was a blue belt. There was a bronze plate at the front, and the number, one, could be seen. 
For rank 2 GU masters, their belt was red, and the steel plate in the middle showed the number, 2. Sitting at the side of the window, Fang Yuan observed that there were 6 to 7 rank 1 GU masters, and they were mostly young men. There was also a rank 2 GU master, a middle-aged man. As for rank 3 GU masters, they were the family elders. And fourth rank would be the clan head, the lord of a village. Rank 5 GU masters were hardly seen, and in the entire history of the GU. U clan, there were only the first generation clan head and the fourth generation clan head who had reached this level. Actually, finding out a clan's strength is very simple. Just find a spot in the village, settle down and observe the people for a few hours, see how many rank 1 and rank 2 GU masters there are and you'll be able to see the clan's strength and wealth. Fang Yuan came to a conclusion with his accumulated knowledge of 500 years. Using the GUU village as an example, there were around 20 people walking on the streets, and six were GU masters. In these six, there was a 50% chance of having one rank 2 GU master. With this strength and capital, the GUU clan managed to monopolize one of the best resource locations in Qingmao Mountain. But the mountain was just a small corner in the entire area of the southern border. The GUU clan could only be considered as a middle low tier clan. I have only started my cultivation, and with rank 1 initial stage, I do not even have the qualification to roam the southern border. I need at least rank 3 cultivation to be able to further roam the world, Fang Yuan sighed as he consumed his dinner. Qingmao Mountain was too small, it could not contain his ambitions, and he was determined to leave. Ha ha, Guu Fang Yuan, I have finally found you. At this moment, a middle-aged man laughed deviously as he approached. Hum. Fang Yuan turned slightly to see a man with a yellowish skin tone and hanging brows, but he had a huge body size and developed muscles. He strode several steps to Fang Yuan with his arms folded and proudly stared at the youth who was still consuming his dinner with a hint of hostility. Fang Yuan, you've gotten yourself into huge trouble, do you know that? Ha ha ha, you have dared to hit our young master of the Mo family, and now our young miss is here to settle the score with you. The middle-aged man snickered continuously. He constantly stared and sized up Fang Yuan, faintly emitting a threatening aura. This chapter was brought to you by Chibigan and Skyfaro. Credits to Chibigan for helping with the translations. Chapter 32 Making Fun Chapter 32 Making Fun If a normal person was stared at by this middle-aged man, they would have probably developed fear in their hearts already. However, Fang Yuan lost interest after looking at him for a second and continued focusing on his meal, treating this man as if he were invisible. Who's that guy? He wears the clothing of a family servant, and he is not a GU master. Why would he dare to question young master Fang Yuan? An employee wondered as he hid at the corner of the inn, sensing that the situation may turn ugly. HMPH, he's like a fox assuming a tiger's ferocity. By using the Mo family as his backing, this servant man dares to clamor at a GU master. If it were any other mortal man, they wouldn't have the guts to do this, someone. Beside the employee replied in disdain. Even so, as a mere mortal he has the guts to cause a ruckus towards a GU. Master. Tisk tisk, this kind of experience must feel really great. TCH, you shouldn't think that a GU master is always high and mighty. Young master Fang Yuan is merely a rank 1 initial stage GU master, and he has just managed to refine his vital GU. If they were to fight now, he may not be the opponent of this muscular and strong mortal. Sigh, let's just hope that when they fight later, they will spare our inn and the furniture. The employees chattered back and forth, but none dared to take a step forward, only staring from a distance. A, you still have the mood to continue eating. Seeing as how he did not manage to intimidate or scare Fang Yuan, the muscular middle-aged man had a hint of doubt in his eyes. Do you think I'm lying to you? There are already people reporting to young miss and she will be here shortly. Do not attempt to run away young lad, because you won't be able to get away. 
My job here is to make sure you stay put. There will be much suffering for you. Later, Fang Yuan paid no heed to the man and continued eating his meal. The middle-aged servant frowned as he did not see a hint of panic or shock. From Fang Yuan, this made him feel ignored and his pride was severely offended. He had been a servant in the Mo family for over a decade, and he had acquired the trust of his master. Over a long period, he would naturally come to learn about the details of GU masters. Rank 1 GU masters mostly relied on their physical combat skills. In battle, a GU Wormsworth was attributed more to its deterrence factor than as a fighting force. He knew especially that for a young GU master like Fang Yuan who had just started cultivating, his physical strength was far inferior when compared to a grown man. If it came down to close combat, he who had trained for many years would gain the upper advantage. At the same time, Fang Yuan had supposedly only refined the moonlight. Gu, so at the max, he would only be able to shoot out several moonblades. The middle-aged man was used as a sparring partner from a long time ago. So he knew deeply that if a rank 1 initial stage Gu master were to use his primeval essence to unleash the moonblade, the most it could do was cut several palm-sized wounds and cause limited damage if it managed to hit the human body. Additionally, the man had the backing of the Mo family, so when he confronted Fang Yuan he had no fear, and was wholeheartedly trying to show off his worth to his masters so that he could be rewarded and deemed more useful to the family. Young lad, you sure are courageous huh? The middle-aged man's tone was turning unfriendly as he folded up his sleeves, revealing his well-toned and muscular forearms. His two arms were large and full of scars. The forearms had thick protruding veins and were even thicker than Fang Yuan's legs. The inn employees watched in fear and several customers were already getting up, paying the bills and leaving this land of conflict. Fang Yuan has been found. Suddenly, the door emitted a proud, loud, female voice. Mo Yan strode forward in big steps and entered the inn. Behind her were numerous family servants. Her body figure was decent, slightly tall and had the proper curves. But a long face like a horse's, an inherited gene from the Mo bloodline, caused her looks to be greatly affected, and thus she was only a middle upper tier. Beauty. However, she wore a dark blue uniform, and a red belt, affixed with a square steel plate, tied around her waistline. The steel plate was engraved with a two. Additionally, she had just returned from after a clan mission, so there was still lingering traces of the hardship that she had just gone through. These added up to create a field of pressure and threat that was omitted to her surroundings. Thus, once she stepped into the inn, the entire place went silent under her aura. Your servant greets you, young miss. The middle-aged man changed his attitude completely upon seeing Mo Yan. He tried to smile charmingly and he bent his body as he walked a few steps and knelt on the floor, greeting Mo Yan. Upon seeing this change in behavior, the workers in the inn could only stare in shock with their mouths wide open. The tall and muscular figure, as opposed to his humble groveling attitude, was a great mismatch, and was seemingly amusing. But the employees of the inn did not laugh as his behavior only greatly showed off Mo Yan's imposing pressure and status. Some of the inn workers could not help but worry for Fang Yuan as he was their major customer. If something were to happen to him and made him unable to patronize the inn any further, it would be a huge loss. More of them were secretly praying for Fang Yuan to surrender. If a fight really broke out and destroyed the inn's property, that would be worse. Mo Yan did not even take a look at the groveling Gao Wan, her eyes were fixed on Fang Yuan. She took a few steps forward and demanded in a fierce tone, So you are Fang Yuan. You seem to be having a good meal. He he he. Have you ever had a knuckle sandwich? I'll give you a taste of it, it might be even more delicious. Even though she said that, Mo Yan did not make a move. Fang Yuan's actions were too calm. It was strange. Did he have any secret backers that were protecting him? But it shouldn't be so, I've checked before coming. This Fang Yuan only has an uncle and aunt that dislike him, while both his parents are deceased. 
and he even got chased out of the house by his uncle and aunt. In addition, he only has C-ranked talent, so how could such a weak young man have any sort of background, Mo Yan thought in her mind. Regardless of this, the situation was still too peculiar. She had to test and probe further. Fang Yuan laughed and squinted at Mo Yan, saying, Who told you I was Guu Fang Yuan? Mo Yan was momentarily stunned, then she took a look at Gao Wan. He had just stood up, but upon seeing this he immediately knelt back down. With sweat pouring out of his forehead, he stammered and could not give a coherent reply, Master, your servant, your servant. They had a drawing of Fang Yuan, but they did not know that Fang Yuan and Fang Zheng were twins that looked almost identical. No wonder this young man looked like he had no fear. He is actually Fang. Jung and not Fang Yuan. Mo Yan's servants guessed in their minds. Fang Yuan cannot be compared to Fang Jung. The former is merely a C. Ranked loner with no background. The latter however has a ranked talent. And was pulled into the clan head's faction at the awakening ceremony and. As long as he grows smoothly, he has a bright future ahead. Mo Yan did not get proper a reply from Gao Wan, causing her to be even more hesitant. At this point, the only ones who knew Fang Yuan's identity were the inn employees. However, they could not afford to offend either parties so they only kept their mouths shut. Fang Yuan was satiated from his meal. He stood up and glanced lightly at Mo Yan, you want to find Fang Yuan? Come with me, I'll bring you to the school hostel to look for him. If the person in front of me is Fang Zheng, I would not want to offend him. However, even if he is really Fang Yuan, I will follow him closely on this trip so I have no fear of him impersonating Fang Zheng. In an instant, Mo Yan made up her mind. All right, I will go together with you to the school hostel. After you, Mo Yan turned her body to make space for Fang Yuan, stretching out her arm and indicating for Fang Yuan to take the lead. Fang Yuan laughed nonchalantly and strode forth. Mo Yan followed closely behind with her servants trailing at the back. So close, they're finally gone. Even if they start fighting, it is none of our inn's business anymore. The employees that were left behind all sighed in relief as they patted their chests. A group of people approached the school hostel. Halt. Stop right there. The school hostel only allows our clan's GU masters to enter and leave. The two guards at the door stopped Fang Yuan, Mo Yan, and her gang. Insolent. Do you not recognize who I am? How dare you stop me? Mo. Yan stared at the two and screamed. We dare not. The two guards hurriedly gestured. Young Miss Mo Yan, this guard holds you in high regards. However the clan rules are absolute, so how about this? You can bring one servant in. This is the most we can do for you. An elderly guard politely responded. Mo Yan clicked her tongue. Her heart was full of dissatisfaction, yet in the presence of the clan rules, she did not dare to break them. The Mo family was prosperous, and thus they had many enemies. Do not forget that aside from the Mo family branch, there was also the Kai family to contend with. Apart from the Kai family, the clan head's faction also wanted to get a hold on the Mo family. All of you stay behind. Gao Wan will follow me. Thinking about it, Mo Yan gave her orders. Gao Wan immediately held his chest up high with a look of joy on his face. Thank you, young miss for the opportunity. Let's go, junior. Mo Yan smiled at Fang Yuan with a questioning look. Fang Yuan remained unfazed as he led them in. He reached the dormitory. Door, opened the lock and pushed the door open. He then took a step into the room and stopped. Within the room, there was nothing extra. It was all simple furniture, and there was no one else. Mo Yan stood at the doorstep, took a look inside and her face turned grim. Junior, you better explain yourself well, there is no one in the room. Fang Yuan smiled faintly, aren't I someone? Mo Yan stared at Fang Yuan, a glint flashing in her eyes as she suddenly seemed to have understood. I am looking for Ji Yu, Yu, Fang, Yuan. Fang Yuan snickered, you know, I never said that I wasn't Ji Yu Yu Fang. Yuan. T.N. Here's a special double chapter release for your pleasure. Happy. Weekend. The will come in two days as per normal. 
This chapter was brought to you by Chibigan and Skyfaro. Credits to Chibigan for helping with the translations. Donations will be opened up in the, and I wish you all well. Thanks for all the support so far. Chapter 33, Go Ahead and Scold. Away. Chapter 33 Go Ahead and Scold Away. Hum. Mo Yan frowned, then her rage burst forth almost instantly as she suddenly understood that she had been fooled by Fang Yuan. You were tremendously brave to even consider lying to me. While speaking, she stretched out her right hand to grab hold of Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan stood firmly on the spot. He raised his head and laughed, Mo. Yan, you better think this through. Mo Yan stopped her actions. While she still stood right outside the door, her outstretched hand paused in midair and her face showed a sign of hesitation and resentment. Within the family, there were relevant rules. Students in the dormitories were protected, and any other person would not be allowed to intrude upon the hostel to capture the students. Mo Yan only wished to teach Fang Yuan a lesson and let him bear a taste of suffering. She definitely did not want to risk getting punished for breaking the rules. If it's only me who broke the rules, that would still be fine. However, if this would affect the family and even grandfather's honor, thinking of this, Mo Yan reluctantly withdrew her arm. She looked at Fang Yuan who was inside the house with her bloodshot eyes. If her death stare could be converted into fire, it would burn Fang Yuan to ashes in a second. I never lied to you. I said I would bring you to Fang Yuan, and now you have already found him here. It seems you have something to say to me. Fang Yuan smiled faintly with his arms behind his back, ignoring the pressure of a rank 2 GU master, fearlessly making eye contact with Mo Yan's furious gaze. He was just a step apart from Mo Yan. One stood within the house, and one stayed outside. But this same distance had also become as far as the east was from the west. He he he, oh Fang Yuan, you sure have studied the clan rules well and thoroughly. Mo Yan, suppressing her anger, said with a sinister smile. She added, unfortunately for you, even while relying on the rules, all it will do for you is to stall for time. There is no way you are staying in the dormitories forever. I'll see how long you can stand hiding in there. Fang Yuan laughed refreshingly and looked at Mo Yan with disdain. Then, all the more I want to see how long you can disturb me. Ah, it is already late. I have a bed to sleep in, but what about you? If I do not show up for class tomorrow and the elders come to investigate, what do you think I will say? You, Mo Yan flew into a rage, her fingers pointing at Fang Yuan, barely restraining herself, do you really think I wouldn't dare come in and take you down, squeak. Fang Yuan opened the doors of the hostel wide open, his lips breaking into a grin, his eyes dark like the abyss and his tone full of confidence as if the situation was within his grasp. He challenged Mo Yan, then show me. He he he, Mo Yan calmed down instead upon seeing this. Her eyes squinted as she looked at Fang Yuan and she said, do you think I'd fall for your goading? Fang Yuan shrugged. He had already seen through Mo Yan's personality. If he had closed the door, or even half shut it, Mo Yan had at least a 50% probability of breaking into the house. But when he purposely opened it fully, it had instead made her more wary and calm as a result. Thus there was barely any chance of her forcing her way in anymore. 500 years of experience had already made him fully aware of the human nature and their weaknesses. He grandly turned around, exposing his back fully to Mo Yan. If Mo Yan struck now, she would definitely be able to capture him in one swift action. However, Mo Yan stayed still outside the door as if there was an invisible mountain blocking her way. Even after Fang Yuan sat in his bed, Mo Yan only stared at him in anger, gritting her teeth. But regardless of this, she did not make a move. This is the pathetic side of humans. Fang Yuan sat up and stared at Mo. Yan who was outside looking like a fool, thinking to himself, at times, the things preventing people from taking action is not physical difficulty, but instead it is the restrictions they have placed on themselves. Subconsciously, when comparing cultivation levels, Fang Yuan was definitely not her match. At this point in time, 
but even with her rank 2 cultivation level, she could only stare at Fang Yuan and had no courage to make a move. Her distance from him was only a few steps away, and the door was wide open. With no hindrance, the only thing that was truly restricting her was none other than herself. Humanity sought for knowledge relentlessly to understand the world and to comprehend the rules, and ultimately to use them. If one is constantly bound by the rules, thus being restricted by the very knowledge they sought, that is the ultimate tragedy. Fang Yuan took a final look at Mo Yan, before closing his eyes and letting his consciousness sink into the primeval. See, this Fang Yuan dares to cultivate right in front of me. He is simply doing so as he pleases. Looking at this sight, Mo Yan felt a sense of frustration erupting from her chest, making her almost wanting to vomit blood. She badly wanted to go ahead and give him a few punches. But she knew she couldn't. Mo Yan suddenly felt a hint of regret. Standing outside the door, she felt the awkwardness of not being able to back down. She was indignant to give up now, but she would be devastatingly humiliated. She mobilized her servants with the intention to come and teach. Fang Yuan a lesson, yet in the end she was the one who ended up becoming the laughing stock, especially when there was a servant looking at her now. Damn it, Fang Yuan is way too uncooperative. He's too sly. Mo Yan furiously thought and started to provoke him with all sorts of insults, hoping to force him out of the room. Fang Yuan you brat, come out if you're a man. Fang Yuan, as a man you must own up to your own doings. Now you're being a coward hiding in that room, do you not feel ashamed of yourself? Stop pretending to ignore me, get out if you know what's good for you. You cowardly, spineless trash. Fang Yuan shut his ears and did not give a single response. After scolding for a while, instead of venting all her anger, she felt even more irritated. She was starting to feel like a clown or a shrew, blocking the door was just way too embarrassing. Ah, this is getting to the death of me. Mo Yan was about to go crazy, and she finally gave up on provoking Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan, you can hide now, but you can't hide from me forever. She furiously stomped the ground and left indignantly. Before leaving she gave a final order, Gao Wan, stand there and watch him. I do not believe he will not leave the house. Yes, master. The muscular servant, Gao Wan rapidly replied and sent Mo Yan off. Within his heart he was feeling bitter, the mountain was chilly and breezy at night. He would have to stand guard the entire time, catching a cold easily like this. It was not an easy task. Swish swoosh. Within the primeval sea, ebb and flow of the tides raged on. The green copper primeval essence gathered like water, forcing a tidal wave. Rolling about. Under Fang Yuan's mental guidance, the waves endlessly crashed towards the surrounding aperture walls. A rank 1 initial stage GU Master's aperture walls resembled a white barrier. At this time, with the green copper primeval essence crashing towards them, it produced shadows of light, creating an indescribable feeling. Time passed gradually and the level of the green copper primeval sea slowly declined. From the original 44%, it dropped to 12%. If a GU master wants to raise their cultivation level, they would have to expend their primeval essence to nurture the aperture. Initial stage GU masters have light barriers as their aperture walls, while middle stage GU masters have water barriers as their aperture walls and for upper stage. They have stone barriers. For me to cultivate from initial stage to middle, Stage, I will have to nurture the light barrier into water barrier aperture. Walls. From his 500 years of memories, Fang Yuan had complete familiarity with the current stages of cultivation, and the methods were as clear as day to him. He slowly opened his eyes, only to see that it was already late into the night. The crescent moon hung high in the night sky, the moonlight shining pure as water. The door was wide open and the moonlight shone in, letting Fang Yuan think of a famous poem from Earth, On a quiet night I saw the moonlight before my couch, and wondered if it were not the frost on the ground one. The night winds blew with a hint of chilliness. Fang Yuan did not have any warmth type GU, and with just the body of a 
15 year old, he could not help but shiver slightly. The night in the mountain was very cold. Scoundrel, you finally opened your eyes. How long are you planning to be? Cultivating there. Get out, you'll be punished regardless. You beat up our young master Mo Bay, so it was only a matter of time before young miss. Teaches you a lesson. Seeing that Fang Yuan had woken up, Gao Wan Hu was standing at the door got his spirits up. Fang Yuan squinted, it seemed that the rank 2 female GU master had left. Scoundrel, did you hear me? Hurry and come out here. You have a room to stay in and a bed to sleep, but I had to stand here all night. If you don't come out any time soon, don't you believe I might just barge in? Seeing no reaction from Fang Yuan, Gao Wan threatened. Fang Yuan remained unfazed. Scumbag, come out and surrender yourself. You've offended the Mo. Family, you will not have any good days from now on. Hurry and apologize. To young miss and maybe she might just forgive you. Gao Wan continued. To chide. Fang Yuan did not listen to a single word. He took out a primeval stone. From his storage bag and held it in his hands, finally closing his eyes again. Seeing that he was going to continue cultivating, Gao Wan was anxious and broke into a fit. You mere C rank talent, the most you can achieve in life, is a rank 2 GU master. What is there to cultivate? You are no match for the entire Mo family by yourself. Kid, are you deaf? Did you listen to a single word I said? One, a famous poem from Li Bai, a Chinese poet. This chapter was brought to you by Chibigan and Skyfaro. Credits to Chibigan for helping with the translations. Chapter 34 Suppressive Beating. Chapter 34 Suppressive Beating. Fang Yuan paid no heed to the man and started to multitask. He simultaneously absorbed the natural essence from the primeval stone and observed his aperture. The primeval sea level which had originally fell drastically within the aperture, with help from the constant stream of natural essence, began to slowly rise up again. This form of recovery speed was inevitably slow, but Fang Yuan was in no hurry. Cultivation was meant to be accumulative, it could not be rushed. The urgent matter at hand was in fact the middle-aged servant outside the house. After half an hour, Fang Yuan's green copper primeval sea reached 44%. The maximum capacity it could hold. But this was not the end. At this point the primeval sea showed a jade green color, this was only a rank 1 initial stage green copper primeval essence. The primeval essence that Fang Yuan had previously used to nurture the aperture wall was no longer initial stage primeval essence. It had been turned into middle stage primeval essence, refined by the liquor worm. Liquor worm. With a thought from Fang Yuan, the liquor worm within. The primeval sea instantly flew out and hovered in midair, its body curling into a ball form, resembling a white rice ball. Swoosh. 10% of his initial stage primeval essence was deployed and sent into the liquor worm's body, and soon the essence was fully absorbed by it. Soon after, a surge of liquor mist emerged from the liquor worm's body and congregated into a lump. Once more, Fang Yuan deployed 10% of his primeval essence and invested it into this liquor mist. Once the mist had been fully expended, the original 10% of initial stage primeval essence shrunk by half physically, and at the same time the color changed from jade green to pale green. This is middle stage primeval essence. In order to advance in their cultivation, ordinary students all use initial stage primeval essence. However, I'll be using middle stage primeval essence, and the efficiency is at least twice of theirs. Similarly, when using Middle stage primeval essence to activate the moonlight GU and throw a moonblade, it will be far stronger than activating it using initial stage primeval essence. Only when all the primeval essence in the primeval sea had been converted to middle stage primeval essence did Fang Yuan open his eyes. Time passes in the blink of an eye when cultivating, and at this point it was already midnight. The sky was no longer a pure black, but it had turned a deep dark blue color. The moon was no longer visible, and only a few lingering stars remained. The door was open almost throughout the entire night, and a corner of the wooden door was already wet, showing a dark color as the water tainted it. 
The school hostel had this disadvantage, it was not as comfortable as an ordinary wooden lodge that was built above the ground, one, but it was directly built on the ground and thus it had high humidity. Coming back to reality, Fang Yuan felt a chill down his spine. After sitting cross-legged for such a long time, both his legs felt numb. He opened his clenched right fist and scattered a handful of white stone powder. This was the primeval stone after its essence had been fully absorbed, and what remained was only the leftover powder. After a night of cultivation, I had expended three primeval stones. Fang, Yuan calculated in his mind. He had C-ranked talent, but in order to pursue faster cultivation speed, he used primeval stones to replenish his primeval essence. What was more, crucial was the liquor worm, as it had been used to refine his middle stage. Primeval essence. This had greatly increased the expenditure of his primeval stones. Although I plundered another sum of primeval stones yesterday, a night of cultivation cost me three stones. In this case, although it might seem that I have a lot of resources, it is unable to sustain me for a long time with my current cultivation speed, but this is the price I have to pay for pursuing cultivation speed and efficiency. Fang Yuan looked outside the room again, only to see Gao Wan, the muscular servant, squatting at a corner with his body curled up, seemingly fallen asleep. Looks like that rank 2 female GU master had left long ago, leaving this Gao Wan here to keep a watch on me. He he. Fang Yuan revealed a cold smile as he got off the bed and began to exercise his limbs. Once his body had warmed up, he left the hostel. Lad, you finally decided to come out. So how about it? Obediently, surrender and leave with me to kowtow and apologize to our young miss. Gao Wan's ears caught Fang Yuan's footsteps and he stood up immediately. His muscular body was almost twice the size of Fang Yuan. The muscles in his body tightened and his brows knitted together, a pair of cruel eyes. Shining with evil light, resembling a starving hyena, Fang Yuan expressionlessly walked towards him. Lad, you should have came out earlier. By coming out now, do you know how much the great me had to suffer by watching over you? He snickered while approaching Fang Yuan, evidently planning something sinister. At this moment, Fang Yuan lightly cried out, and with a ferocious leap he aimed both fists towards Gao Wan. Bastard, you're courting death. Gao Wan's face distorted with rising. Anger within him, raised his brick-sized fist and he punched towards Fang. Yuan. The fist was extremely powerful, slicing through air and the swooshing. Sound of the wind could be heard. Fang Yuan's eyes shone clear as crystal. Seeing that the fist was approaching close, he sidestepped and turned towards Gao Wan's rear. Stretching out a finger, he struck towards Gao Wan's waist. Gao Wan blocked with his retracted arm, Fang Yuan did not get a clear hit. And ended up hitting onto Gao Wan's left forearm. Fang Yuan's finger felt like it had hit a steel plate, painful and numb. This Gao Wan has already approached the limits of a mortal's physical prowess. Right now I can only use the Moonlight GU to fight, and without any other GU worms to assist me, I am not his match at basic close. Combat. Fang Yuan's eyes shone and he decided quickly to give up on. Attacking. Instead, he retracted a few steps and pulled some distance away. From Gao Wan. In the GUU village, only the GUU clansmen had the rights to cultivate. As a GU master, the outsiders, regardless of whether they had cultivation, talent or not, had no rights to attend the awakening ceremony. But these mortals could train in physical combat. Just like the Gao Wan here, although he was not a GU master, he had trained vigorously in his punches and kicks and his basic skill was steadfast. Additionally he was a middle-aged man, and this meant being at the physical prime in a mortal's lifetime. Fang Yuan, other than having the moonlight GU to fight, had only the body of a 15-year-old teenager. Be it strength, agility or endurance, he was not. Gao Wan's match. Martial artists like Gao Wan were sufficient enough to kill a rank 1. Initial stage GU master. Even towards a rank 1 middle stage GU master. They still posed a certain threat. This lad is too sneaky. Seeing that Fang Yuan had drawn some distance. 
Between them, Gao Wan felt anxiety within his heart. The waist was a vital point of the body, and if it was damaged by someone, through brute force, the harm was not negligible. If the force was exerted beyond a point, it could also be deadly. Gao Wan had waited outside the hostel for the entire night, and thus his body was enshrouded by the moist atmosphere, causing his reaction speed to be slightly slower. Hence the strike earlier had almost succeeded. Fortunately, although he was a bootlicker, he had trained hard in his physical ability. So at the crucial moment his body's reflex instinctively reacted and allowed him to narrowly block Fang Yuan's attack. I can't be careless anymore. This lad behaves like a wolf, striking harsh and deviously, getting his way whenever I am even but a little careless. No, wonder young master was knocked out by him twice. Gao Wan wiped the sweat off his forehead and swept away all hints of contempt. He started to take his opponent seriously. If I can capture this lad, it'd be a great accomplishment. Young Miss is sure to reward me. A rank 1 initial stage's Moonblade is at max only like a small dagger, so as long as it does not hit my vital points it'll merely be a light external injury. Thinking of this, Gao Wan's heart started to beat faster. Stretching out his shovel-like hands, he grabbed at Fang Yuan. Boom boom boom. Fang Yuan showed no fear and approached Gao Wan to engage in close combat. Exchanging punches and kicks, taking turns attacking and defending, loud impact sounds echoed through the area. When plundering the students, he had only used his palm with his objective being to control the crowd. But now when engaging with Gao Wan, Fang Yuan had gone all out. At times he used his fingers to jab at the eyes, sometimes strangling the throat, hitting the jaw with the base of his palm, chopping at the back of his opponent's head, using the knee to strike the pelvic area, or using his hands to grab at the waist. Gao Wan's sweat poured out like a river. Fang Yuan's moves were all aiming at the vital points, each strike devious and deadly as if he wanted to end Gao Wan's life right there. Gao Wan was a mere mortal, and unlike the GU masters, although he trained well in his physical combat, his vital points remained vital. Mortals were unable to train their eyelids to become steel-like. This was the limits of the mortal martial arts. In addition, Gao Wan did not dare to unleash any deadly moves on Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan was a GUU clansman, so killing him would incur public rage. And he would be immediately executed. In fact, the Mo family will be the first to carry out his punishment. Thus his only thought was to capture Fang Yuan alive, and it would be good if he could make Fang Yuan suffer in the process of capture. One side has apprehension while the other side had killing intent. The situation thus became Fang Yuan suppressing Gao Wan in the fight. One Diao Zhao Zhu Lu ordinary wooden lodge that was built above the ground, see. Image. This chapter was brought to you by Chibigan and Skyfaro. Credits to Chibigan for helping with the translations. Chapter 35, Go Ahead and Scream. Chapter 35 Go Ahead and Scream. Fang Yuan had the upper hand for now, but it could not sustain him for much longer. Exchanging blows back and forth, he was already panting in exhaustion. In contrast, Gao Wan's breathing was still smooth and in sync, reflecting the huge difference in stamina between the two. At the same time, as Gao Wan exercised his limbs, his body gradually heated up while his punching speed became faster and faster. The effect of the cold that caused him to be slow and numb had worn off, displaying the true skills honed by his training for decades. Lad, you are unable to beat me. There are clan rules stating that within the school hostel, you are forbidden from using the moonlight GU. You are dead meat, doomed to be my captive. Gao Wan laughed maniacally, his fighting experience was rich, so he attempted to use words to cause Fang. Yuan's fighting spirit to waver. In the end, I'm only just a teenager and my body that hasn't fully developed cannot be compared to this servant. Fang Yuan's state of mind was calm as ice. Having sharpened his will for 500 years, there was no way his fighting spirit would waver. Moonlight Gu. He called out in his mind, activating his primeval essence, and at the same time leaping backwards to pull away from Gao Wan. 
Gao Wan wanted to chase after him, but he suddenly saw a watery blue light emitting from Fang Yuan's palm. His face darkened and he shouted, Lad, you are using the GU worm to fight in the school hostel, this is against the clan rules. So what if I break the rules? Fang Yuan sneered. He learned the clan rules and memorized it to heart, but it was not for the sake of obeying it. Immediately, his palm slashed an arc towards Gao Wan. With a ching sound, the blue moonblade flew towards Gao Wan's face. Gao Wan gritted his teeth as he raised both arms to cover his face, forming a protective shield. At the same time, he rushed towards Fang Yuan without pause, planning to endure the attack while ending the battle as quickly as he could. The moonblade struck his arm. With a popping sound, his flesh and blood poured out under the moonlight, a wave of extreme pain hitting Gao Wan's nerves. The unguarded man nearly fainted from the pain. How can this be? His rush towards Fang Yuan stopped, and he frightfully found out that both his limbs had been cut open with a deep wound. Fresh blood oozed out from the wound and from the side, while bloody muscles could be observed hanging around his flesh. Even the broken white bones of the forearm could be seen. Gao Wan was shocked beyond words. This is impossible. A rank 1. Initial stage Moonblade, the most it could do is to lightly injure my flesh. How could it cut through my bones? Only a rank 1 middle stage can do. This. He had no idea. While Fang Yuan was a rank 1 initial stage GU master. Due to the liquor worms refining, he possessed rank 1 middle stage. Primeval Essence. The Moonlight GU, activated using middle stage primeval essence, emitted. A moonblade far superior to the initial stage that he originally predicted. This is bad, this boy is weird. Gao Wan who was caught off guard had already suffered a grave injury. His fighting spirit was gone and he decisively decided to retreat. Are you able to escape? Fang Yuan smiled coldly as he started to give chase, the moonblades in his hands shooting out consecutively. Save me. Gao Wan shouted out in horror as he fled, his voice traveling far out beyond the school hostel. What is going on? Someone is asking for help. The voice alerted the school hostel guards who were nearby. It's the Mo family's young miss, Mo Yan's servant. The guards who arrived stopped in their tracks upon seeing the chasing scene. This is only a servant, there is no need for us to risk protecting him. Letting him stay here was already a favor towards the Mo family. We still have to be careful, just in case he hurts Fang Yuan in desperation. The anxious guards all gathered around, but no one lent a hand to Gao Wan. They only observed from the sidelines. This servant Gao Wan, even if he died, it had nothing to do with them. However if Fang Yuan died or got hurt, it would be their responsibility. Seeing such a sight, Gao Wan despaired, he tragically screamed, we are all outsiders. You cannot leave me to die. His blood loss was getting more severe, and his speed decreased. Fang Yuan caught up to him, his voice cold as ice, announcing Gao Wan's death sentence, go ahead and scream. It doesn't matter how loud you do. So, while saying that, the blade in his arm rotated, and he fired two moon blades towards Gao Wan. Swoosh, swoosh. The moon blades flew towards Gao Wan's neck. The servant lost all hope. Seemingly one step away into the abyss. The next moment, he felt that his world was spinning, he actually saw his own feet, chest, back, and that severed neck. Afterwards, total darkness awaited him. Gao Wan had died. Beheaded by two moon blades, his head flew away from the impact, his body pushed back ten meters before falling. The neck area spewed out a fountain of fresh blood, dyeing the surrounding grass a blood red. Murder. Fang Yuan killed someone. The guards could not help but scream out. They had witnessed the entire process, and they felt a sense of extreme trepidation and terror rushing all over their body. Fang Yuan was just a weak 15-year-old teenager, but he expressionlessly murdered a strong adult. This was the power of a GU master. The victory had been set. Fang Yuan slowed in his footsteps and gradually moved towards the corpse. His face was calm, as if he had done nothing out of the ordinary. This expression further sent a shiver down the guards' spines. 
Gao Wan's head lay on the ground, both his eyes wide open, turning in his grave. Fang Yuan stared coldly. He raised his leg and sent the head flying. The guard's eyelids twitched. Fang Yuan approached the corpse and found that it was still vibrating. The blood spread through the ground, forming a small bloody puddle. He looked at Gao Wan's injuries with a grim expression. These injuries were deep, enough to expose the secret to the fact that he had middle stage primeval essence. Once this was exposed, it'll be quickly deduced that he had a liquor worm. And with that the family would naturally think of the flower wine monk. Thus, Fang Yuan had to keep this secret hidden. But there are too many onlookers. Fang Yuan's gaze swept through the nearby guards, there was more than 10 of them. He had less than 10%. Primeval essence left, so there was no way to kill them all. After pondering for a while, Fang Yuan bent down and raised Gao Wan's ankle, dragging the corpse away. Young Master Fang Yuan, you can leave this to us. The guards controlled their fear and approached Fang Yuan, politely speaking. The respect and politeness held a tint of obvious fear. Fang Yuan silently looked at the guards, and they all held their breaths. Looking down, give me the saber, he stretched out his hand and lightly said. With authority in his speech, he emitted undeniable pressure. The guard closest to him uncontrollably handed him the saber on his waist. Fang Yuan took the saber over and continued walking, leaving behind a dozen stunned guards staring after his back. The sun rose from the east, and the first ray of light shone over the mountain peak, lighting up the school hostel. Fifteen-year-old Fang Yuan, with the scrawny body of a teenager, a pale look upon his skin. Under the sunrise, he casually walked. In his left hand was a shiny saber. In his right hand, a headless corpse. His path left behind a trail of bright red blood traces dragged out on the road. The guards were flabbergasted, their bodies stiff due to the frightening scene. Even as the sunlight shone on them, they could not feel a sense of warmth and light. Gulp. Someone among them swallowed their saliva loudly. Author's note. He's just asking for readers to recommend his book to others. Second half is just trying to motivate the readers. For a book that is just written, there will be people who like it and people who don't. For those who don't like it, there is no need to struggle force yourselves, you can just go and read another book. For those who like it, please do your best to support the book. On the first day of the new year, I ask for recommendations, please bookmark this book. After the apocalypse, I implore everyone of the same Tao to display their strengths, gather our powers and rise up as the demonic flames, and let the people of the world see the power of us demon cultivators. In the new year, those that defend the last remaining territory of the demonic ways, let the demonic way rise up again, and become legendary. This chapter was brought to you by Chibigan and Skyfaro. Credits to Chibigan for helping with the translations. Donations are finally open for Reverend Insanity. Plus underscore plus. Chapter 36, Gifting a Disseminated Corpse. Chapter 36 Gifting a Disseminated Corpse. Did you guys hear? Fang Yuan killed someone. A student whispered to his classmate beside him. I heard it too, he really killed somebody. The classmate clenched his chest. With a pale face. There were many guards who saw him do it. Fang Yuan was chasing after. That man. That guy tried to beg for mercy but Fang Yuan paid him no heed. And decapitated him immediately. That's not all. After killing him, Fang Yuan didn't even spare his headless corpse. He dragged it back to the hostel and chopped it into a meat paste. Are you for real? I'm serious beyond belief. I came early this morning and I could still see the bloodstains left between the cracks of the green rock. Oh man, why would I lie to you? Earlier, the academy elder called Fang Yuan over for this matter. The youths in the academy did not pay attention to class as they held their little conversations. To this group of 15-year-olds, the concept of killing was too foreign and too scary. They had been under the protection of the clan since a young age and had at most experienced organized sparring or simply killing chickens and dogs. As for killing a person, it was still beyond them. Who did Fang Yuan kill? I heard it was a family servant of the Mo branch family. Yup, I'm the clearest about this matter. Yesterday, I personally saw the Mo 
Families Mo Yan bring a bunch of family servants to find trouble with Fang. Yuan, the Mo family, that's not good. Mo Bei is in trouble now. A number of the youths turned to look at Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei. Mo Bei sat on his seat with a pale face, he had only heard about the news. Of Fang Yuan killing someone this morning. Additionally, it was the Gao. One that Mo Bei was familiar with. As one of the more energetic family. Servants, Gao Wan was good at boot licking and had also put effort into his fighting skills. He was an able lackey. A long while ago, Gao Wan had even sparred with Mo Bei for a bit. 2. Think that he was simply killed by Fang Yuan. It was precisely because of this that Mo Bei felt astonished. He was full of disbelief and felt twice the shock compared to the others. However, compared to his shock, he felt a greater sense of worry and fear. Facing a murderer like Fang Yuan, it would be a lie if Mo Bei said that he was not afraid. Actually, it was not just him, the other youngsters were afraid too. When Fang Yuan had robbed them twice previously, all of them had gotten physical with him. I actually fought with such a ruthless murderer. To think that I'm actually still alive. Many of them patted their chest, feeling a lingering fear. Fang Yuan killing someone was still somewhat acceptable but the crux was that he even dissected the corpse and chopped the body into meat paste. That was way too cruel. The truth of such a horrifying crime had a strong impact on all of the youth's pure and innocent minds. Within the room, there was only the academy elder and Fang Yuan. The academy elder sat while Fang Yuan stood. Neither of them spoke a word, causing the atmosphere to be extremely tense. The academy elder silently looked at Fang Yuan and a hint of complication flashed in his eyes. In the morning, the guards had reported to him about Fang Yuan's murder incident. This news had made him feel both shocked and suspicious. He was a rank 3 GU master and was in charge of the academy. He obviously knew the fighting strength of a rank 1 initial stage GU master. Fang Yuan being able to kill Gao Wan was like the weak defeating the strong. In truth, some guards had already reported to him that Mo Yan had trapped Fang Yuan within the academy by barging in the previous night. Back then, he had not paid attention to the matter and had not stopped them. He was the academy elder, his objective was to nurture future GU masters, not to protect them. As long as there were no deaths among the students, he encouraged hidden conflicts. Mo Yan coming to find trouble with Fang Yuan was something that he was happy to see. For one, he knew that regardless of whether the fight was won or lost, it would be beneficial to Fang Yuan's growth. Secondly, he wanted to suppress Fang Yuan's influence. Fang Yuan had consecutively blocked the academy's gates and robbed the other students. His influence was too great, it had to be suppressed. However, he hadn't expected that Mo Yan would return fruitlessly and that the family servant that she had left behind would be unable to beat Fang. Yuan, Gao Wan even got killed by him. In this world, strength was above all else. Killing someone was not something peculiar. Especially to a Gu master, it was something very common. But it was not so simple when it was a 15-year-old's first kill. The academy elder vividly remembered his first killing scene. Back then, he was already a rank 2 GU master. At the age of 19, he had killed a G.U. Master from the Bai clan's village in a conflict. After killing the person, he vomited profusely and panicked in his heart. For a few days, he had no mood to eat and had no appetite. He could not even find peace in his sleep. The moment he shut his eyes, he would see the dead person staring angrily at him. But looking at Fang Yuan now, his face was calm as ice. Where was the Fluster, not to mention that he had no uneasy feelings. It was almost like he had slept perfectly well last night, as if the person who killed a man was not him at all, especially when the academy elder heard more about the matter. After Fang Yuan had killed the servant, he did not spare the corpse and had even dragged it back to the dormitory to chop it into meat paste in his rage. Such vicious methods, even hearing about it was a kind of terror. Thus, at this point, the academy elder looked at Fang Yuan with complicated emotions. On one hand, he was amazed at Fang Yuan's indifference towards life, his 
attitude was as steady and as cold as ice. On the other hand, he was appreciative of the fact that Fang Yuan was a born battle freak. After familiarizing himself with the Moonlight Gu for a few days, he had managed to kill someone with it. An ordinary teenager, even those a grade talents, may not be able to achieve this. This was a talent for battle. If he was well nurtured and fought for the clan, it would be all of their enemy's nightmare. Lastly, he felt worry and distressed. Worry because after this incident, Fang Yuan's reputation was sure to rise. And it would be impossible to suppress him. Fang Yuan was way too daring. Not only did he disobey the clan rules by using his GU in the academy, he even killed someone with it. There was a need to suppress his influence. Otherwise, how would the elder be able to manage this academy anymore? Distress was because he did not know how to perfectly resolve this issue. After all, it involved the Mo family's side. Fang Yuan, do you know why I called you here to meet me? The academy elder used a solemn and deep voice to break the silence in the room. I know. Fang Yuan nodded and replied, I use the Moonlight GU in the academy, breaking the clan rules. According to the rules, as it is my first offense, I should compensate 30 pieces of primeval stones as punishment. He evaded the crucial point and did not mention Gao Wan's death. The academy elder was stunned for a second, he had not expected that. Fang Yuan would answer like this. His expression darkened as he coldly snapped, don't try to blur things in front of me. I'll ask you, what was the matter with Gao Wan's death? Fang Yuan squinted his eyes and said, HMPH, this Gao Wan went against his superiors, his intentions were vicious. Last night, not only did he block my room door, he even tried to kill me. In self-defense, I was forced to use the Moonlight GU. Fortunately, I managed to kill this traitor. I suspect that there is a high possibility of him being a spy of the other mountain villages. I implore the elders to investigate this thoroughly. Upon hearing this, the academy elder frowned and became at a loss for words. Now that Gao Wan was dead, Fang Yuan could say whatever he wanted. After all, Gao Wan was just an outsider, not a member of the clan. Even if he was dead, it would not matter to the academy elder. However, he was worried about the Mo family's reaction. Gao Wan was their servant and he had died within the academy. The academy elder was in charge of the academy and had to give the Mo family an explanation. Thinking for a bit, the academy elder stared at Fang Yuan and questioned. Then let me ask you. Gao Wan's corpse, how did you deal with it? Fang Yuan's lips curled, revealing a cruel smile. I diced Gao Wan's corpse and put it inside a wooden box. When morning came, I put it at the Mo family's back door. What? The academy elder was stunned beyond words as he almost jumped from his seat. Not only did Fang Yuan kill their family servant, he had even chopped up the corpse and placed it at the Mo family's back door. This was blatant provocation. To the academy elder who was trying to resolve this peacefully, it was a true nightmare. Fang Yuan was just a small rank 1 GU master, how would the large Mo family react? Thinking of this, the academy elder felt a headache as the matter had already developed out of his control. This Fang Yuan was a true troublemaker. Sigh, since it has already happened, there's no point in saying any more. Leave first, the punishment will come within these few days, you should get mentally prepared. The academy elder was terribly upset. He waved his hand and signaled for Fang Yuan to leave, he needed to think through this calmly to come up with a solution. TL note, so my person in charge said I can post on my site with a time. Delay while Kedian site has to be the first, so I'm just going to post here too. Anyway if that's the case oh. Sky Pharaoh. Chapter 37, Both a Compromise and a Threat. Chapter 37 Both a Compromise and a Threat. Meanwhile, at the Mo family, what were my instructions to you? See what you did. In the study room, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen slammed the table, exploding with a rage. Mo Yan stood opposite this old man, her head lowered. Her eyes were full of shock and rage. She had also just gotten the news that Gao Wan had been killed by Fang Yuan. 
that 15-year-old teenager, to think he had such methods and determination. Gao Wan was the proud servant of her Mo family and Fang Yuan's act of killing him was a blatant showing of disrespect towards them. Grandpa, you don't have to be so angry. This Gao Wan was only a servant. His death is of no concern. He isn't a GUU clan member anyways. But, that Fang Yuan, he is too daring, you have to, look at the owner before you. Beat the dog. Not only did he beat our dog but he even beat it to death. Mo Yan said indignantly. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen furiously scowled, you still have the cheeks to say that. Have your wings grown so tough now that you don't even put my words to. Heart, hem, what I told you before, you have forgotten all about it. Your granddaughter dares not. Mo Yan jumped in shock. She knew now, that her grandfather was really angry and quickly kneeled down. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen pointed his finger out the window and scolded, HMPH. So what if that servant died? But now you are still showing hostility towards Fang Yuan, this is really a matter of you being short-sighted and unclear of the implications. Do you know the significance of your actions? The fight among juniors is their own business. As elders, we should not interfere. These are the rules. Now that you went to find trouble with Fang Yuan, it means you are breaking the rules. I can't tell how many people are out there. Now, looking at this disgrace of Armo family. Grandpa, please calm down, anger will harm your body. It's Mo Yan fault. I burdened the Mo family. Whatever Grandpa tells Mo Yan to do, Mo Yan will do it. But your granddaughter really cannot take this lying down, that Fang Yuan is too despicable, too shameless. First, he lied to me and entered the academy. Next, he hid in the dormitory and no matter how much I scolded him, he would not come out. Once I left, he went ahead and killed Gao Wan. He is extremely sinister and despicable. Mo Yan reported. Oh, is that so? Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen frowned. This was the first time he had heard this information and a bright light shone across his eyes. He took in a deep breath, suppressing his rage and he stroked his beard. While saying, I've heard stories about this Fang Yuan. In his early years, he was able to make poems and songs, showing early intelligence. But to think that he only had C-grade talent, it was difficult for him to have a good future and thus I gave up on recruiting him. But now it seems that it's slightly interesting. Pausing for a second, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen knocked on the table and ordered. Someone, bring that box over here. The servant outside the door quickly obeyed. Soon, he brought in a box. The box was neither too big nor too small but it was slightly heavy. The servant used both hands to carry it and stood beside the study table. Grandpa, what is this? Mo Yan stared at the wooden box and asked. Doubtfully, why don't you open it and take a look? Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen squinted his eyes and said in a complicated tone. Mo Yan stood up, flipped over the wooden lid and looked inside. Immediately, her facial expression changed and her pupils shrunk to a needle-like size. She could not help but take a step back and let loose an unsuppressed scream. The wooden lid in her hand also fell to the ground. Without the wooden lid, the thing kept within the wooden box was shown to everyone present. It was actually a pile of flesh and blood. The bloody flesh was obviously sliced off piece by piece and placed into the box. Bright scarlet blood had accumulated inside. There was some pale skin and flesh, while some were long strands of intestines, mixed in with a few pieces of bones, either leg bones or the ribs. In the pool of blood at a corner, there were also two fingers and half a toe floating in it. Bletch. Mo Yan beautiful face changed color as she took another step backwards. Her stomach turning as she almost vomited on the spot. She was ranked 2 GU master and had gone out to gain experience before. Despite that, this was the first time that she had seen such a disgusting and twisted scene even though she had killed people before. The flesh and blood in this box were obviously the corpse of a person after being minced into pieces and stuffed in. The scent of blood burst into the air and rapidly permeated the air, immediately filling the entire study room. Both of the family servants' hands shook as he carried the box, his complexion pale. Although he had seen the box earlier and vomited before, 
he could still feel waves of palpitation and disgust as he held it now. Among the three people in the study room, only the family elder Ji Yu Yu. Mo Chen was unfazed. He lightly looked at the contents of the box for a moment and said to Mo Yan slowly, This box was what Fang Yuan had. Placed at our family's back door this morning. What? It's really him. Mo Yan was extremely shocked as images of Fang Yuan showed up in her mind. The first time she saw Fang Yuan, it was at the inn. At that time, Fang Yuan sat near the window, quietly eating his meal. His facial features were bland and both of his eyes were dark and gloomy. His body was thin and his skin had the special paleness of a teenager. He looked like such a normal and quiet youth. To think that he had done such a twisted and insane act. After her initial shock came a furious rage. Mo Yan yelled, this Fang. Yuan is too outrageous, who gave him the guts to do so? To dare to do such a thing, this is a provocation towards our Mo family. I will go ahead now, and bring him here to question him for his crimes. After she said this, she headed towards the exit. You scoundrel, stop right there. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen was angrier than she was as he grabbed an ink slab on his study desk and threw it over. The hard and heavy ink slab hit Mo Yan's shoulder and with a bang, it fell to the ground. Grandpa, Mo Yan held her shoulder as she called out in alarm. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen stood up, his finger pointing at his granddaughter as he spoke with an extremely agitated tone, it seems like all these years of training were in vain. You have disappointed me greatly. Against a small rank one initial stage Ji Yu master, not to mention you involving so many people, but even getting led by the nose by the other party. Now that you've let your rage get the better of you, at this point, do you still not understand the meaning behind Fang Yuan's actions? What meaning? Mo Yan was puzzled. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen snorted, if Fang Yuan wanted to provoke us, he would have blown up this matter, so why did he place this box at the secluded back door instead of placing it at the front door where there are many People walking around. Maybe he wants to reconcile with us. No, if he wanted to reconcile. Wouldn't it be better to apologize face to face? Why must he send us this? Box of minced corpse, this is definitely a provocation. Mo Yan said. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen shook his head, then nodded. He wants to reconcile, but. At the same time, he is also provoking us. Placing the wooden box at the. Back door is his intention to reconcile. Placing the corpse inside the box. That is a provocation. You see, the old man pointed at the box, and spoke, this wooden box is. Not big, and it cannot hold a complete corpse. Therefore there can only be a. Portion of the corpse inside. He is trying to tell us that he does not wish to. Blow up this matter and wants to settle this amicably. But if our Mo family. Wants to pursue this matter, he will place the remainder of the corpse at our main entrance, thoroughly blowing up the issue. By that time, it would be a losing situation for both sides. The entire clan knows that Armo family broke the rules first, and to Armo family's future head, this would be seen as him being so weak since he actually required his elders doting in protection. Upon hearing these words, Mo Yan was momentarily dumbfounded. She had never expected that Fang Yuan's actions would have such profound Meaning, his method is really wise, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen said with admiration, with just one action, he exercised both toughness and softness, capable of advancing and retreating safely. This is just a simple wooden box but it not only expresses Fang Yuan's intention to compromise but also his ability to pose a threat to Armo family. And it so happens that he does hold on to the weakness of Armo family. If the Mo family's reputation is tarnished, what follows after will be the Kai family's attack as well as the assault from the clan leader's side. Mo Yan found it unbelievable. Grandpa, aren't you thinking too highly of him? Are you sure that he's capable of this? He is only 15 years old. Too highly. Mo Chen looked at his granddaughter unhappily. Looks like you've had too smooth a life in these past few years. Fostering your Arrogant attitude, you are unable to clearly see the reality. This Fang Yuan was unfazed towards danger and deceived you to enter the school. Next, he 
used his wisdom in the face of danger and hid within the dormitory to avoid trouble. No matter what insult you threw at him he did not respond, this is his ability to calmly endure. After you left, he killed Gao Wan immediately. This is his bravery and courage. Now he sent this box, clearly showing his wisdom and planning ability. Can you still say that I thought of him too? Highly. Mo Yan listened with wide eyes as she had not expected her grandfather to praise Fang Yuan so highly. Immediately she said indignantly, Grandpa, he only has AC grade talent. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen sighed deeply, yes, he is only AC grade. Having such wisdom and yet only C grade talent, it really is a pity. As long as his talent was higher, even if it was just a B grade, he would certainly become an influential member of our GUU clan. What a pity, he is only AC grade. The old man's sigh was full of emotion. His sigh held both regret and at the same time rejoice. Mo Yan was silent and in her mind, Fang Yuan's image appeared once. Again, under her psychological influence, Fang Yuan's frail expression was shrouded by a layer of mysterious and vicious shadow. This problem was created by you single-handedly. How are you going to settle it? Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen broke the silence as he started to test Mo Yan. Mo Yan pondered for a while before she replied in a cold and aloof tone. Gao Wan was just a servant, so there are no implications even if he dies. Fang Yuan is just AC grade, so he is also a small matter. What's important is maintaining my Mo family's reputation. To appease this matter, we might as well kill Gao Wan's entire family to show the entire clan our attitude to protect the rules and regulations. Um, you're able to think of the big picture. Setting aside your personal emotions to defend the interests of family, this is very good. However, your method is still flawed. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen analyzed her response. Please enlighten me, Grandpa, Mo Yan implored. Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen said solemnly, this matter was instigated by you, so I shall punish you with seven days of confinement. From now on, do not find trouble with Fang Yuan again. Gao Wan defied his superiors, a servant, who dares to offend his master deserves death, so he should have been executed for his crimes. Because he is a servant of the Mo family, we are responsible for our inability to educate our subordinate and thus we shall compensate that Fang Yuan with 30 primeval stones. As for Gao Wan's family members, give them 50 primeval stones as compensation and expel them from the clan. After a short pause, he continued, for the next seven days, rest well at home, do not go out. At the same time, think about the profound meaning of why Grandpa chose to handle the matter this way. Yes, Grandpa. Chapter 38, Demon Walking in the Light. Chapter 38, Demon Walking in the Light. From the layers of dark clouds in the sky, the spring rain fell. The raindrops were thin like hair. As they fell, they enveloped Qing Mao, mountain in a layer of fine mist. The dining hall on the first floor of the inn was rather empty. There were only four tables of guests. Fang Yuan sat at a seat by the window. A gust of wind blew, bringing with it a poetic atmosphere and the scent of flowers. The light rain from the sky is sleek and crisp, the color of grass is seen from afar but disappears when close. Fang Yuan looked outside through a window and quoted a poem lightly before he turned his sights back to the inn. Before him was a table filled with good wine and dishes. The color, smell, and taste were all top-notch, especially the green bamboo wine which oozed with the fragrance of alcohol along with a hint of freshness. The dark, green-colored liquor sat quietly in the bamboo cup. From his angle, it shone with an amber-like luster. A grandfather and his grandson were sitting at the table nearest to him. Being mortal humans, they wore modest clothes. The grandfather sipped his rice wine while looking enviously at Fang Yuan. He was evidently attracted to the green bamboo wine but could not afford it. The grandson ate his braised beans, a crunching sound emitting from his mouth as he chewed. At the same time, he pestered his grandfather, shaking his arm. Grandpa, Grandpa, tell me about the story of Ren Zhu. If you don't tell me, I'll report to Grandma that you secretly came out to drink 
Sigh, I can't even drink in peace. The grandfather sighed but his face showed a doting expression towards the child. With his twig-like arm, he patted the boy's head, then let me tell you the story of Ren Zhu who gave his heart to the Hope Ji Yu, escaping his predicament of being captured. Renzu's story was the most popular and widespread tale in this world, as well as the most ancient legend. The old man's story was something like this. The story mentioned that Renzu was able to escape his predicament because of hope, but eventually he grew old and without strength and wisdom, he could no longer continue to hunt. Even his teeth fell off, making him unable to chew many wild fruits and vegetables. Renzu felt death slowly approaching. At this time, the Hope Ji Yu said to him, Human, you must not die. If you die, your heart will be lost and I will lose my only place of residence. Ren Zhu was helpless. Who wishes to die? But if the heavens and earth want me dead, I have no choice. The Hope Ji Yu said, There's always hope in everything. As long as you can catch a longevity Ji Yu, you will be able to increase your lifespan. Renzu had heard of the existence of the longevity GU long ago but he waved his hand helplessly. When the longevity GU stays still, nobody can detect it and when it flies, it is faster than light. How can I possibly catch it? It's too hard. The Hope GU then told Renzu a secret, human, don't give up hope no matter what. Let me tell you, on the northwest corner of this continent, there is a huge mountain. On the mountain, there is a cave and in that cave, there is a pair of round and square GU worms. As long as you can subdue them, there is no GU in this world that you cannot catch, including the longevity GU. Ren Zhu had no choice, this was his last remaining hope. He braved all difficulties and finally found the mountain. He then risked his life and ventured through countless dangers to ascend the mountain. On the mountain top, near the cave entrance, he used his last remaining strength to slowly make his way in. The inside of the cave was completely dark and one would not be able to even see their own fingers. Ren Zhu walked in the darkness. Sometimes, he would bump into things not knowing what they were. This caused himself to get injured and wounded all over. At times, he felt that this dark cave was Huge beyond words as if this was a world of its own. He felt as if he was the only person in the area. He spent a lot of time but he could not walk out of the darkness. Not to mention subduing the two GU worms. Just when he was at a loss about what to do, two voices spoke to him from the darkness. One voice said, human, you're here to catch us. Go back, for even if you had the strength GU, it would be impossible. The other said, human, go back, we will not take your life. Even if you had the wisdom GU to help you, you may not be able to find us. Ren Zhu laid exhausted on the ground, panting. The strength and wisdom GU had left me long ago and I do not have much lifespan left so I'm at my wit's end. But as long as there's hope in my heart, I will not give up. Hearing Ren Zhu's words, the two voices went silent. After a while, one of the GU said, I understand, human, you have already given your heart to the Hope GU. You will not give up no matter what. The other continued, in that case, we shall give you a chance. As long as you can say our name, we will allow you to use us. Ren Zhu was stunned to find their names among all the words in the world. It was akin to finding a needle in a haystack. Furthermore, he did not even know how many words were in their names. Ren Zhu quickly asked the Hope Ji Yu, but it did not know either. Ren Zhu had no alternatives and had no choice but to randomly guess their names. He said many many names and wasted a lot of time but the darkness did not respond to him so evidently he was wrong. Eventually, Ren Zhu's breath got weaker as he turned from an old man into a dying man. It was like the scene of the evening setting sun. The sun that would slowly descending had already been lowered halfway across the horizon, becoming a sunset. The food he had brought was gradually reduced, his brain becoming slower. And he barely had any energy to speak anymore. The voice in the darkness urged, Human, you are almost dead, so we will let you go. Using your remaining time, you can climb out of the cave and 
Take a final look at the world. But you have offended us, and as punishment. The Hope Ji Yu shall stay here as our companion. Ren Zhu clenched his heart and rejected, even if I die, I will not give up. Hope. The Hope Ji Yu was very touched and answered Ren Zhu's call. Enthusiastically, emitting a bright light. At Ren Zhu's chest area, a light began to shine. But this light was too weak, it could not illuminate the darkness. In fact, it could not even cover Ren Zhu's entire body, but only engulfed his chest area. Yet Ren Zhu could feel a renewed surge of energy gushing into his body. From the Hope Ji Yu, he continued to speak, shouting out names. But he was already muddled. A lot of names had already been said but he could not remember that and repeated them, wasting a lot of effort in the process. As time continued to flow, Renzo's lifespan was almost over. Finally, when he was on his final day, he said out the word, regulation. A sigh came from the darkness as a voice spoke, human, I admire your perseverance. You have said my name, so from today onwards, I will obey your commands. But only with my brother can I aid you in capturing all the G.U. in the world. Otherwise, with my ability alone, it is impossible. Thus, you should give up. You're almost dead, you might as well use this chance. To take a final look at the world. Ren Zhu was determined and shook his head, he made use of all his time to continue saying out names as he tried to guess the other G.U. worm's name. Seconds and minutes went by and soon he only had one hour left. But at this time, he unknowingly said the word, rule. Immediately, the darkness dissipated. The two Gus appeared before him. As the Hope G.U. had said, one was cubic, called regulations. The other was spherical, called rules. Together, they made up rules and regulations. The two G.U. said together, no matter who it is, as long as they know our names, we will listen to them. Human, since you know our names already, we will be at your service. But you must remember, it is important to not let others know of our names. The more people that know our names, the more people we have to obey them. Now that you are the first to subdue us, tell us your request. Ren Zhu was overjoyed. Then I order you both, go and catch me a longevity GU. The rules and regulations GU worked together and captured an 80 year. Longevity GU. Ren Zhu was already a hundred years old but after consuming this GU, the wrinkles on his face vanished and his frail limbs became muscular again. A vibrant aura of youth oozed from him. With a belly flop, he jumped up onto his feet. He ecstatically looked at his body, knowing that he had regained the body of a twenty-year-old. That's all for today, let's go home, grandson. The old man, having Completed the story, finished his wine as well. Grandpa, continue telling me, what happens to Ren Zhu after? The grandson was unyielding as he shook his grandfather's arm. Let's go, I'll tell you when there's another chance. The old man wore his straw hat and jacket, then gave his grandson another set that was a smaller size. The two walked out of the inn, stepping into the rain and slowly vanishing. From sight, rules and regulations, Fang Yuan's gaze was dark as he twirled his wine cup, looking at the liquor in his cup. His heart was touched. Renzo's legend was widespread throughout this world and there were almost no people who did not know of him. Fang Yuan had naturally heard of him too. But no matter if it was a legend or a story, it was dependent on the knowledge of the reader. The grandfather and grandson earlier merely treated it as a story, but Fang Yuan could understand the deeper meaning. Just like that Ren Zhu, when he did not know the rules and regulations, he explored in the dark. Sometimes he bumped into things, knocking into others, causing himself to get injured and look like a mess. And at times within a wider area, he got lost and confused, moving without a sense of direction or purpose. This darkness was not purely black or the absence of light. Strength. Wisdom and hope could not oppose it. Only when Ren Zhu knew of the rules and regulations and said their names. Did the darkness dissipate and invite light into Ren Zhu's life. The darkness was the darkness of the rules and regulations and the light was. Also the light of the rules and regulations. Fang Yuan switched his gaze from his cup and looked outside through the. Window. 
he saw that outside the window, the sky was still dark, the greenery abundant and the pelting rain flying by like mist. Close by, the bamboo tall houses were lined up in a row, extending far out. On the road, several people walked, their feet stained with the mud from the rain. Some of them wore grayish-green straw coats, while others carried yellow oiled cloth. Umbrellas. Fang Yuan concluded, this world's heaven and earth is like a huge chess board. All lifeforms are chess pieces, acting in accordance with their rules and regulations. The four seasons have their own rules and regulations, rotating between spring, summer, autumn, and winter. The flow of water has its own rules and regulations, flowing from high ground to low ground. Hot air has its own rules and regulations, floating upwards. Humans, naturally also have their own rules and regulations. Everybody has their own standpoints, desires, and principles. For example, in the GUU village, the servants' lives are cheap while their masters' lives are noble. This is a part of rules and regulations. Because of this, Shen Kui, who wants to get close to the rich and affluent is doing her best to try and escape her servant status. Gao Wan tried all means and methods to please his master, using their authorities for himself. As for uncle and aunt, they gave into greed, wanting to hoard my parents' inheritance. The academy elder wants to nurture GU masters to maintain his position in the academy. Everyone has their own rules and regulations, every profession has its own rules and regulations, and every society and group also have their own rules and regulations. Only by understanding the rules and regulations can we see the situation clearly from the side. Gone with the darkness and embrace the light, moving around the rules with much to spare. Fang Yuan thought about his own situation, his heart already clear. To the Mo family's head Ji Yu Mo Chen, it is to protect his family branches. Prosperity and benefits. Mo Yan found trouble with me and that would be considered spoiling the rules, so for the sake of his family honor, he will not do anything to me. In fact, he might even compensate me. Actually the Mo family has great influence, so if they risk their reputation and are bent on punishing me, there is nothing I can do to resist them. However, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen is afraid. He is not afraid of himself breaking the rules, but he is afraid that others will follow in his footsteps. In a junior scuffle, if the elders interfere, it would aggravate the situation. If it involved the higher-ups, it'd pose a threat to the entire mountain village. Ji Yu, Yu Mo Chen's fear lied here. What if in future conflicts, others laid their hands on his grandson Ji Yu Yu Mo Bei? In his entire family line there's only one male, so what would happen if he died? This kind of fear, maybe he doesn't realize it himself. He is only subconsciously protecting the rules. Fang Yuan's eyes were clear as he had the perfect grasp and understanding of the matter from start till the end. Gao Wan's surname was not Ji Yu Yu. Instead, he was an outsider, a servant. The master executing a servant was nothing to be alarmed about. In this world, it was normal. In the case of Fang Yuan killing Gao Wan, Gao Wan's death was not crucial. The crucial part was his master, the Mo family behind him. However Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen should be able to understand my intention of compromise and threat from the time I sent a box of a minced corpse to them. This is also what I want him to think. If I'm not wrong, the Mo family will not pursue Gao Wan's death. Of course, if I had better talent and was at least a B grade, the Mo family would feel threatened. Even with the loss of their reputation, they would want to suppress a future threat such as myself, Fang Yuan snickered in his heart. Strength can be relied on but weakness can also be used as an advantage. Although Fang Yuan was in the game of chess as a pawn, he was clear of the rules and regulations, thus he already had the mentality of a player. An ordinary character would at most be like Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen or the Academy Elder, also knowing their own rules and regulations but unsure of their non-expertise. Being like Fang Yuan, who had a clear view of the big picture and was clear of rules and regulations was extremely difficult. To understand rules and regulations, one has to be like Ren Zhu, stumbling 
around in the dark and wandering about aimlessly. At this point, strength, wisdom, and hope would be useless. One must spend a lot of time going through it themselves and gaining the experience. For Ren Zhu to be able to say out the names of the rules and regulations. Gu, this was after spending time. Under the threat of death, he had tried. Countless of times. Fang Yuan was an expert in rules and regulations due to his 500. Years of experience in from past life. After his rebirth, he believed that he could create a brilliant future. Not. Because of the spring and autumn cicada, not because he knew many. Secret troves and treasures, not because he knew what the future held. But because of the 500 years of experience that he had gained as a person. Just like how Ren Zhu controlled the rules and regulations GU and was able to easily capture all the GU in the world. And Fang Yuan was so familiar with rules and regulations, thus he was able to look down upon the world and see through its truths and lies. Being meticulous and precise, are getting right to the heart of the matter. I proudly laugh as I stand on top of the world, coldly looking at the people in the world who behaved like pawns, obeying their respective rules and regulations, living their lives in a straightforward manner. The rules and regulations of the darkness is darkness, and the rules and regulations of the light is light. But the reborn demon had stepped foot under the path of light. Chapter 39 Toad Caravan Merchant Chapter 39 Toad Caravan Merchant The month of May was a transition between spring and summer. The fragrance of flowers filled the air, the huge mountains evergreen and the sunlight began to gradually release its ardent side. Under the clear azure skies, the white clouds drifted like cotton. On Qingmao Mountain, the bamboo forest was straight like spears as always, pointing towards the blue sky. Weeds grew wildly everywhere, and unknown varieties of wild flowers dotted the grass thicket. As the light breeze blew, the wild grass moved to and fro, the heavy fragrance of flower. Pollen and the smell of green grass assailing visitors. Halfway up the mountain was a huge number of terraced fields. Layer by layer, step by step, the soft green wheat sprouts were planted down. From afar, it looked like a verdant green sea. On the terraced fields were numerous farmers busily working away. There, were some farmers cleaning the canal for the channeling of water to irrigate. The fields, while some farmers were rolling up their trousers, standing in the fields and planting sprouts. These people were naturally all mortal outsiders as the GUU clansmen would never have do these lowly jobs. Ring, ring, the sound of camel bells could be faintly heard in the spring breeze. The farmers straightened their bodies as they headed down the mountain, only to see a caravan moving like a colorful worm from the mountainside, slowly showing its head. It's the merchant caravan. Yes, it's already May, it is about time for the caravan to come. The adults caught on the situation at once, and the children stopped playing. With the water and clay in their hands. Together, they energetically approached the caravan. The southern borders had a hundred thousand mountains, Qing Mao. Mountain was just one of them. On every mountain, there were villages. After villages, which were maintained by everyone through their blood relationships and kinships. In between the mountains, the forests were deep and ominous, the cliffs steep and full of the dangerous falling rocks. Additionally, in the complex surroundings of the forest dwelled a large number of ferocious beasts and peculiar GU worms. Mortals could not pass through at all. It was difficult to get past these obstacles alone, one had to at least be a rank 3 GU master. Because of the poor economy, trading was difficult. Thus, the most important form of trading was through the caravan merchants. Only by organizing a merchant group in such a large scale could GU masters come together with the power to help each other, conquering the difficulties in the traveling routes and traversing from one mountain to another. The merchant caravan's arrival was like a bowl of boiling water that poured into the peaceful and serene Qingmo Mountain. All these past years they would come in April, but this year they only arrived in May. At least they're here now. The owner of the inn let out a deep breath upon hearing the news. The inn's business was poor in the other months, so only when the caravan came could he earn enough profit to last the year. 
At the same time, there was some green bamboo wine within his storage that he could sell to the caravan merchants. Besides the inn, the business at the tavern would also boom as a result. The caravan merchants entered the Guu mountain village one by one, led by a treasure brass toad. This toad was two and a half meters tall, its entire body orange-yellow in color. The back of the toad was thick and full of warts and knots. It was like the lumps of bronze nails on ancient city gates. On the treasure brass toad's back, thick ropes were tied around plenty of goods. At a glance, it seemed like the toad was carrying a giant backpack. A middle-aged man with a circular face full of pockmarks sat cross-legged atop the toad. He was fat and had a large belly. Both of his eyes formed into slits when smiling. He cupped his fists as he greeted the surrounding G.U. You villagers. This man's name was Fu of the Jaw Clan. His cultivation was at rank 4. And he was the leader of the merchant caravan this time. The treasure toad hopped slightly as it moved forward but Jaw Fu who was sitting on its head was stable and steady. When the toad hopped, his height would level with the windows on the second floor of a building. Even when he was back on the ground, he was at a height greater than the first level of the bamboo buildings. The originally spacious streets were suddenly rather packed and narrow. The treasure brass toad was like a beast that intruded into the midst of a great number of bamboo houses. After the treasure toad was a huge fat worm. It had two eyes that were similar to multi-colored glass windows, the colors bright and gorgeous. The worm was 15 meters long, its body shape resembling a silkworm. However, the surface of the worm was covered in a thick layer of black porcelain-like leather armor. On the armor was another abundant pile of goods and merchandise, a hemp rope tied around it. In between the gaps, and intervals of the goods, GU masters sat one by one, some old and some young. There were also mortals who were robust and sturdy martial warriors, slowly moving forward on the ground following after a fat black beetle. After the fat beetle, there were ostriches with brightly colored feathers, hairy mountain spiders, winged snakes with two pairs of feathered wings, and so on. However, these were in small numbers, most of the creatures were toads. These toads were all similar to the treasure brass toad, but they were smaller in size and had the build of cows and horses. The toads were carrying merchandise and people, their bellies bulging as they hopped forward. The merchant caravan wound deep into the village. Children on the road would look on curiously with wide eyes, calling out in joy or exclaiming in surprise. The windows on the second stories opened one after another, the mountain villagers observing the merchants from a short distance. Some had eyes that flashed with fear and some others waved their hands to express a warm welcome. Old brother Ja, you came a little late this year, you must have had a hard journey. Approaching with the identity of a clan head, Guu Bo came out himself to greet the leader of this year's merchant caravan. As Ja Fu had the status of a rank 4 Gu master, if a rank 3 elder were to be in charge of receiving him, it would be undoubtedly be seen as a kind of negligence and scorn. Jia Fu cupped his fists and sighed, this year's road was rather unfavorable. On the way we bumped into a group of secluded blood bats and we lost quite a few good men. Then on Ju by mountain we ran into a mountain fog, and we didn't dare to continue traveling at all. So we were delayed for quite a lot of time, and caused brother Guu to wait for quite a while. As they spoke, their tones were very polite. The Guu village needed the merchant caravans every year to come and trade, and the merchant caravan also needed business to make money. Ha ha ha, it's good enough that you are able to come. Please, the clan, has prepared food and wine, let me host a welcoming dinner for you, old. Brother, Guu Bo stretched out his hand and said invitingly. Clan head is polite, too polite. Jia Fu was flattered. The merchant caravan arrived at the boundaries of the Qingmao Mountain. In the early morning, and by afternoon they were stationed in the Guu village. When it was dusk, the surroundings of the village had formed into a widespread area of temporary shops and stores. All kinds of red, blue, Yellow and green lofty tents were built and every inch between the tents was squeezed with numerous little street stalls. 
The night was descending, yet it was still brightly lit in the area. An endless stream of pedestrians spilled into the area from the village. There were mortals as well as goo masters. The little children hopped around, in high spirits, and the adults showed an expression of joy akin to celebrating a festival. Fang Yuan moved along with the crowd, walking alone. The crowd was bustling with activity, groups of people either surrounding. The stalls are endlessly pouring in and out of the entrance of the tents. The surroundings were filled with the shouts of merchants hawking their wares. Come, come, take a look. Top-notch blue sea cloud tea brick, drinking. This tea makes one as cheerful as a fairy. Even if it's not a person drinking, it can be used for feeding and raising TGU, it is a cheaply priced item for its value. One piece only costs five primeval stones. Brute Force Longhorn Beetle GU, a GU master who uses this GU will be able to burst out with the strength of a cow. You can walk away, but don't regret it. Intimate Grass, High Quality Intimate Grass. Everyone look at this quality. It's as fresh as if a newly picked one. One caddy for two pieces of primeval stones, very cheap price. As Fang Yuan heard this, his footsteps paused slightly, then he followed the sound and walked over. He saw an ostrich pulling a handcart with two wheels. On the handcart was a heap of pastel green herbs. Every blade of grass was a meter in length, slender and long. Their average width was around that of a fingernail. On some of the pointed tips of the grass grew red heart-shaped flower buds. The intimate grass was one of a GU worm supplementary food type, its worth was stemmed from the fact that it could be used to pair up with a few other foods to feed a GU worm. For example, Fang Yuan needed to give two pieces of flower petals every meal to the moonlight GU when feeding it. If he mixed in a blade of intimate grass, the moonlight GU would be full just from eating one petal. The intimate grass only costs two pieces of primeval stones per caddy, while the moon orchid petal cost a primeval stone for every ten pieces. With a simple calculation, one would know that mixing the intimate grass into feed the GU would be more cost-effective. Half a month ago, because I used the moonlight GU in the academy to kill Gao Wan, I was fined 30 primeval stones. However the Mo family paid me 30 primeval stones later as compensation, so I didn't really take any losses. In recent days I have robbed twice, my total number of stones amounts to 118. However, recently I continuously spent essence to refine middle stage primeval essence and nurture the four walls of my aperture. And I would use up three pieces of stones every day, adding on the costs of Feeding GU, my own daily expenses and successively buying green bamboo. Wine, I have 98 pieces at hand right now. Ever since Fang Yuan killed a person, the cruel and callous image had deeply rooted itself into the hearts of the students and for a time no one dared to challenge him. This led to his plundering becoming much easier, as every time only a very small number would dare to resist. Fang Yuan calculated in his heart, then he moved his line of sight and continued walking deeper into the heart of the setup of temporary stores. The intimate grass stall was surrounded by a group of people. They were all either GU masters or students, holding primeval stones in their hands as they shouted and rushed to buy it. It was not that Fang Yuan lacked the money to buy intimate grass, but he had no time. If memory serves, that mudskin toad should be in that store. In my previous life there was a GU master who got it from gambling on the first night, hence he earned big time. I must hurry, I cannot lose a great deal. Through trying to save a little. Chapter 40, Toad GU Slumbering Within the Purple Gold Rock Chapter 40 Toad GU Slumbering Within the Purple Gold Rock the further one walked, the more flourishing and prosperous it was. Small street vendors lessened while large tents increased in number. There were all sorts of large tents to be seen, red, blue, green, yellow, in different shapes and sizes, several being a cylindrical shape. Some erected two-door pillars at the entrance of their tents, while others hung large red lanterns instead. Inside, some tents had vibrant lights, whereas others were Dim and dark, Fang Yuan observed his surroundings as he walked, finally stopping near a 
Gray colored tent. It's here, he evaluated while looking at the tent. It had two pillars at the entrance, and there were carvings on the pillars, two lines of antithetical. Couplet 1. The left side wrote, small display of courage, obtain good fortune during the four seasons. The right side wrote, large display of skills, obtain good prosperity in all four directions. In the middle there was still another line, luck changes with time. That's right, this is a gambling den. This gambling den took around one mu two of land, it was considered a large-sized tent. Fang Yuan walked inside. Inside of the tent, there was three rows of counters on a side. On the counter were pieces of amber or fossils. Some were as big as a palm, others were as big as a face. There were also others, which were even bigger, those were as tall as a person. It obviously could not fit on the counter, thus it was directly placed on the ground. Different from the other tent shops, it was silent in here. Several GU masters stood before the counters, some meticulously observing rocks on the display counter while others took the fossils and rubbed it in their hand to get a feel of it. There were some that were discussing quietly with their companions, and some were discussing the price with their shop clerks. But no matter what they discussed, they spoke softly, doing their best not to disturb others. This was a rock gambling den. In the GU world, there were all types of GU, coming with different shapes and sizes and all sorts of effects. Gooworms have their respective food to consume. Without food, they can only last a short amount of time before dying. But nature, towards life forms, was both uncaring and benevolent. If they lacked food, the GU worms still have a chance of survival. That was to hibernate, undergoing self-sealing. For example, if the Moonlight GU did not have moon orchid petals to consume, it may undergo self-sealing. It will try to maximize the conservation of its strength, like winter hibernation, falling into a deep slumber. At this time, not only would the blue glow on its body dissipate, it would also turn from a transparent crystal state into a gray rock, covered in a layer of rock shell. Eventually, the rock crust will get thicker and turn into a boulder. Or for example the liquor worm, if it underwent self-sealing, it would form a white cocoon around it, curling its body and falling into a deep sleep within the cocoon. Of course this situation of sealing and hibernating may not happen to every GU worm. It has a small chance of occurrence, and in most cases, the GU worm will not fall into hibernation but instead starve to death. Only a small number of GU worms may, under specific situations, undergo self-sealing. A few GU masters who accidentally obtain these sealed GU worms rocks or cocoons would awaken the goo worms that were slumbering within. Thus, they would have a stroke of fortune. Some of the GU masters became successful due to this, it being a turning point in their lives. These situations happen frequently in the goo master world, often being fake or real rumors, giving people hopes and dreams. The source of the idea behind this rock gambling den originated from these rumors. Of course, these rocks all looked alike on the outside. Only after opening them can one determine if there really is a GU worm hidden inside. In a small-sized rock gambling den like this, 9 out of 10 rocks are solid. Core, having no GU worms inside. Even if there are GU worms inside the rock, they may not be living worms, most of them are dead GU. But once, someone hits the jackpot of a live GU, under most situations, one would be able to earn a huge fortune. If the goo worm is a rare species, they either become a successful person in life or get murdered and robbed of their fortune. Fang Yuan was clear about this in his heart, being very familiar with the situation beyond these doors. In his past life, he had participated in a merchant caravan before, being a clerk in the rock gambling den. Some time later, he even operated his own rock gambling den, even larger than this one, it was a medium-sized rock gambling den. He managed to con some gamblers, and also misjudged at times, allowing other gamblers to win a precious GU worm. Fang Yuan stood at the door for a while, taking a glance around him before slowly walking to the counter on the left side. 
Behind the counter, there was a shop assistant every few meters, both males and females. On their waist hung a green-colored belt, showing that they were not ordinary people but rank 1 GU masters. Most were initial stages, while a selected few were middle stages. Seeing Fang Yuan before a counter, a female GU master who was nearest by walked towards him and smiled, softly saying, Young master, what GU? Worm do you need? Every rock on this counter is sold at 10 primeval stones each. If this is your first try, just for the sake of it, why don't you go to the right counter, the rocks there are sold at only 5 primeval stones. If you are seeking thrills, you can go to the high-end counter at the middle, the rocks sold there are at 20 primeval stones each. This was an experienced female GU master, having worked at the rock gambling den for quite some time already. She looked at Fang Yuan who entered, and determined that he was a student. From his appearance, age and height etc. Those that came to gamble were all GU masters. Students were only considered second-rate GU masters, just starting their cultivation. Because, they're often tight on finance due to feeding their GU worms, where would they find the money to come and gamble rocks? Students like this, normally they just came to take a look and to get an eye. Opening experience, satisfying their curiosity. Most were only window shoppers, though if some had well-to-do families, they might attempt to buy one to try, but most only bought the cheapest fossil. Thus, the female GU master had no expectations towards how many rocks Fang Yuan could buy. Let me look around first. Fang Yuan nodded at her expressionlessly, then started to look seriously into the pile. In his memory, it should be at this counter in this particular rock gambling den. But it had been 500 years, it's been too long. Many things were vague to him already, especially when 500 years of memory was a huge capacity, so. To be honest Fang Yuan could not remember distinctly. He could only vaguely recall, that during this year on the first night the caravan arrived, a lucky bird spent 10 primeval stones to buy a fossil with purple gold luster. After he opened it on the spot, he obtained a mudskin toad. Afterwards this toad GU was bought by another person, thus causing him to earn a small fortune of primeval stones. Fang Yuan frowned after observing for a while. On this counter, fossils with a purple gold glow numbered up to 20. In which rock was there a hidden mudskin toad? Every rock here was sold at 10 primeval stones each. Right now Fang Yuan had 98 primeval stones with him, and he could buy up to a maximum of 9 pieces. But realistically, he could not count like this. In any sort of risk and gamble, one had to consider the consequences. Fang Yuan was no longer a greenhorn, like those gamblers who thought they were blessed by heaven. Those who thought they were blessed by fate were usually those who fell under the mischief of fate itself. I am alone, with no relatives or friends that can help me. I have to save some primeval stones to survive, as well as to buy food for my GU worms. He counted and under the most basic reservation, he could buy at most. Seven pieces of fossils. This rock, the purple gold is dotted like the stars, but it's flat as a pancake. There's definitely no mudskin toad inside. This piece has striking purple gold color, but it is only fist sized, if there. Really is a mudskin toad inside, the rock should be at least 30% larger. This purple gold fossil, well it's big, but the surface is extremely smooth. While the mudskin toad's skin is supposed to be rough and uneven, this is evidently not the one. Fang Yuan continued to observe and evaluate, using the method of cancellation. When GU worms hibernate after self-sealing, they would form into a natural fossil, being undetectable from most of the world's detection methods. The remaining detecting methods were too rough, and once used, it would instantly kill the GU worm within that is barely alive. Thus, when GU masters choose rocks, they could only rely on their guessing, experience and luck, sometimes relying on a little bit of instinct. Otherwise, this would not be called gambling. Of course, in this wide wide world, there are countless wonders, and one cannot exclude the fact that a detection method which is extremely gentle exists, allowing a GU master to know if the rock contains a gooworm. 
Fang Yuan had heard of such rumors in his past life, but after experimenting, found that it was all lies. Fang Yuan assumed privately, if such a method really exists, it has to be a hidden legacy, controlled in the hands of a small number of mysterious people, having no impact on the gambling business. It was still tame around the Qingmao Mountain region, but the more one moves east, the more prosperous gambling dens become. At the Bai Tu three mountain region, every family village had its own gambling den. In some large-sized forts, there were even large-sized gambling dens built. The three villages that were famous for their rock gambling were Panxi Fort Village, Ji Yu Mu Five Village, and Kang Jing Six Village, where there were even mega sized gambling dens. These three mega-sized gambling dens each had a thousand years of history. Currently, their business was still blooming, with an endless number of gamblers. There had never been a situation of clean sweep by anyone. Currently, the tent that Fang Yuan was in can only be barely qualified as a small-sized gambling den. If it was any other 15-year-old who came, they would definitely be confused by all the different fossils, and even if they chose it, it would be by random guessing. But Fang Yuan was different. Firstly, he already knew a portion of the answer from the start, thus his search range shrunk to less than 30 pieces. Of course, to find that one rock out of these 20-odd pieces was extremely difficult as well, but using his 500 years of experience as backing, with such a rich pool of information he picked out six pieces of purple gold fossils that best fit the criteria after observing for a while. He had an 80% chance of confidence that the mudskin toad was hibernating. Within one of these six fossils, one antithetical couplet, https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash antithetical underscore couplet. Two mu mu one mu is 666 and two thirds meters squared. 3 by 2 directly means white head, 4 pan shi is monolith, 5 g u mu means ancient grave and 6 kang jing is pale whale. To be honest most of these mountains will never appear again, so you don't have to remember them. Chapter 41, Dissecting Rocks. Chapter 41, Dissecting Rocks. Translator, Skyfaro Editor, Skyfaro. I want to purchase some rocks. Having picked his targets, Fang Yuan said to the female GU master, Newbie, the female GU master immediately thought even the shittiest gamblers would pay very close observation when they wanted to buy the rocks. First they would look carefully, then place the stones in their palms and rub to feel the surface and its weight. Even after such actions, if they find that the feeling is off, they would give up. No one would say, purchase, at the start. And for such a type like Fang Yuan, who said, purchase, up front, he is undeniably a newbie who is having his first rock gambling experience. Although the female GU master thought this, she did not show any difference in her expression, but continued to smile like a flower, saying softly to Fang Yuan, then which piece are you choosing? Fang Yuan pointed and said, this piece. She immediately retrieved it. Fang Yuan pointed again and said, this piece. She felt perplexed, not expecting this youngster to buy two pieces. It seems like this youngster is the type to gamble heavily, she evaluated. Mentally. But next, Fang Yuan pointed yet again, and this piece, that piece, I'm buying them all. The female GU master was stunned, feeling extremely surprised, she could not help but assess Fang Yuan again. It seems like this ordinary looking youngster has a really good family background. Otherwise, how would any ordinary GU master have the spare cash to spend like this? Thinking of it, the female GU master's smile became more gentle and friendly. To think that the youngster in front of her was a real customer. This was an unexpected joy. However, Fang Yuan surprised her once again as he pointed to the furthest purple gold rock, oh yeah, and those two pieces as well. The female GU master could not help but feel shocked internally, which young master is this from the GUU village? It looks like he's the main family branches inheritor. If I can hook up with him, I may not need to stay here and slog as a shop clerk anymore. 
With this thought, the female GU master's smile became even more gentle. And she even looked towards Fang Yuan seductively. Six rocks were placed in front of Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan took out sixty primeval stones and passed it to the female GU. Master. His act of payment attracted the attention of all the other GU masters in the tent. Oh, someone is going to rock gamble. We've been watching for over an hour, but we haven't acted yet. Now that someone is giving it a try, we might as well watch. It's a student, he actually took out 60 primeval rocks at once, his family. Must be affluent. He looks like a greenhorn, HMPH, gambling rocks isn't so easy. He's gonna get hurt real bad. The GU masters stood on the spot, discussing softly, all directing their gaze. Towards Fang Yuan. Young master, do you want to open the rocks on the spot? Our gambling. Den provides free service to open the rocks. The female GU master gently advised, sending seductive glances with her eyes. Fang Yuan used the corner of his eye to take a look at the crowd, his lips curling into a mysterious smile. He waved his hand, rejecting the female GU. Master, purple gold is my lucky color, and this is my first time betting, it is very meaningful. I'll open the rocks myself. The female GU master's eyes shone brighter, thinking, this heroic demeanor, as expected of a rich young master. Never in her dreams would she be able to imagine that Fang Yuan could be said to be kinless in GUU village, a drifter with no backing, having to rely on himself for everything. Tisk, so what if you have money? I wonder which rich kid this is, coming here to waste his parents' hard earned money. Ignorant young lad, how can one choose the rocks based on lucky color? Sigh, this act is simply akin to throw primeval stones into the water and waiting to see the ripples for fun. The GU masters in the tent lost their excitement at once. After thinking that Fang Yuan was a prodigal son, their already low expectations vanished into thin air. Some GU masters even retracted their gaze and turned around to continue inspecting the fossils on the counter. The changes to his surroundings did not affect Fang Yuan's state of mind at all. He expressionlessly activated the primeval essence within his primeval sea, pouring it into the moonlight GU. The next moment, the crescent mark on his right palm emitted a faint water. Like blue light, Fang Yuan used this right hand to grab a purple gold rock, holding it in his palm. Next he closed his fingers and slowly rubbed against the surface of the fossil. The blue light continued to shine, the waves of light rippling like water as the purple gold rock shrunk in size, large amounts of powder from rock. Shavings falling out from the gaps of Fang Yuan's fingers, landing on the carpet of the tent. Young master has good handiwork. The female GU master took the chance and immediately praised. This youngster, he isn't a good for nothing. What great skills. Seeing this. Sight, the GU Master's eyes shone across with a complicated glint. They had started to see Fang Yuan in a new light. Fang Yuan used the blue light to rub against the surface of the rock, this was a form of meticulous usage of the Moonlight GU. Normally, one would have to use the Moonlight GU for two to three years to be able to reach this level. With Fang Yuan's age and student identity, being able to do this is really remarkable. See, he's using our GUU clan specialty, the Moonlight GU. Some of the GU masters found this and instantly felt proud, gaining affection for Fang Yuan. But opening the rocks with this method, it's still too rough. Some of the older and more experienced GU masters shook their heads. The purple gold rock got smaller and smaller, from being slightly larger than a palm into the size of a fist, being gripped tightly by Fang Yuan's fingers. The blue light intensified as the fossil became pearl-sized. Until finally, what was left was a pile of rock powder, falling on the carpet to form a small hill. This was a solid rock, there was no GU worm inside. As expected, he's unreliable. The GU masters shook their heads. Young master, there's still five pieces left, the female GU master. Encouraged. Fang Yuan's expression was calm, being completely unaffected. He grabbed the second piece of purple gold rock and continued to grind. But the result 
Of this piece was still a solid rock, there was no GU worm inside. The third piece was still the same. The GU masters grew impatient. Stop looking. By relying on color to pick. The rocks, there's no point in this gamble. If he can get a good GU from this, I'll eat the pile of rock powder on the floor. Someone laughed insultingly. Don't lose heart young master, isn't there three pieces left, you're only. Halfway through, the female GU master continued to edge Fang Yuan on. Fang Yuan grabbed the fourth piece, and when he got it to palm size, he suddenly stopped all action. Oh, there's something. The rock composition changed, it's not purple gold sediments, but a kind of ink black color. Don't tell me he really got super lucky from blinding guessing. The surrounding GU masters exclaimed lightly. Young master, you have to be careful from here onwards. Don't make sudden movements, hibernating GU worms are very fragile. If you use too much strength, you'll kill the GU worm inside. The female GU master did not expect such a situation to occur. After getting stunned for a moment, she immediately advised carefully. Fang Yuan's movements slowed, his fingers slowly rubbing his small powder slowly fell, continuously repeating the action with many intervals. He was no longer as fluid as earlier. The black-colored rock powder slowly fell off, and as the rock got smaller, Fang Yuan's movements became slower and gentler. On the carpet, the rock powder continued to gather as Fang Yuan's black. Colored rock was finally scrapped clean. Sigh, what a pity, it's a rock in a rock. What a waste of my emotions, I really thought there was a GU worm. Inside, you are all too easy to fool, is rock betting so easy? 9 out of 10 are all empty, how else is the shop going to make money? Young master, your luck is already not bad. Getting a rock in rock the first time, normal people cannot do it. The female GU master tried another way to console Fang Yuan, similarly it was to pave way for the result that awaited him. Getting nothing out of gambling rocks was very common, a 9 out of 10 occurrence. In her opinion, Fang Yuan was choosing at random, the chance of getting a GU fossil was close to zero. Fang Yuan smiled but did not reply, and he continued to take out the fifth rock. He carefully grinded, and in 10 breaths time, the surface of purple gold colored rock were all rubbed away, revealing a rough surfaced yellow mud ball. Chapter 42, it really is a GU. Chapter 42, it really is a GU. Translator, Skyfaro Editor, Skyfaro. A. Don't tell me it's another rock in the rock. By the looks of it, probably. But it's a little strange, this mud ball is. Enclosed by a purple gold rock surface. The mud ball surface should be. Compressed smoothly, so why is the surface still uneven? The surrounding. GU masters were perplexed. Looking at the mud ball in his hands, Fang Yuan's expression did not change, but in his heart he was slightly moved. He continued to grind. Under the blue watery light, the powdery sand fell off. Among the powder, there were some soil crumbs mixed in it, falling onto the pile of rock powder beside his leg. Don't tell me there's really something. Upon seeing this, some of the GU masters stared with their eyes wide opened. It's hard to say, someone spoke with an uncertain tone. I feel like there is, there's really something. Another spoke softly. The yellow mud ball gradually decreased in size due to the friction, and when it was palm-sized, someone barged into the tent. Young lad, hold up. I, Jia Jin Sheng, will be buying it. Fang Yuan's movement came to a halt. At once, the GU masters in the tent all focused their attention on this person. He looked young on the outside, his appearance around 20 to 20. Five years old. He wore a golden-colored robe with a lace belt on his waist. And on the belt there was a square-shaped jade piece. There was a word across the piece of jade, showing the letter, 1. Evidently, this was a rank 1 GU master. To still be a rank 1 GU master at 20 years old, it seems that his talent isn't good. But the status of this person was rather unique. Seeing him, the GU masters, in the tent all bowed and greeted him, saying together, your subordinate, greets you, second young master, second young master, he called himself Jia Jin Sheng earlier, is he the half-brother of the merchant caravan leader, Jia Fu, 
This means to say, this rock gambling den is opened by him. But now that he appeared to interfere, it seems that he's breaking the gambling dens. Rules, the GU masters softly conversed. That's right, I am this shop's shopkeeper. Little brother, one coming out to gamble at such a young age, aren't you afraid of your family's scolding? I will offer 40 primeval stones now to buy that mud ball in your hand. What do you think? 40 primeval stones is a lot already and there may not be a GU inside, but today I am in a good mood. Thus seeing that this is your first time gambling, I don't want you to lose everything, so I'll give you a portion of your capital back. Jia Jin Sheng quickly walked in front of Fang Yuan and said, 40 primeval stones. Fang Yuan raised his eyebrows slightly and took a look at Jia Jin Sheng with the corner of his eye, coldly laughing, it seems. You want to forcefully buy the mudball fossil in my possession. Forceful. Purchase is spoiling the gambling den's rules. Furthermore you're now on. Ching Mao Mountain, you want to bully a GUU clansman like me in front. Of everyone. Quote. Oh. On hearing Fang Yuan's last sentence, all the other GU masters could. Not take it and animosity grew uncontrollably in them as they looked. Towards Fang Yuan's direction. Their expression towards Jia Jin Sheng also became unfriendly. Jia Jin Sheng had thought a 15 year old like Fang Yuan would be easy to deal with, easily persuaded with a few words. But to think this Fang Yuan had such capabilities, and with a single sentence, he caused Jia Jin Sheng to be in such a predicament. Seeing the GU masters getting ready to interfere, Jia Jin Sheng's expression changed immediately as he changed his tone, quickly waving his hands. Little brother, you're mistaken. I am the shopkeeper of this gambling den. How could I ruin my own reputation by breaking my own rules? How would I be able to conduct business in the future? He he he, I just found your mud ball a little interesting, thus I wanted to buy it. If you do not wish to sell it, that's fine. But if there's nothing inside later, don't blame me for not. Reminding you, Fang Yuan paid no more attention to him. He turned around and continued to focus on grinding the mud ball in his hands. His movements were very slow and very meticulous. Often, there was only a hint of dry soil powder falling off after a moment or so. Following his movement, a hibernating GU worm gradually appeared in front of everyone's eyes. My god, there really is a GU worm. He really opened a GU. What the hell, this sort of method of gambling can also work. This young man's luck is off the charts, he actually managed to forcefully luck out on getting a GU. Immediately, the GU master's exasperation filled the tent. The female GU master subconsciously covered her mouth, being unable to believe the scene before her. As shop clerk, along the way she had been to many mountain villages, seen all sorts of people and all kinds of customers, but she had never seen such a comedic scene. There is really a GU. Cold light flashed across Jia Jin Sheng's eyes as he hated and regretted in his heart. The thing he hated most was to be taken advantage of. This gambling den that he opened, he had placed many surveillance methods. Once a customer was about to open a GU, he'd receive the news and would normally forcefully buy it. But now Fang Yuan was inside his gambling den, getting a GU under his very eyes. Jia Jin Sheng could feel his heart bleeding. What he obtained was a toad GU. Its entire body was yellow from head to foot. The belly was light yellow. And its back was brownish yellow, covered with many pimply boils, full of nodules and warts which were a distinctive characteristic of the toad species. At one glance, it looked slightly horrifying. It was not big, being only palm-sized. Holding it in the palm was akin to holding two to three eggs. Fang Yuan's expression was calm under all sorts of admiration, envy and exasperation, carefully deploying his primeval essence and injecting it into the toad's body. At this moment, the GU was being refined by Fang Yuan. GU worms obtained from within fossils are normally extremely weak. Not only do they have little to no strength left, their consciousness is also lazy, leaving them defenseless and unable to resist. Thus, they can be easily refined by the GU masters. 
Upon being awakened by Fang Yuan, the Toad Jiu opened its eyes slowly, and its belly slightly vibrated, softly calling out, Croak. Its voice was soft but it made everyone's expression very interesting. The difference in value between a Jiu that was alive against one that was dead was huge. It's a live Jiu, he really opened a live Jiu. Someone rubbed his eyes, unable to believe this. This is the mudskin toad, damn it, it really is the mudskin toad. Someone recognized the toad goo's identity and screamed agitatedly. This young man really has got luck, why don't I have such luck on my side? Someone sighed, filled with complicated emotions such as envy, jealousy and hatred. Young master, congratulations. This, this, this is to date, my first time. Seeing such a precious GU worm, the female GU master was shocked. Beyond words, her eyes glistening with life. It's actually the mudskin toad. This is a rare rank 2 GU worm, its value. Worth 500 primeval stones. Damn it, damn. Someone actually managed to open such a GU worm in my shop. I've lost big time, big time. Jia Jin Sheng's face was pale as he stared daggers at the toad, his heart having a strong urge to just snatch the GU away. But he knew he couldn't, for if he really did that, it would be asking for trouble. This was not his family's village, but the GUU clan's territory. Maybe I should have paid a bit more primeval stones, maybe he might have given it to me. That's right, he's just a student. If I offered a hundred primeval stones, there's no way he'd not be moved. Why didn't I do that? Jia Jin Sheng was full of regret. No, maybe this young lad does not know his stuff. Even though he opened a mudskin toad, I should be able to suppress the price and buy it. Jia Jin. Sheng's heart had renewed hope. But at the next moment, this hint of hope was mercilessly smashed by Fang Yuan's words. Fang Yuan plainly looked at the mudskin toad in his hands, ignoring the surrounding people's praises and shock. He used an extremely calm tone and said to Jia Jin Sheng, Mudskin Toad. Rank 2 GU Worm, requires 500 grams of yellow soil every meal. The more fertile the soil the better. Its species is few in number and it is the necessary main GU in refining the treasure brass toad. The market price is 500 primeval stones. Jia Jin Sheng, do you want to buy this? You, actually know so clearly, Jia Jin Sheng mumbled. After such a shock, he could not say a word. Fang Yuan laughed lightly and continued, If you're unwilling, that's fine. I'll sell it to someone else, I'm sure someone will be interested. Hold it, wait, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. But can't this price be cheaper? Jia Jin. Sheng's smile turned bitter. Fang Yuan turned around and walked away. Jia Jin Sheng hurriedly chased after him. Don't. Don't go. I'll buy, I'll buy. It. Fang Yuan had no plans to nurture this mudskin toad. It was a rank 2 GU, but Fang Yuan was still a rank 1 initial stage. Although it ate yellow soil, Qingmao Mountain was full of green soil. Hence finding food for it would be troublesome. Moreover, if he does not sell this GU worm, Fang Yuan would have to feed. 3 GU worms himself. Putting aside the increased primeval stone expenditure, even the current amount of primeval stones in his possession, would not be enough to feed them. Thus, Fang Yuan's plan was to immediately sell away the mudskin toad, get the 500 primeval stones and earn a fortune. To a rank 1 initial stage like Fang Yuan, 500 primeval stones was considered a large amount already. The transaction was quickly completed and Fang Yuan transferred the Mudskin toad to Jia Jin Sheng in front of the crowd, at the same time. Accepting five heavy money bags. Each bag had a hundred primeval stones. Fang Yuan originally had 98 primeval stones, and after spending 60 on gambling rocks, he had 38 left. Now, his fortune multiplied many times, and he owned 538 primeval stones. Upon seeing this, many GU masters turned green with envy. Fang Yuan put the five bags in his bosom before taking the last piece of purple gold fossil and walked out of the tent. Young master, you're not opening that fossil. The female GU master blinked rapidly and stared at Fang Yuan's back, loudly reminding him 
Fang Yuan paid no heed and left the gambling den without turning back. He left behind a gang of stunned GU masters, staring at each other silently. Jin Jia Sheng calling Fang Yuan little brother is a way of greeting, they are not related in any way. Chapter 43, The Final Sixth Purple, Gold Rock. Chapter 43, The Final Sixth Purple Gold Rock. Translator, Skyfaro Editor, Skyfaro. The green copper primeval sea had tides rising and falling, ebbing and flowing. Above the sea level, the liquor worm curled into a ball, emitting the wine. Vapor that gradually developed into white mist. A surge of primeval essence with a swoosh rushed up against the tide and into the wine mist. When the tide receded, there was already half left, and the color was even darker. From initial stage jade green, one it had converted into middle stage pale green. Middle stage primeval essence fell into the sea, but it did not mix with the initial stage primeval essence. As if it was denser, it sank to the bottom. Thus, the situation became that the upper layer of the primeval sea was filled with initial stage primeval essence, while the lower half was middle stage primeval essence. As time flowed, the wine mist circulated within the aperture. Under the refinement of the liquor worm, eventually, the initial stage primeval essence continued to decrease, while the middle stage primeval essence gradually increased. It could be seen with the naked eye where the lower layer middle stage primeval essence gradually rose, while the upper layer initial stage primeval essence continued to decrease, but also rose in sea level. As Fang Yuan refined his primeval essence, he extracted the natural essence from the primeval stones at the same time, quickly replenishing the dwindling primeval essence in his aperture. Finally, the 45% primeval sea in his aperture was fully refined into middle stage primeval essence. Much thanks to the middle stage primeval essence, or else I would not have been able to open the rocks five times in the gambling den. Sitting in a lotus position on his bed, Fang Yuan gradually opened his eyes. It was currently late at night. After he walked out of the gambling den, he did not tour around any of the other shops, but instead headed back to the academy. Although it was at the fringe of the GUU mountain village, as a rank. One initial stage GU master, owning 538 primeval stones is still too much. This is not only because the primeval stones were heavy and a hassle to bring around. It also attracts other people's coveting, in another sense, it would endanger his life. If there was a rank 1 upper stage, or even a rank 2 who coveted his assets, with Fang Yuan's current ability he would not be able to contend. Wealth comes and goes, but humans die because of wealth, it's pathetic. What's laughable is that many people in this world cannot comprehend that. The boat of benefits carries many people, but has also sunk many others. Fang Yuan's lips curled into a cold smirk as he looked at the gray-white. Primeval stones in his hands. A complete primeval stone was around the size of a duck egg. But the stone, in his hand, as it had been extracted of half of its essence, was an entire circle smaller. Fang Yuan did not regret it. Everything has its gains and losses. Fang Yuan was only a C-grade talent. Yet he was using the liquor GU to refine his primeval essence, and his primeval stone's expenditure was multiple times of the people of his age. Yet, it was because of this that he was able to overcome the lack of his talent. If the real cultivation pace could be counted, he would be able to rank first. 3. Fang Yuan put the primeval stones back into his money bag and took out that final purple gold fossil. He bought a total of six fossils at the gambling den and opened five on the spot, bringing the last one back with him. His eyes shone as he activated the moonlight GU, grinding with five fingers, slowly dissecting the rock. The purple gold fossil gradually shrunk under the blue ripples, and finally was grinded to nothingness, leaving behind a pile of powder on the ground. Fang Yuan was not surprised, because in rock gambling, you lose 9 out of 10 times. Even with his 500 years of experience, he could only manage 8 losses out of 10 times. And in the remaining 2 times, it depended on whether it was a live GU or a dead GU. Dead GU had basically no value. 
As for live GU, they might not be a rare type of GU worm, and even if it was a tremendously precious GU, one might attract a life-threatening crisis because of it. Fang Yuan's current cultivation level was still very low, it was at the bottom tier of the GU masters. The mudskin toad that he obtained earlier, if it weren't for the fact that this was the GUU mountain village, it might have been forcefully snatched away by that Jia Jin Shang. Gambling was never the way for developing family wealth, and in fact it was a bigger cause of bankruptcy and debt. This was not the development path that Fang Yuan wanted to take. Although the final purple gold fossil did not have a GU worm, Fang Yuan was not disappointed. In fact he looked at the pile of rock powder and gradually broke into a smile. Indeed, his ultimate motive in entering the gambling den was all for this pile of rock powder. That mudskin toad was only something he had gotten out of convenience. He privately opened the fossil, and other than him, nobody knew the truth of this result. From that day forth, he could claim that the liquor worm was awakened and subdued from the purple gold fossil. This idea was fabulous. Firstly, nobody could confirm what GU worm really exists in the fossils. Who would dare say that the liquor worm could not hibernate within the purple gold fossil? That's completely possible. Secondly, he had several eyewitnesses. He opened the mudskin toad, which would have left a strong impression on the GU masters in the gambling. Den. Thirdly, even if someone relentlessly questioned him, he could push everything onto his luck. Luck was something unfathomable. Even if someone suspected that this was the flower wine monk's liquor worm, against an excuse like luck, they'd have no idea how to argue against Fang Yuan. Within the dark room, Fang Yuan's expression was ominous. One-sided covering up was akin to covering fire with paper. There would be a day where he would be exposed. To get rid of a hidden threat like the liquor worm, he'd have to strike first. This is Fang Yuan's style. Moreover, he had thought about it carefully, and in the cultivation process that was to follow, he would need to expose the liquor worm. For a rank 1 GU like the liquor worm, it is extremely precious to rank 1 GU masters. But for rank 2 GU masters, it is no longer compatible for them. Thus even if this was exposed, all I would get is some attention. But it would not affect the overall situation, thus becoming nothing to be concerned over. It is not like the spring and autumn cicada. If the spring and autumn cicada is exposed, I might die a horrible death at the very next moment. 500 years of experience in handling problems had already made Fang Yuan extremely familiar with human mentality, with their every thought clear as day to him. The flower wine traveler's legacy and the mudskin toad, among my memories these are the only two treasures here, and now that they have been obtained by me, what I can do next is only gradual and steadfast. Cultivation. Fang Yuan sighed a deep breath and relaxed his body, feeling a strong sense of fatigue engulfing him. A GU master's primeval sea cultivation could not replace sleep. Fang Yuan pulled his blanket and lay down on his bed, his eyes still half open. Although there were 500 primeval stones hidden under the bed, as well as many pots of green bamboo wine, he still felt a sense of urgency and danger. These 500 over primeval stones were already a form of limit. From flourish to decline, Fang Yuan was clear that henceforth his primeval stone expenditure would only get bigger. But his income was mostly from extorting his classmates. He had been increasingly feeling the growth and improvement of his classmates. Especially in the recent few extortions, Ji Yu Yu Mo Chen, Kai Chen, and his brother Ji Yu Yu Fang Zheng, had greatly improved in their kicks and punches. Previously he only needed one or two strikes to take them down, but now he needed five or six. Another three to four plunders, and their punches and kicks would have been polished fully. If they challenge me one by one, with my current stamina, I cannot endure that kind of round-robin battle. 500 primeval stones might seem a lot, but with my current expenditure of four stones a day, it is actually not that much. Qingmao Mountain already has no treasures left, but nearby on the Bai GU2 Mountain, there is a secretly built strength inheritance of a rank 4 
G.U. Master of the Righteous Path. Sigh, it still boils down to the flower wine monk's treasure being too little, only giving me a liquor worm. Hum, there is still that film image. Wall, maybe I can sell it to a certain merchant in the caravan. Fang Yuan thought as his eyelids grew heavier until he finally fell asleep. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Reverend Insanity. Written by Gu Zhen Ran. Audio by Dex San Wu Li.